All right, all right, all right. It is Friday night, drink in hand. You made it through the week. I know, I know it was a hard week. Today was payday for many individuals. For other individuals, you got to wait till next week. But one thing that you can do, you can have you a drink in your hand. I don't care what your favorite elixir is for this evening because we got a great show. Tonight's topic is basically going to be an interview. It's basically going to be a great interview. We had Paola here. We had Paola here about a year ago, almost about a year ago. Andrew and I had her on. And it was a great live stream. We've been following her in, on Instagram, on TikTok. We're going to have all her information on there. Tonight, we had watched a, a video of hers, of an interview that she did. We watched that last week. So the person that you saw last week is the person that you're going to see live tonight. So any questions that you guys have, make sure that you have your questions available in regards to dating here in Colombia, relocating to Colombia. If you guys need assistance when it comes to vacationing in certain areas of Colombia, she's going to be talking about that as well. And we're going to ask some questions. But before we get started, it is Friday night. Drink in hand. I got my lime in there. You guys see my lime. Tonight is going to be a, for me, it's going to be a peppermint snap snipe for all the old schools. Shout out to all the old schools out there that remember the peppermint snaps. Cologne for the night. Everybody know the five C's when you're coming to Colombia, when you're coming to Brazil, when you're going to Singapore, Dubai. Bring your five C's with you, gentlemen. Get cash. I always bring some cash with you. Make sure you pack the right clothes no matter where you go. Bring your condoms. Bring your common sense. Don't leave your common sense in customs. What are you doing? Too many of us have so much common sense, so much insight when we're back home in the States. And then we get to these other countries and we leave our common sense and customs. I was grabbing my cell phone real quick. And the last C is cologne. Gotta bring your cologne, fellas. You gotta smell good. Tonight's cologne is a duet. For some of you guys, a lot of times I do duets. Sometimes you do colognes and solos. Sometimes you put the a, a group together. Sometimes you, you have colognes and they Drake. Single rappers, single MCs making the money. Sometimes you have to have a run DMC, a duet. Tonight's duet. We're doing boozy scent tonight. Tonight is dedicated to boozy scents. The first boozy scent is one that's inexpensive. You can get this one in Ross. You can you can you can get this one very inexpensive. You can get this one in Target, might be in Walmart, and that's Bentley for men. That's an excellent, inexpensive rum flavor, Bentley for men. That's the cologne I'm wearing tonight. You put this on. Sometimes I just I, you know I put my lotion on. I just spray it into my lotion. Put that on while I'm lotioning up, so the Bentley seeps it to the pores. Let that seep it to the pores. This may be twenty dollars. This twenty dollars, right? Bentley for men, intense. But no, we wait about a good twenty minutes. Let that seep in, and you got the Givenchy, gentlemen. That one's a little bit more expensive, right around eighty bucks. But I'm telling you. God, woo. I don't sniff, I've never sniffed drugs before, but I definitely sniff colognes. And I'm telling you, this is a, this, we, we already got the rum right here. Excellent rum. And then this one right here is a nice boozy scent as well. It's a, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the scent, the, 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 the booze that, that this one is. It's not a rum, it's not a whiskey. It starts with a B too. I forget the I forget the, the one that smells like this. This is a grown ass man cologne. Nobody under 30 is wearing this. Nobody. Very adult cologne. This is a date night cologne. Speaking of date nights, 
for all you dudes that are so happy to be dating a Colombia. I mentioned a Colombia, and I mentioned this a couple of days ago. It is Valentine's Day weekend here in Colombia. Every second weekend of September is Valentine's weekend. Yes, they celebrate it in February as well. But the official in Colombia this weekend. So for you guys that that want to impress a Colombian woman, well, she's saying, Poppy, send me flowers. Poppy, buy me this. It's, it's that weekend, fellas. If she, if she says Valentine's Day weekend, she ain't lying. She ain't lying, fellas. This is the weekend in which I asked Andrea to marry me five, almost four, four and a half years ago. So yeah, bro. Yeah, it's that weekend. Shout out to all you guys. Let's do the shout outs. Get them in out of the way. It's that time for those shout outs for this weekend. Oh yeah, Friday night. We got 43. Let me let that finish. We got 43 people in the building. Make sure you click that like button. I like you. Make sure you like us too. Support black male content. Remember, all cash apps are going directly to the Children's Cancer Foundation. All cash apps that we get for the rest of the year. I got a cash app shout out that I didn't get a chance to get to last week. I mean, this past Wednesday. That I'm gonna give a shout out for right now. All right, we got a uh, my man Jordan Mosley. Shout out to Jordan for the ten dollars this past Wednesday. Good looking out. We also got another video. Remember our man Aaron did the interview with the ladies in Medellin, asking them questions about would they date a foreigner. Well, he said they had a part two to that. We're going to look at the part two tonight. But I also want you guys to look at it through his channel as well. Support black male content. I'm going to turn this music down just a little bit. All right. Get ready to give these shout outs to you guys. My man, the finals in the building. Numero uno. Hola, mi gente. On this special edition of Drink in Hand. Make sure you guys, I don't care if you got water. I don't care if you got aguadente. I don't care if you got cerveza, a beer. Club Colombia. I don't care what you're drinking tonight. I don't care if it's Pepsi, Coke, or Verner's. I don't care if you mix the smoothie or you're just drinking bottled water. Tonight is Friday night. Drink your hand. You made it through the work week. And some of your you guys, your work week doesn't end until tomorrow. But at the end of the day, celebration. We're gonna celebrate it tonight. We have a special edition. Please make sure that you show uh Paola. Uh, the utmost respect tonight. Yes, make sure you do that because we had a troll a couple days ago that I had to put in timeout. You know, we're not a timeout type of channel. But I'm telling you, Stefano and Charles and all the other moderators, they will put you in timeout, which is uncalled for because this is the grown man channel. But yeah, let's let's show some respect. Come with the questions, definitely. But show, show us some love and some respect. Cause we some good guys. We want all, all the Colombian women to see that we're some good guys. We're, the, we're not the Ratchet Brothers. We're not Pookie and Ray Ray. Please keep your comments clean in the chat like you guys always do. Father of many nations, my man Abraham is in the building. Yo, what's good, fam? Shout out to you, man. My man Ian B in the building. I don't know my word for the week. Noches. My word tonight is noches. Meaning evening or night. <laughs> Buenas noches, mi amigo. Jay Fleming, make sure you guys subscribe to this brother's channel. If you haven't subscribed, you're doing yourself a disservice. My man, Jermaine is in the building. Buenas noches, Senor Andres. Buenas noches. Charles, I'm glad that you're doing better. He said, what's up, everyone? Back out of the hospital. Hospital. Again. He said, uh, home, health care for the next 10 days. All right, man. Keep on getting better. Going to chill and relax to some Netflix shows. Y'all be easy. All right, Charles, take care of yourself, man. Glad that you finally got out of the hospital. Mad Dollars, T-G-I-F. Yes, it is. Thank God that is Friday. Goodness gracious. It... Thank God. Black Black Nubians back. Them Canadian boys at it again with the $2 super chat. Appreciate you, brother, for being here. 
we got 52 people in the building make sure we got 52 likes do not forget to click that like button guys that opens up the door for others to come into the live stream tonight as well my brother said he says uh hey love crossing borders i was just at the post office on my lunch break an hour uh on, on my lunch hour uh one of my passport junior fathers showed me and sh uh, showed me and shook my hand and said thank you and it was to thank you love and want to thank you love crossing borders thank you very much man i'm so glad that you know the message that you share with us man it's like each week you give bits and pieces of the story of the journeys of those young brothers that got their passports through their fathers that's great to see great to see all you dads that got that either had your passport when you were young and you made now you're making sure that your children have passports shout out to you guys man and some of you guys is looking forward to someday traveling with your young person once they hit a certain age when their mama can't interrupt once they hit 16 mom can't tell them they can't travel they can do they can travel if they want to with dad so yeah get the passports for them kids yeah, got to keep that common sense, man. Got to keep that common sense. Do not leave it at home or alone. He said another father was there with another father and helping him and his sons get passports while he was at the post office. He said, I told them to pay it forward by helping other fathers. That's absolutely correct. Fathers helping fathers. That's what it's all about. They will never show this when it comes to us passport bros, man on other channels they only want to talk about the ladies they only want to talk about sex and and, and, and and effery but they never want to talk about all the positive things that we do in all these other countries and before we go to other countries shout out to you again brother he also mentions he said when i told the fathers that i'm not at the uh, not a school bus driver anymore and i drive trucks now they were real proud of me and i told them that i'm uh going for my tractor trailers and they wish me luck that's what i'm talking about man get your blessings brother get your blessings i ain't mad at you presto in the bill i mean prescott in the building let's go yes keep up the good work andre as well as my man brandon representing salute to you as well kind sir salute to you as well i am just jules in the building Andre, uh, like your, uh, oh, you, you like a uh, camp, what's that, uh, campery and soda. Let me write that one down, bro. Y'all always giving me some gems. I never try to act like I know everything. Keep the notes handy. I'm going to try that this week. You know, Valentine's Day weekend, me and Andre are going to hang out. So, yeah, I'm going to try this one. I've been on that gin and tonic lately like crazy, man. They make some heck of a good gin and tonics. He says, light with a nice taste and a hint of bitterness. I do like a hint of bitterness. That's why I have the lime in the with the uh with the peppermint snaps tonight. Once again, my drink for the for the evening, guys, is the classic peppermint snaps. One of you brothers brought from the States for me, and I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate that. And I have my lime off in it right now to give it a hint of bitterness because y'all know that peppermint snaps is a sweet drink my man is in the building gangster in the building lifestyle he said i don't like that you don't like that one hey i want to try it and see if i like it my brother also said he said i told the fathers that i got my commercial driver's license with my hazard uh hazard material endorsement see that's what i'm talking about use that money wisely he said they told me to keep up the good work thank you very much for the up upkeep of the stories man i appreciate that more than you realize and thank you for the five dollar uh super chat definitely definitely all right average man is in the building showing the love and the peace bourbon thank you brother that's what this is bourbon this jeffrey a javinci uh gentleman is a bourbon good looking out brother 
good looking out. That's what I was ch- trying to say. So I have classic whiskey. I mean, a classic rum scent on. I put this on with my lotion, let it sit in in your pores when you first get out the shower. And then you just layer it with the bourbon. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. I'm telling you, that's grown man mm-hmm. right there. That's the same thing that I do with this one. You got the the uh, the Club Douay New Intense. I mean, Untold, I'm sorry. The Club Douay New, uh, New Eight, Club de Nuit Untold. This is the clone, the $30 clone of the $400, $350 Baccarat 540, right? That everybody's been wearing. Strongest club scent there ever was, right? But to stay, everybody's wearing it. So how do you stand out? You take that and blend that with the Creed Aventus clone, which is the club De Nuit Intense Man. And so now you take these babies and put them together, 30 bucks a piece. This is the club, this is the Aventus, uh, I'm sorry, this is the Aventus clone. This is the Baccarat 540 clone. You bring these babies together, ain't nobody in the club messing with you. You get number compliments. I kid you not. You're gonna stay on the dance floor. That's why I say get that's why I say get your salsa together. Because while you spinning and twisting, smelling all good, man, please. Now you got other ladies asking you to dance. Puff of four. Mad dollars in the in the building once again. Thank you very much, guys, for the for the uh tip with the bourbon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Also, my other brother says he say Viva Andre and Andrea. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Afron. And he says, uh, shout out from the shy. From the shy. I used to live in Murrillville, Gary, and EC, East, East Chicago. Used to park my truck right there catch the train to chi town eat good hang out good sex good and then ride the train back at night uh, to uh to ec in indiana so yeah shout out to that area i was out there for about a about a year oof the stories to be told in chicago yeah all right no, no the third week no it's this weekend it's actually this weekend. I thought it was the third week, but it's actually this weekend. Yeah, we're going out to we're going out to a nice dinner and everything. So the Valentine's Day weekend. Yeah, I thought it was third week, but it's actually this one. I thought it was like the 21st weekend. Let me make sure because Andrea made the reservations and everything. So let me make sure. Let me ask Andrea when she comes in. So it could be next week and I might be misinformed. The African Wolf, my favorite youtube title nine dollar cash super chat good looking out brothers felice uh see uh felice the aaroness toto toto is every felice is celebration or happy the aaroness let me know what the aaroness is And let me scroll down. Make sure I get everybody that hasn't been here yet. Oh, my man. Them Tar Heels. Them Kakalaka boys at it again. Hello, people. He say, uh, just got back from Arabia. Man, let us know how that was, man. Let us not know yet. Nice trip. Shout out to my man. Them Detroit boys at it again. My, my fellow connoisseur of colognes. Terrell. Once again, we're going to have our guest come on in a few moments. She'll be here. But I just wanted to ask her to give me a few moments to give you guys some shout outs when you guys come in. Thank you very much for the $20. What's up, big bro and chat family? Let me take a sip. Here's to you guys, all you Detroit dudes, all you San Francisco dudes, all you Kansas City, all the way down to all of the both bays, San Francisco Bay, as well as Tampa Bay. Shout out to all you guys, the NYC, all you Jersey dudes, all you Ohio players, all the way down to Texas. Wyoming and Oklahoma. I ain't forgot about you Washington boys too. All the way and we're going to keep our prayers going on for those land thieves just stealing up Maui. 
keep our prayers for those people that lost their land or are losing their lands to Oprah and the rock taking those people land after, after they set it on fire shout out to the people that's living in Alaska all the way to you Kentucky boys Tennessee all the way back to Illinois shout out to all you Kakalaka boys all you DC boys all you Maryland good seafood in Maryland with the corona shout out to all you guys and I ain't forget about you New Orleans and them Georgia boys either and also you Arizonians New Mexicans oh yeah and eating all healthy in Oregon shout out to all you guys and if I missed your state such as in Dakotas in Minnesota I ain't forget about you guys blame it on my head and not my heart my uncle man that's pretty good that peppermint snaps on ice with lime that's pretty good oh yeah that, i'm yeah yeah that's that elixir right there got my uncle up in here ghost face in the building what's good dre friday night wine in hand all right having that wine i was telling uh telling our guest as well paola paola i was like hey if you uh if you want to bring your drink on you know a bottle a glass of wine or whatever you can bring it night because friday night drink your hand such as who don't see what it do dre hey listen jeezy must <laughs> must have felt your motivational words to get uh out of out uh, to get out of the degree uh because he ran down uh to the force court asap had enough and uh what's the Kelowna tonight the Kelowna night has been we talked about this one earlier it was it was a combo a lot of times i do combos tonight is the inexpensive bentley for men intense very inexpensive you can find this one everywhere this is a old this has one been around it's just a classic rum uh smell and this one as the guys remind me with the bourbon scent it is the javinci or Givenchy, gentlemen it is a very i like scents that are that project but not too too much but i also like scents that i know nobody else is gonna have it I, I could be in a room full of 300 men i promise you nobody's gonna have this scent on it is such a, 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 a mature adult it's not an old scent that's the other thing if you 31 you can pull it off if you 29 you can't pull it off it's not an older man scent it's just a mature i'm a grown-ass man scent like i said if you 29 don't 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 buy that don't buy that if you 31 come on welcome to the party you're a grown-ass man now 20 in your 20s you still trying to learn i ain't mad at you 20s but shoot man 20s is good but you still try to learn but once you hit 30 you'll see what i'm talking about but our guests will be here in a second them Kansas city boys at it again shout out to them Kansas city boys see y'all boys getting uh travis kelsey back this week you're tight in so let's see what's going on beach material once again charles what it do glad that charles is doing a lot greater as well as my man todd is in the building shout out to my man todd being here man i appreciate you my man black lux is in the lex is in the building 71. what up dre good to see you salute ghostface jeff salute to you as well as my man drew has been in the building favorite friday night Shh. salute to you too brother shout out to you for being here drew father many nation says thank you for the 15 dollar super chat he said blessings family he said i will be in cali february 6th and through February 6th and 4th, oh, for three weeks. I thought I'm thinking three, in three weeks. For three weeks, man, you're going to have a good time, brother. I kid you not. Funny, I was just thinking about getting uh, the uh, Da Vinci Reserve uh, Preve. Uh, that's a good one, too. Looking forward to this conversation. Uh, monk, mo monk, uh, monk Mode uh, got my relationship muscles rusty. Oh, dude, you come down here, you're going to act a fool. And I ain't mad at you i ain't mad at you there's a couple of you brothers that came down here 
And y'all done pulled some nicey, nicey. Shout out to all you guys that came down here to Cali, Columbia. You didn't have to go to Cartagena. And honestly, y'all was nice sisters. I ain't mad at you. I am not mad at you. Thanks again for the 14, $15 super chat. Let me make sure I got everybody. Cause we got 89 people in the building. So if I missed you, blame it on my head, not my heart. Such so as my man, Alex in the building, Mr. Smooth himself. I'm smooth himself. Let me know how things been going, Alex. Man, you haven't had a chance to talk on the phone for a while. So let me know how things going. Thank you for the $10 for the love of the game. No comment. Just like in the words of, uh, of our man, uh, the lead attorney. No comment, but just the love of the game. Thank you for the support, man. But let me know how you've been doing, brother. It's been a couple months since we had a chance to chop it up. Mike Laurie is always in the building representing. It's not a live stream without Mike. OG, triple OG. Spit that knowledge. We got a good one tonight, man. And we know it's a live stream once Theo is in the building. Hey, Theo, man, I'm glad that you made it tonight, man. I really am. I know that you're busy as ever. But for you to have you on the live streams with us, man, we appreciate that. As well as the West Side Ninja straight from the top of the Shaolin Temple. See me and Ghostface, my uncle boy, we kung fu. We to this day, we still love a good 1970s kung fu movie. See what I'm saying? The old school Jackie Chan when he was the, the drunken master. See what I'm saying? Shout out to the five deadly venom. That's what I'm talking about. I might watch a karate movie after this. Uh sub Dre. Uh just dipping in to support. Uh have have a move to make this uh this evening. We'll holler another time. Thanks for being here, man. Just for the few moments, man. Just showing that love. I appreciate that. Iman in the build. Iman is a building representing Mr. Perry. Salute to you as well, my brother. I'm glad that y'all are here tonight, man. I'm excited about this particular episode. I really am. She's excited too. I won't even lie. She's excited too. She ready to have some fun with us. Uh, my man, hey now, guys, subscribe to this man's channel. I keep trying to tell y'all, all you brothers are trying to pick up your Spanish. Just basic conversational spanish even though he shares grammar and proper pronunciation of the letters but he also puts it in a scenario of what if what if you were out and about on a date what if you were dealing with this situation or handling that situation that's what i like about his channel make sure you subscribe to my brother speak spanish now because i'm telling you now you will be doing yourself you will be investing greatly in yourself by picking up these little tips when you're dealing with, when you're out of the club and you're trying to get that young lady's attention while you're in South America. Shout out to my man Theo once again. He said, I bought the Dior Ohm Intense. Yeah, I, yeah, I got that up there, right? Did I put it up? Oh, I got it in the other room. <laughs> I got the, I got it in the other room. Uh, He said, oh, it's, it's the real one. Thanks. Uh, classes are uh, progressing well. I'm glad that every all you guys that have signed up with Theo and you're, you've already started your classes in regards to online uh, work, IT work, cybersecurity, man, I'm glad that you guys got a chance to, to, to reach out to Theo and get started. Yeah. Oh, that's a classic right there. Yeah. I'm drinking tonight. I'm drinking tonight. I just ordered me some old school Drakkar. For all us old school from the 80s, early 90s drop car fans. Come on, man. You can't go wrong with that. My brother says, he says, one of the fathers said, hey, uh, hey, you the hey, or he used to be, I will send, uh, I will send school, but I will send school bus driver. And I said, yes. Oh, that you used to be a school bus driver, but you said yes. And they said, thank you for telling our story and keeping our, keeping our message or keeping on message arrived and helping uh, spread the news to help others. That's absolutely correct, man. That's how this Passport Bro movement, the best thing, I said this the other day, and I said this on somebody else's live stream. The best thing that ever happened to the Passport Bro movement is the fact that we don't have any leader. We don't have a spokesperson. We don't have anybody that they can point to. They tried to do that to Austin, and he's the leader of the Pat. No, the hell he ain't. There is no leader. 
And since there is no leader, there's no head to cut off. You see what I'm saying? You, you can't say we got a Kevin Samuels at the top of our group and you all you got to do is cut the head off and the rest of us are, no. We multiply like Bebe's kids. That's We more like Bebe's kids than Kevin Samuel. We multiply. They didn't realize that once Kevin passed on, that this multiplication of the passport bro movement was going to take place. They didn't know that. They, if they knew that we would be the way that we are as passport bros, blue book gentlemen, passport kings, man, they would have shut up and listened to one man, Kevin. They'd have rather listened to one man on one channel. But once he passed on, all bets were off. All bets were off. So definitely, definitely. Shout out to my man, Queens, New York. What's up, Dre? He said, how do you have to, uh, what do you have to say? Oh, we got, we're going to come back to the Jeezy part too. Uh, what do you have to say uh, to all the brothers that think that uh, that you kiss and ask that you pretend to be Colombian uh, like you never say anything bad about Colombia and that you uh, live in a bubble? I have nothing to say to him. In all sincerity, I, I really don't. I'm a globalist. I happen to live in this location, and I'm going to tell you about this location. If you want negativity, you can go to DC Rob, and he'll tell you about you know things to protect yourself. You can go to Flyboy Way. He can tell you about things to protect yourself and where to go to and where not to go to. You got uh, uh, you got individuals such as Razor Ray who gives the other part of the Colombian experience. My channel or our channel is actually dedicated to those that want to relocate eventually or have a long vacation eventually and not just want to be on a party party mode where they get themselves in trouble. But if you think that I live in a bubble, you, you got the wrong dude, man. You ain't been watching this channel long enough or you ain't been listening, you selective hearing. I am a, a, in the mortal words of Chuck D. I'm glad you said that. I said this to somebody today in, uh, at a restaurant the other day, one of the brothers that just came in. I am not just an American. I'm an earthling. That's what Chuck D said. Once he started traveling, he said, I'm no longer just an American. I'm no longer just black. I'm those things, but I'm an earthling. I travel a place called Earth. I don't just travel Colombia. We've been to several countries since I've been here in Colombia, and I talk about those just as much. I'm an earthling, man. I got a passport. I'm trying to get as many tats as possible, and I promise you, all the tats in my passport will not just say Colombia. So here's what I need you to do. Sit back with popcorn in hand and a nice drink, and just follow the journey that we're gonna be going on over the next couple of years. Because you'll be seeing us in a lot of locations. And I'll be seeing the same thing. I'll be showing love to those lake locations just like I do with Columbia. But shout out to you, Queens, for being here tonight. All right. He said, I told them thank you. Uh, and I told him that I will keep spreading the message as long as I have a healthy bone in my body. And, and to anyone or to any father that will listen. That's absolutely correct, brother. That's absolutely correct. All right. Looks like I, I basically hit all those guys that came in. Oh, my man. Qu now, Quiet Storm's in the building. Shout out to you, Quiet Storm. I was watching you guys the other day on the on your channel as well, man. Do me a favor, Quiet Storm. When you get a chance, drop you guys' late night channel in the chat. Drop it in there a couple of times tonight so guys can subscribe. Once again, we have our girl, Paola. She's going to be our special guest in a few moments. So we're going to let her do her thing. She's going to be coming on in a, few, in a little bit. Let me make sure everything is all right with her. Oh, she gave me a call. Let me call her back. I see you watching the live stream. Can you hear me?
Okay. So 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 you so you click from your your phone or or your computer, correct? Okay. It should when you first click it, it should automatically say to you for you to uh make sure that you got your your uh you, you can see yourself on the screen. Okay, let me send send you send it to you again. All right, I'm sending it to you again right now. All right. All right, she had been calling me. While I'm, while I'm talking to you guys, she was been calling me. Let me let me get this, this link to her for the live stream. Shout out to Paola. And thank you guys for your patience. Your boy over here struggle streaming. Yeah, let me get her, get this link over to her. Because I was sending out so many links today. Okay. Make sure that she got it. I know which link she hit. Okay, cool. All right, she should be up, up here in a few moments, guys. I'm gonna make sure that I, I make sure I'm, I'm stay aware on the, on the on the screen to see that she uh, that she makes it in. And while I'm looking down the screen, shout out to my man Abraham, father of many nations, for the ten dollar cash shop that's going to the Children's Cancer Foundation. My man. Quiet Storm, thank you for the $10 as well of the Super Chat. Support Black Male Media. I keep trying to tell y'all, we ain't about to apologize because we ain't fine like Dominica Marie. We aren't as elegant on this channel without Andrea, of course, as the Crimson Cure. We don't have the accent, the Jamaican accent, like Chantel Simone. And we ain't six feet and got all the curves like six the goddess we your brothers i got a brotherhood for you that's all me and all the other brothers could do we could give you a brotherhood to support you as a guy that's traveling no matter what race color or creed so thank you brother for the support he said peace andre i'm finishing up my uh my final leg of sydney australia just talked to a brother the other day who it was in sydney australia he lived there for 10 years man he loved it and uh he said it was good to get out of the matrix for three weeks i'm dreading <laughs> going back when i dropped the brother off at the airport the other day man he was it's kind of funny man because everybody's face is the same as soon as i pull up to the airport y'all y'all gotta grab y'all bags or take them out of the truck everybody's face just melt every dude like man i say bro you gotta go on back i say listen you ain't got to go home, <laughs> but you got to get the hell up out of here. <laughs> and so definitely, definitely, man. I know that feeling of having to go back home to the States, man. Ugh. Ugh. That's why when I go back to the States, I usually, when the, the few times that I have gone, I go back on my own. Shout out to my man, uh, the wall report for the 999 as well. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much. Khalil's in the building. Shout out to you as well. Back on the rocks is hey, my one of my partners that's that's on the live stream right now. He bring me some of that back on the rocks. That's that Killian right there. That back on the rocks cologne. Uh, back on the rocks angel shear we got coming down. We've got uh, Back on the Rocks, Angel Shear, um, Straight to Heaven. I think Apple Brandy. I'm not sure. It's like five different Killian. Killian is a brand, a cologne brand that's dedicated to boozy scents, to 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 alcoholic, uh, not alcoholic, but but alcohol. 
uh, uh, sense or there we go. <laughs> yeah, you in here. Yeah. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. You're looking good, so girl. Sorry. You're looking good. Thank you. Can everybody I, I, see I, I, me? Yeah, everybody can see you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Got the okay. hair going. See, you You making me bad, making me wish I had my hair again. Oh, I, I, and I see we got drink at hand. Salud. Salud. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Glad that you're here, Paola. Uh, for those that don't know who you are, first of all, we're going to we're gonna uh, uh, make sure that I got all the guys that put in the super chat, such as my man, JVC. Shout out to you, brother. He said, what's a good location recommended to move in Cali? Me personally, I would say out north, out here in Parque Norte area, because everything is a walking distance. You have Chippy Choppy Mall out here. You have uh, you have the uh, uh, Exodo, you got Home Center, you've got a lot of condos that are being built out here that they're turning into new apartments and Airbnbs, as well as other things that are available out here. Not even a five minute drive away from this area out north, you have the Club Living, you have Club Negra, so you have a lot of really upscale, upscale nightclubs in this area as well out north. So if it were me, part of me, I'm out north. I am out north. How you been doing, Paola? Excellent, excellent. Now I've, I've been following how you, you on Instagram. How you been? How is Andrea? She's doing great. She's in there. She's she's in the other room. Now, I got a question for you, because Andrea's in the other room. Is this weekend Valentine's Day weekend or next weekend? Because I could be wrong. This weekend. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay. Because because last year it was on the. No, one, no, the year that I asked Andrea, it was on the 21st. I came down, I surprised her from the States, and I asked her to marry me. That was, that was, that was, that was the uh, Valentine's Day weekend. It's always like the second Saturday of September or something like that. I don't really know okay. how it works. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I, see, I ain't gonna dip in your business and ask you if you got any plans. I ain't about to dip like that. But if I got any what? If you have any plans already set up for, for your Valentine's Day, but I do want to wish you happy Valentine's Day weekend. Thank you, thank you. All right, definitely. And, and, and we're gonna we're going to have your your uh I got my man Stefano, who's one of the moderators. He's gonna be sharing, if you don't mind, your your Instagram, your TikTok, and your YouTube. You I, I miss uh miss you. Uh, we need to get on top of that YouTube. Ah, uh, I'm trying. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Now, now, as we were talking before, for those that don't know you, let them know where you're from, what you do as far as your business for expats, uh, as far as, uh, and what you have been doing. Um. So, hi, everybody. This is Paola Sanz, your Costeña girl here. <laughs> That's right. Um... So, oh, um, yeah, so I live in Medellin, Colombia. I run a business, a tourism business that is for, um, first is the medical part of it, which is like the mirrors and people who get, uh, who comes here for like plastic surgery and stuff. We try to create a package for them, you know, with the stays for the Airbnb, they need a doctor to, you know, to, to help them in the process. And, mm -hmm. Of course, there is the tourism part of my business, which is like mostly for groups or people who are relocating in Medellin or Cartagena. If they need a lawyer for the visa, they need apartments long term that are not like are not Airbnbs. Um, yeah, that's basically what I do in property management. So a little right. bit of everything, like they all go together, kind of. And, and uh, as we were saying, guys, uh, as I was saying earlier, this channel is like like we say our motto is the name of the channel is love crossing borders where we help you find love across borders or fall in love with the borders that you cross so if you're falling in love with colombia itself these are what the things that we do on this channel to help you relocate or have a great vacation a great safe time wonderful time here in colombia because we do want you to fall in love with the country 
in what you're visiting. And so that's one of the reasons why we brought Paola here is to let you guys know that there's always somebody that's available. If you don't have us, you have her. So we're going to make sure that's one of the reasons we're giving you guys her Instagram and TikTok information to reach out to her as far as business. Not risky business, fellas. Fellas, come on now. Come on now. I know, I know, I know she's gorgeous, but so am I. So at the end of the day, guys, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely make sure that you guys, when you reach out to her, reach out to her as I already said in the last live stream. I said if, if I was single, you would be my wing girl. In other words, my female friend that introduces me because Columbia is a I say a spider web. Network. If you want to meet right, if you want to meet good women, another good woman will introduce you to good women, and that's how it works. And good men introduce, you know, introduce women to good men, and it just works like that. So I'm like, listen, if it was me, Paola be, she'd be Paola be my wing girl. She'd introduce me to and introduce me to and introduce me, and she could say like Andrea, uh, you know, get an Andrea, get one like your wife, don't get one like this one. That's what you want. You want women in your phone that are part of your network that can introduce you to some good people as well as introduce you to some great things that you can do. Tell tell us about, because a lot of individuals are really glancing at Santa Martha. I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of YouTubers starting to put out more Santa Martha videos. Tell us about Santa Martha. Give me at least three or four things that that attracts people to that area or that would attract people to that area? Well, the thing about Santa Marta is that it's so beautiful and it's like so local, like it's so rich in nature. We have beach and then we have the mountainside, which is like a weather like Medellin type of. We have like everything. It's one of the, it's one of this unique city. I was just in Rio, so I can compare it to Rio because we have like the mountains on the back of the beach. It's so exotic and it's not, I mean, it, it is touristic, but it's not as touristic. So it is still very affordable. Even to live there is a um, definitely a tropical weather. It's a lot of you know, you just walking on the street and and you just find this fruits, mango, pineapple. It's just a beautiful coast city with, with beautiful people. I would say that. Yeah. You know, what Santa Marta remind me of, and and I didn't realize until I went there. Santa Marta remind me of. If you couldn't make it to San Andreas Island, Santa Marta is the next best that that island feel without leaving the mainland of Colombia. The beach life, the uh, the laid back is more laid back without as many tourists as Cartagena, but it's more laid back. I love Santa. The, my favorite part of Santa Marta for me, the beaches are great. The the people, the 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 uh, the, the city. But my favorite part is when you step out the airport and the ocean is right there greeting you saying, come on in, welcome, welcome home. Welcome, welcome home. Oh my God, I've never experienced that. I love that. Right off the ocean is the is the airport. And as soon as the door is open, you, I mean, right in front of you is the ocean. That's great. Let's get started. We got some questions that we're going to present. We're going to come back to the super chats in a moment guys but we got a few questions that we want to present in regards to our topic because our topic today is is, is all about relationships positive relationships so i had a few questions that i had for paola and okay. i already sent her what those questions are i already got it pulled up on my phone as well so let me give you a moment yeah <laughs> give you a moment take your time take your time no, I'm ready. I was sorry. I was because I'm getting that air. It's on Airbnb messages, but I'm here. Okay, let's go. Okay, I'm ready. Cool. All right, here we go. All right. First question is What are the three things foreigners, because I see this all the time, three areas or three things in which foreigners make assumptions about Colombian Colombians or especially Colombian women that you found is not always true? Foreigners think when they come here th about this, about most Colombian women. I'd say it, but I want to hear from you. One is that because I'm a foreigner, I have access to them. Like they're just going to fall for me because I'm, I'm a foreigner. 
and there is people here who, who like foreigners some other people don't like foreigners but it's just a mix a second one would be all i need is money to pull up a body like yes you can you can uh, attract and attract women because of course when you're walking on the street seven out of ten women are attractive so the chances of you and that when an attractive woman is absolutely true but it doesn't mean that it's always because of money a, a woman with values is going to be attracted to you and what do you think your third one is the other thing that uh, that foreigners think but it's not true uh... And I'm thinking about another one. I always have them, but not because you're asking me. It's like I got one for I was, you. Uh huh. Green card. Oh yes. They automatically I, swim. I had it on the oh, yes. The the green card, the dream. She wanna use me for the papers. She wanna move to America. Oh my god. No, guys. Not everybody wants to move. I know. Of course, there is people who wanna leave. I have friends in the state, female friends. But not everybody, that's not always a factor why they're with you or that's not always a factor because sometimes they don't want to leave or they don't want to specifically live in the United States. So so if you want to really interact, be genuine and like just draw, even if you have to be, you have to be aware, you have to be aware, but just, just drop this mentality of victimizing, oh, I'm a green girl, they're always going to use me because then you just end up pushing away maybe real women, good women that you find because it's like, I don't have to deal with somebody who is traumatized about me dealing with him because of benefits of being an American citizen, you know? Absolutely correct. So I'm going to recap real quick everything that you just mentioned. Paola said, first statement is in regards to the question of what are the assumptions that foreigners often make about Colombian women that aren't necessarily true? First thing she said that you guys automatically assume that you go, we men automatically assume we have easy access to the ladies. I'm, and you guys always hear me say this. You have easy access to three type of women in Colombia. I'll say this again. Three type of women pay for play for the money. That's their job. Whether they work in a brothel or whether they're in Parque Yeris or at the clock tower, whatever it is, pay for play. Yes, you have easy access to them. Party girls, that all they do is party. Party is their life. All you got to do is pay for them to be in a VIP a couple of times and make sure they get whatever their favorite drink is or favorite whatever it is, and they'll party with you the whole time you're here. Yes, party women are like that. Scammers, women that are out to scam you, do the ones that you guys say, she got me whether she drugged you or robbed you or scammed you out of this one or you now you're western you and poppy whatever it is scammers yes those three women you do have easy access to we're talking about the other 98 percent of colombian women that are just everyday women that are going to their jobs that are riding the bus that are in school these women don't assume you have easy access to you have to be the man that you're supposed to be in order to get access to these women. Second thing is money. Don't assume, I already said this a bunch of times, I'm glad she said it. Don't assume because you got a few dollars in your pocket that every woman in Colombia wants you. Because you might be the biggest headache with your money. You might have, a, you might be a dude that got a nice bit of money, but you work her last mother. A man with money can work the last nerve of a woman just like a woman with looks, but no good personality, no good heart can work the last come on guys how many times have we told a beautiful woman you gotta go i know there's plenty of gorgeous women back home in the states i told them girl mm -mm, no it's over but i'm sexy yes you are goodbye that's the same way that many colombian women are if you are a man you got money but you're not a good person last thing she said is when it comes to the green card what you're gonna end up doing is pushing that person away one of the things that i notice about many colombian women just like women in many other countries they love their flag they love having their own country their own celebration their own everything so don't assume that because you are an american 
or you are someone from Canada or UK that automatically everybody wants to come to the United States. I said, because I've met a lot of um, uh, women, including my wife, that want to visit but are not looking to live or relocate in the United States. And we're going to go to the Super Chats in a few moments, guys. Make sure you continue to keep that glass full, woman. <laughs> and numero dos, the next question is, do, I said put, I put do must, but it, I meant to say do most. Do most Colombianas have sex with foreigners the first night? Or is this, in other words, do Colombianas, is this a hookup culture? where you could just walk up to the average Colombian, have a good conversation, Colombiana, and next thing you know, you guys are in bed three hours later and you don't even know his name, she don't know your name. In the States, that is very, very common to have a one night stand where we just have sex for one night and I never talk to you again, you never talk to me again. But is that common here in Colombia? I wouldn't say it's not, and I wouldn't say it is. I guess mm -hmm. girls, especially, I'm from Santa Marta, it's a smaller town, but what I've seen in Medellin is that girls are very open, like more open-minded, like, okay, I like you, let's buy, and whatever happens, happens, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, I've seen that, I've been in those clothes in Provenza, which is like the main tourist area, and I've seen how girls have lived with gringos, just deny they were dancing because they could drink, whatever. But I'm not gonna say the majority are like that. I say it can happen, but I will say that again. Not because she has sex with you the first night means she's a hooker, but not because she didn't have sex with you the first night means she's she's a a, a, a decent girl because she could be just putting up this how you say in English like this face this this, right. this fachada. So. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give it a number or a percentage of 50 fifty. It's just like you will find girls that will. You will find girls that that really won't. Especially not in a club. Like, oh, I just met you in a club or dancing. I think that's more like if that happens from a club, it's more like a girl who is like a party girl mm -hmm. or, or more like. Uh, I'm just jolo. I'm just living life. You know. Of right 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 yep yep i agree with you 100 everything that you just said it just it just goes back to what i was mentioning that certain things can happen in the party world or scammer girl or pay for play woman yes but when it comes to an average woman your the percentage of, of women that i know that are average women have never had a one night stand they only when i talk to women they really don't even understand what that is the uh, average woman that's not a party girl don't know what that is to sleep with a guy for one night and uh never talk to him again or sleep with him on the first night coming off the plane but like you just said it could happen but it's not the norm among regular women shout out to my man c's in the building c says shout out to you and also to my man law dogs in the building he said, Apollo's he says, he says, your business sounds interesting. He said, I'm going to recommend it to friends. So, so pa 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 Paola, if you have a link or anything that you want to share, uh, you definitely can put that in the comment section. You can do that from your phone. You can do that from your computer. Put that in the comment section when it comes to your business uh, of uh, how you open up doors uh, for guys. And, mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Andre. Sorry to interrupt you. In my below my name is a CEO of Ultimate Colombia. That's my company names on Instagram. So I've been doing this for longer, but because it was more like people refer me and they were like, oh, go to Paola. So they would go to my personal media. So I've been running now. I'm trying to build the website of my company and everything. But that's my my company's IG. You can go there and follow and follow it too. And then of course I have a business uh, number through this company that you can always contact to but it will like the instagram page will give you this okay great great that's perfect he says i um, he said i'm recommending it to friends and even um might use it myself when i return he said good to and, learn about you go ahead sorry 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 no no 
No, and I say I do consulting too for lifestyle and traveling to Colombia and relocating here. And I do consultants alone or I do consultants with a lawyer uh, with me to, to, to answer your questions about visa process and all this. All right. Do you also help uh, individuals when it comes to if they need a translator? Like like they, they may they may like you like you said, they may be working with a lawyer and or they may be working in a situation where they where they're getting an apartment, but they don't have anybody that, that they, they aren't fluent when it comes. They may be fluent. Let's put it like this. They may be fluent when it comes to situational Spanish, but when it comes to legal terms, they might be lost. So do you yeah. introduce them to a translator or do you do translating? Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of events we do. I haven't really split everything on social media because I've been busy and I'm assisting. It's also mm -hmm. we're focusing on those things right now. But if you hit up my business page, whatever it is you need regards to Colombia, we can always help you or or connect you to people who can help you. In fact, all right, yeah. all right, that's great to hear. That's really great to hear. Let's let's go to the third question. Then we'll come to you guys super chats. Uh, third question is this. And I often mention this: Are ice cream dates common in Colombia, or does a guy have to come first date? Got to be expensive, elegant date. I I would say it depends on many factors. It depends on the women you're trying to to pursue. Pursue is the word. Mm -hmm. To pursue. Pursue. I think there is women that are more uh, simple, like okay, they will accept that. But also one thing I will say now because of social media and a lot of factors, I do think women have a higher expectation than in general than just, just an ice cream date. Uh, because, um, you know, like they want to be more, maybe more in a comfortable place where you can actually have a talk or, or have drinks or eat something. And yeah, being in a nice environment. I wouldn't say it doesn't happen, but I would say, um, I don't know a lot of girls that it's the type of ice cream, <laughs> ice cream okay. date. And, or maybe an ice cream date is something that can happen, but after you, you've been with this person on a day and it's just, oh, you want to grab an a, a ice cream today. Let's right. go have an ice cream. Right. Well, as, a first, as a first date, um, I don't know. Do you think that that uh that colombianas have an expectation of foreign men that they don't have of local men because i see when it comes to local men he can do an ice cream day but when it comes to us foreigners it's like well you you're canadian so you should be taking me on a regular regular outing let's hang out at a regular restaurant or or go out for drinks do you think that is different because of the economics? Um, I guess, yes. I guess when they are normally dating foreigners and like like looking looking up to date foreigners, um, they expect more because they know it's, it's um, a different financial status and a different financial situation. And most of the time they're actually willing to go out with foreigners is because those girls either got something going on or maybe if they don't they just know that maybe this guy is not richer or rich in his country but he uh -huh. has financially the the capacity to take her to a restaurant or to a bar that's what i think or that's what i i say that's a good point that's a good point i mean i i that's a good point and and, and a lot of times when we are traveling as as, as foreigners we're not looking to go to inexpensive spots anyway. We're like, listen, I've been working for the last six months and I finally, I'm finally on vacation. I'm in Colombia and I didn't come here to be cheap. And if you're going to be with me, you're not going to be cheap because we're going to go to some nice places. So I could understand that when it comes to uh, going to nice places and having the expectations of it because but we're also, going to... Also Oh, sorry. Also understand that this is not consistent. This is like the dating stage. But now if you're dating somebody, I'm not expecting you to take me to Carmen or El Cielo every weekend because that, that that's not a sustainable lifestyle, especially if you're trying to deal with somebody. I think that's something you definitely should look for. 
uh, when you're dating somebody, like what are the intentions? If that woman has intentions with you, she's looking forward the future with you. And with that being said, she's actually thinking about, okay, let's not just eat out every day or let's do this because we want to, you know, create, um, we want to create a very solid uh, financial stability so we can go forward with our future, have children, travel, et cetera, et cetera. Can Paola cook? Can Paola cook? Excuse Kamita, me? Kamita, can you cook? Uh, yes, I can. See, I, I, you know what? I like the face that you made when I said it. I like the, the face that you made. Like, like, obviously, I can cook. It's a part of, you know, my culture. I, I, you didn't have to go into details. It's part of the culture of where you're from in, in Santa Marta. I appreciate that. I really do. No, really, because I, I think one of the things, one of the, one of the misconceptions that's going on back home in the States among men and women is that it's the little things that a woman does and the little things that a man does that keeps the relationship going. When me and my wife, when me and Andrea, it's the little things that we do for each other. It's not necessarily big things, but it's the, those those small things like Andrea will, I'll be in a mood for something and Andrea will be like, she'll walk in the room and she has just cooked that particular thing that I was in the mood for. But yet and still, when it comes to whatever Andrea wants, Andrea gets. Because at the end of the day, like you were saying, when you're in that relationship stage, now you guys are growing to build something. So great point. That's an excellent point. And I'm going to get to the Super Chats right after this next question, guys. I promise you. Uh, the next question is, what is the best way or locations to meet Colombianas in most of the major cities, whether you're in Bogota, whether you're in Medellin, whether you're in Berenquilla, Calais, what, what, what's the, some of the best One ways to meet? Can we do, you say you are the winning girl, you say I could be the winning girl, right? I think yeah. guys connect good with other guys, mm -hmm. right? so if you if you get to connect with colombian guys especially they have you know family reunions they have they go out with their friends and their friends being always female so that was i think that's a good way also to just meet women that that are not necessary through dating apps and going to places you know events not not always events like oh this this party no like brunch events uh they may be organizing this meeting for entrepreneurs maybe you're just in the city and you're not planning to stay long but you are you want to go to this meeting for entrepreneurs so you you can meet like all the people and you got a better understanding of how the is the entrepreneur life for people in colombia that connects you to locals like go to events i would say event is is a big thing here to to, to get to know people that's so true so true i when i got here uh when i was in medellin i went to language exchange groups i went to salsa lessons where others were there i went to i'm, I'm part of toastmasters public speaking and it's toastmasters international so i joined toastmasters international here in colombia so i met a lot of people that that stand up and give speeches here even though my spanish is not that great but yet and still i could still uh, be a part of the organization because many individuals that were Toastmasters or public speakers spoke English as well. And so you're absolutely correct. Going into to groups or events will introduce you. They also have what I often mention, guys. In the States, we have meetup.com. Whatever interest you're in, bowling, skating, golf, fishing, public speaking, podcasting, <laughs> stamp collecting doesn't matter what your interest is meetup.com in the states if you type it in there it'll pull up people in your own city that meet up to have events for that where they have here in colombia meetup.co it's the same company and it's meetup.co and whatever you're interested in here in colombia your whatever your hobby is there's probably somebody in colombia that likes bowling like you men and women roller skating like you fishing like you whatever it is they have that down here so she's absolutely correct when it comes to guys become a part of events and it will amaze you how many people that you'll meet 
Yeah. Definitely. Let's get to these super chats real quick. Shout out to my brother once again with the five dollar super chat. He said he said I was on my school bus while watching uh frustrated tres, frustrated three. Uh for you guys that haven't seen the movie series Frustrated One, Frustrated Two, Frustrated Three, it is about is an excellent movie series that you guys can look up. Uh you can Google it. And I kid you not, it is one of the best documentaries on everything from being frustrated with dating in the United States to some of the baby daddy laws in the United States to, you know, guys relocating on my age, relocating outside of the United States, looking for love in different locations. So he said he was watching Frustrated 3 and the boys saw that I was watching it and they pulled out their passport cards on my bus. And this is how this whole journey of all his stories started, guys because he was on the bus and after kevin samuels died the, the 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 uh the girls in the high school were teasing the boys about kevin samuels death death and so what ended up happening is the fathers who were passport bros got their son's passports so now these sons are traveling to colombia and to brazil and in peru in other countries that are in south america and all this started while he was a school bus driver and the young men were just so proud to know that their bus driver was a passport bro like their fathers someone man just keep poppy in the building he said what's up dre he said i've been living full time in medellin or medellin uh for almost five years shout out to you brother he said man i need to do an interview with you bro i need for you to reach out to me i need to schedule an interview with you so shoot me an email in all sincerity he said, my name is Andre as well, namesake, the word, the name Andre. I was just telling the brother doing a consultation a few minutes ago, I would never change my name because the word Andre, the name Andre means manly man, alpha male, strong man, man, man among men. I love the name that when I found out the definition of our name, Andre, man, listen, yes, I am a manly man. I am a man among men. I am alpha and all that and all that it entails. So at the end of the day, shout out to us Andres out there. You, some of you guys need to look up the definition of your names. You might find out some great things about it. He said, how do you get uh, get the Colombians to say your name correctly? You won't. Your name in Colombia will always be Andres. You will never hear and Nobody ever calls me Andre. It's always Andres. <laughs> so I'm already at peace with that. I've come I've come to be at peace with that. Uh, he said, I've been uh, going by uh, Andre. That's it, Andreas. <laughs> That's what I say. I, I say it now. I don't even introduce myself as Andre anymore. I just say my name is Andreas. And so, and it's more, and, and even what, yeah, yeah, Paolo. But why, why is that? Because is there a lot of Andreases here? I mean, you just spoke wrong my name in your last stream so let's talk, about, let's talk about i your did i put a u in there are, are I, put, I did i caught the, did, uh, did i not correct it did i no. did did i not take the u out i took the u i said that your name was spelled and i thought i was right i spelled i spelled your name as p a u o l a and then i was like wait a minute is there a u in it like after the live stream ended so i went to uh i went to instagram and i saw there was no you in there and i was like oh, okay i misspelled her name so i want to i want to apologize because I, I i don't like when people misspell my name and i don't like when people misspell columbia with a u columbia right so yeah definitely definitely thank you Thank you for correcting me regarding your name. So I guys, gonna... guys, oh, don't get mad. Just like you mess up our names, it's normal. It's, it's I think it's, it's more of an accent thing. It's more of a, of a what we used to hearing type of thing. Because we're not used to be, oh, my name is Andre. Okay, we have Andres. Okay, I'm gonna call you Andres. I, I, it's not like it's a lack of interest for, for, by, for pronunciating your name properly. It's more about our mind already has an information for years. Mm -hmm. Now we're just playing it again and again. It's 
eventually we can i'm not saying we're incapable of, of saying it properly i'm just saying we just used to so many things just like everybody called me opola because you guys used to the paula whatever in the united states uh -huh, uh -huh. even english people but it's mm -hmm. only paula you know saying because you mean to be rude and no no interest in learning my name but you saying it because your mind is just like it's by it's by inertia i don't know how to say inertia in English. yeah 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 you just have a, that muscle memory and so you you just go by the muscle memory that you've already produced but i won't lie i like andreas anyway I, i'll <laughs> take it because i like i like how they say it and so i'm like roll with it i'm with it i like it let's get ready to go to the you about to say something no i say it's almost this thing andre andres yeah oh. yeah I, I, I like it i'm like okay cool definitely but yeah shout out to you dre uh my man jay in the building with the ten dollar uh well, oh man, we got a lot of colombian brothers down here in colombia my man jay down here in colombia with the ten thousand pesos he said when people ask me about colombia uh i often uh give them the link to uh andres paola etc a d's tour uh and i uh and i dj all over medellin shout out to you man i ain't mad at you he said uh and i like to interview you too man you man some of you dudes man showing up tonight man i need for y'all to email me man i really do because i really would like to get an interview with some of you guys that have been here for a while and understand your experiences of being here as well he said he said but i ain't the plug even though he's the dj i am not the connection for the ladies and for all you other for all your other vices i'm not the plug so don't come to me like he the dj he know everybody no just because i know everybody that's what he's saying just because i know everything i'm not the plug so it is with oh I, that's a good question that's a good question for you paola pa, paola i'm trying to get my my, my pronunciation <laughs> correctly. you see i'm doing this pa is paola right paola yes paola do guys often come down looking for you to be the connect hey i need i need the, i need to know what all the brothels are i need what to go with all the ladies and nights are. i need to get my my weed connection i need to make sure i got my marijuana i need to do off the guys often come down when you tell them that your services are professional do they often come down like listen i'm gonna throw you a few dollars if you show me where all the ladies ladies can you bring me 50 colombians to my hotel in about four hours do you they find do. dude right they do. they do yeah of course of course because at the end i mean at the beginning they like oh you're cute or whatever but then now they have they know i have a, this company and now it's like okay i want this but i also want this because i'm here for this right they they right. have of course absolutely not because i'm a female right. some, some of them don't of course but some of them are very open like they don't care they hear for what they hear and... and 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 one thing that i can say if you're on vac and that's why i try to for you guys that 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 watch our channel if you are a vacationer a lot of what i say doesn't apply to you because you're here for five days i know what you're here for you were here to relax unwind have a good time go back home i'm with you much of our content that me and andrea display is for guys that are or ladies that are thinking about you know what i've been to colombia maybe seven times i like it i might want to move there so a lot of our content is for not just for vacationers but also for guys that want to move here now as for me paola could hook you up as for dre I ain't that hookup dude. I was married, and that's not part of my business. Her her business is to make sure that you guys have a great and safe time here in Colombia. That's her business to make sure that you guys have a great and safe time, and that you guys can recommend her business to other individuals that are thinking about coming down. As for me, I got limitations. I can't tell you where all the spots are. You know, if a married man can tell you where all those spots are. You got to question what type of married man you talking to, right? Right. You better, so, you don't want to be here with a chancleta, 
<laughs> I don't know, right? I ain't trying to get here with the chocolate girl. I ain't trying to get with the what I got. Let me see if I got a chocolate around here. Oh, here we go. This is my chungler. I am not trying to get, I'm, I'm not trying to walk in the house at 4.30 in the morning. Andrea's sitting here like this. <laughs> I don't I don't need the chungler life. I'm good. I want, I, I'll let you guys sit around and enjoy life. And the, I, I, I didn't realize that the chungler is universal. Women in India and mothers in India use the chungler. In Africa, in the United States, every mother has that saying though. That they you will not believe i have a lot of african friends and i find very interesting the similarity in our mother raising us up like this very similar things like the chancla thing the so many things like they saving out your clothes so it can fit to your brother in two years there's a lot of little things like the saving the packages of something because it looks cute so you can save something else so that many things so many things that is so interesting. I found Even that. The terms, in the terms, in the course, we have something like, like doing this and Jamaican, they do it, but it's a stronger. Africans, they do it to see like Zimbabwe, uh, Nigeria, Ghana. They do something but like, but in the course, in Costanias, Colombia, we'd be like, something like this. And it's so funny when I'm with my we, African friends. We, we do that in the States. Well, the more women do that in the States, we call it smacking your lips. Your mother will kill you. If she catch you like you were a kid, and your mother like, girl, tell, like, tell my sister, go in there and wash the dishes. And my mother hit that smack like, smack your lips again. If you smack your lips, I'ma smack your lips. Like, you can't, <laughs> like, like in the States, you can, cause, cause smacking your lips is almost like, when a woman does it, it's almost like, I don't care. Bye. I don't care. You're right. And so when my mom used to hear my sister smack them lips, smack your lips again. You're going to find yourself over the, the death threats come from America. I don't know if, if Colombian mothers do that, but especially in the Afro-American community, I mean, Afro-Colombian community, Afro-American mothers, death threats all your life. They will I, what? Brought you, I brought you in this world. I'll take you out of this world. Uh, uh, no, ahead. it in Spanish in the course we have we have this uh, meme 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 where it's meme. like my mama was great because she was a she was a uh odontology like a dentist and she was a dentist she taking the teeth out out your mouth she will tell me she she she's a dent she was a dentist because she told me if you don't leave that there I will take take your teeth out she was um she was a lawyer she was uh everything she was a teacher yeah 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 boy and it's kind of funny that now that i'm here so many stories but so many i was talking to an afro-colombian friend of mine the other day and I, she was like mm, mm -hmm. and i'm like we do that in the states you don't think about those little things that we do in the states like mm-hmm I, mm -hmm, I hear you. Mm -hmm. And you come to South America and you see a lot of those same traits of communication among our South American brothers and sisters. I think that's probably one of the, uh, uh, Paolo, that's probably the, one of the number one things that I appreciate about being down here, meeting all of my cousins, all of my aunties, all of my grandmothers that I didn't meet all of the all of, of the black family see only six percent of the ships of slavery went to the united states only four hundred thousand people went to the united states over 70 percent went to the caribbeans in south america colombia brazil uh uh and other locations around south america that's where the bulk of our family members we were all on the same ships but we got separated and only a few of us went to the states and most of our family members came to south america or the caribbeans so when we went to cuba i got a chance to meet our black cousins and aunties and some of the recipes and foods the seasonings when we went to the caribbeans where we went to dr 
individuals that were Haitians. It's little things that, that like that that I love about being in South America when I meet my my brothers, my sisters, my family of African descent, and we have so much in common, more more than we realize. And it's not just, okay, I'm in South America, it's completely different, but there's a lot of stuff that, as me and Paola was just saying, that's very common in North America when it comes to our parents and our families, as well as South America. Right. Oh yeah. Let's get ready to go to the, the next super chat. Shout out to you once again. He said, uh, oh yeah, I already did this one. Reach out to me, brother. I would love to hear your story, man. I really would love to share your story. Ethan's in the building. Once again, my, uh, hey, all you uh, all you Colombian brothers up in here tonight, shout out to y'all for being here. Paolo, will you, <laughs> will you marry me? I'm Colombia. Uh, uh, order. <laughs> uh, order. Now, 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 mind you, I'm, I'm going to say this. I don't know if she'll marry you. I don't know. But my point is, is this. There's a lot of good women such as her, such as Andrea, that are professional, good women. I keep trying to tell you guys, man, y'all keep going for all the girls that want to go to the party every day. Man, there's some good women that's like, listen, I party with you. I have fun with you. But outside of that, let me ask you this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm glad that he asked that question. What are you looking for at this stage of life? Oh, okay. Now let's do it like this. You're my wing girl. Let's do it this way. Now, wing, let me let me put me put myself back in here so you'll see what I'm talking about. The term wing man or wing girl. Like I can have a wing man that it, it came from World Andrew, War you One. Can be, Andrew, you can be my wing man. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm your wing man. I, I hook you up. I got you. I got you, girl. I will hook you up. See, I'm a perfect wing man because I'm quick to say, hell no. Oh no, not you. I'm willing, you, I'm willing to do what other coaches do about just a straight Mary. Okay, like you're gonna be my women, you filtrate the man, you say Paola, this is the man you're gonna marry, I marry him. Damn, Don't. I got you. Don't I got you. I, I'm not okay. in the market anymore. And That's I will it. marry me to a great man. I'm sure if you think I wouldn't. I, I'm a hookup artist extraordinaire. Yes, I am. I will hook, hook you up. I'll be like, okay, I got somebody for you. You be like, you for real, Andre, woman, I got your back. You know I'm not going to give you some riff riffraff. I got you. I got you a real dude. Wingman came from in the military. You had two planes, and they would fly. They would look out for each other. Their wings, like wings, like, like airplane wings. They would make sure that this one, he would make sure that he didn't get shot. He would make sure that he didn't get shot during World War One, World War Two. So that they were wingman. They looked out for each other. They made sure that nobody was was interrupting or were able to hurt them. So the term wingman in the states is like when you go to a club, like dog. I got I met a woman, but she got a friend. I need you to be the wingman. Talk to her friend while I talk to her. The wingman, your boy, your dog. That's your wingman. Your wing girl is a female that introduce you to the women that be like, listen, my boy Andre down here, he looking good, girl. Is he? He tall? How tall is he? Tall, tall. Okay, okay. What he looking like? Handsome. All right. Successful. Good brother. Sense of humor. All right. Girl, introduce me to him. That's a wing girl. Wing girls are the ones that but if I was a bad person and Wait, your girl sorry I just hear, see the comments of people saying I hope he's joking uh, he gotta be playing what are you guys talking about I don't understand in the comments I don't get it either I have, let, let, let's take a look okay here we go let's scroll down the quiz storm he say I hope he's joking where men's look say me too and somebody else say he gotta be playing too much thirst what are you guys talking about? Yeah, give me give, give, give us some clarity, guys, so we can know what you're talking about. Cause I'm way behind in regards to shout out to my man once again, uh Passport Bros uh podcast. Make sure you guys subscribe to this brother, man. If you ain't subscribed to this channel, you're doing yourself a disservice. Good evening, fam and Paola. He said, uh Dre, I like how you uh how you big up yourself. Man, dude, 
I big up myself no matter what. No what matter is what. Up? Big up is like speak confidence about yourself. Like when I say I look good, feel good, get nice height. I'm, I'm I'm laying a foundation, but at the end of the day, I can I, I can say certain things because at the end of the day, you guys have you all in the comments have followed us for four years. You guys know where my heart is. It's Andre and Andre for L for life. We ain't like Jeezy, right? Two years later, paying child support. So at the end of the day, uh, when I say Wayne girl, we just we just talking metaphorically. But if if I knew one of you guys that I give you a perfect example, just a couple of weeks ago, I already told you guys, one of Andrea girls, really really nice, beautiful. One of my partners that I knew that was a good dude came down here. I said, oh, let me let me do my wingman and be a wing wingman to her too. I purposely knew exactly what I was doing with connecting them, and they've been conversing all the time ever since for the last three months i knew what i was doing because i knew that she, i knew andrew's friend was a good woman and i knew my boy was a good man who's about to retire from the military and he's looking to move down here so and putting two good people together and it worked itself out she's 5'11 he's 5'8 and they are the happiest people together so when I sit back and I talk about being a wingman or introducing somebody to somebody, if I introduce Paola to somebody, you better believe it's something about you that make me say, you know what, bruh, I got somebody for you. Paola, I got somebody for you. I'm not one of those dudes that just throw people together just to throw people together. So at the end of the day, yeah, man. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm happy. Like I always say, I'm always happy for you guys that are out there. He said uh, that Ethan is joking and that it's not actually uh, actually proposing. No, I know Ethan was just joking. I got that. I know that. Shout out to Ethan. I know him. I've, I've, I've helped him with some uh, looking for places to stay in Medellin. Oh, okay. Show sure enough, Dre. Show sure enough. Uh, passport, he said, he said, man, he said, uh, I'm all about growth, bro. Absolutely correct. I know that, brother. Uh, my maturity level is a little high. Um, speak about see, I'm dipping in somebody else's conversation. My bad, you guys were talking to each other. He said, Andre is a good wingman. I am, dude. I've always been like that because I've had so many female friends in the states. And remember, guys, I was introduced to Colombia from my Colombian friends in Florida. My five, dude, my five, my last five years back home in the states, I never went to a regular like sister brother black club in other words i was going to all the colombian clubs in tampa because we got a huge colombian population in my neighborhood so all i knew was colombians i remember seeing i was telling somebody yesterday uh paula i remember seeing kiro g when she was 19 and she come to she had just made, did her first u.s tour she was maybe getting 300 people into the into the stadium I mean, into into the into the little club, perform her songs. I, I'm the tallest one in there. I'm the tallest black brother in there, and I know all Kira G songs. And people wonder, like, how who the hell, who is this brother that knows all her songs? And it was amazing to see two years later to see her with with Bad Bunny when he had just started, Jay Balvin. J Balbin and all these other individuals and now they all kind of like grew together at the same time you know work with stateside performers and stateside uh producers and see all them grow together but that's how long i've been part of the, the colombian community so my colombian friends were like you hang out with us anyway you need to go to our country i was like what you need to go to colombia you will find it sorry to stop you uh, uh andre there Jiren S. I, I, I'm curious about this user because he's always like saying some like affirming things about me like he knows me. Do you know me? And I've seen also some comments about you saying I'm not as traditional. I'm not all that people say I am. Like, who are you? I'm just okay. curious. Let me, let, you say, his, what is his name? 
Jiren Jirenas. I don't know how to pronounce his name. This individual? No. Jiren. Shout to you, brother. He said, the dress of compliments. He said, dear guys, uh, uh, just saying that guys being flirtatious and, and joking. I'm with that, without a doubt. I'm trying to see. It's fine. We don't have to give to, to, to give it like a big importance. I was just asking him. I, I was just asking him like what what's going on because I feel like is there something mm -hmm. personal? Like what's going on? <laughs> I know, right? Here, here we go. Give me a second, Paolo. Thank you. I'm gonna tell y'all now. Don't be doing that shit. On the other channels, y'all can act a damn fool all y'all want. You can embarrass yourself. You can act, say whatever you want. This ain't that channel. Y'all know how we do. This is a grown men location. This is the one place on YouTube where grown ass men could come and be grown ass men. All that childish ass shit. Let's say you know Paola. Let's say you know her. I don't give a fuck what you want a cookie. Y'all gonna stop that. And I mean it now. All them, them brash ass comments. Now the flirtatious comments. Keep them coming, brother. I ain't mad at you. I would, if she was single, I flirt too. I ain't mad at you. Me personally, she'd be my wing girl. But as for you single guys, I'm with you. But all you hater ass motherfuckers, y'all could take that shit to the next channel. And I mean that for the bottom of my heart. All you moderators, next time somebody, uh, you, you just assume somebody say some stupid shit, put them in timeout. You ain't got to worry about assuming if Andre will want him in timeout, put that ignorant motherfucking timeout. I don't know who it is, but we ain't that channel. Every single time we have a young lady on here that's respectful, y'all always got to be on that bullshit. And I'm tired of it. We too fucking grown on this channel to be acting like them little ass kid channels. Now, if you want to go to the mother channels, skedaddle your little happy ass over there. But as for here, this is love crossing borders. You know what your happy ass walked into and ain't nobody put a gun in your head and tell your ass to watch this channel and put comments in. That's uncalled for. So whoever it is, you try to keep acting like you Tom Tucker, that dumb motherfucker, you will be the main one and the first one put in timeout. If after timeout, you put another statement in there, your ass will be banned from the channel. And I ain't never banned nobody from the channel, but I'm tired of it. Not tonight. I knew somebody was gonna be the motherfucking embarrassment. I knew that shit was gonna happen. And so whoever wants to be the embarrassment, I promise you, you gonna get embarrassed. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Now, as I was saying, I got one more question. Yes, I do. One more question for you. Then we're gonna watch the video that our man Aaron from Black Man's Travel, who lives in Medellin, he actually did a video uh, remember the other day he was the guy that was on our channel the other day when we reviewed your your video when you were with the other guy two days ago he was on here yes he hey, I know part. Aaron I know Aaron okay cool he did a part two of his video when he had the young lady interviewing other young ladies in Medellin he just dropped the part two today so we're gonna watch the part two it's not long at all it's like five minutes and uh, so we're going to look at that in a moment. And I don't want, like I said, I know that you're night. You ain't like Andre. I'm long winded. I could talk all night long, but I don't want to hold you up. So anytime that you say, Andre, you know, I finished finish my, my bottle of wine. I'm trying to chill. It's Valentine's Day weekend. Your phone might be blowing up, whatever it <laughs> might be. It's, that's what everybody's thinking, literally. <laughs> don't be, don't, uh, you, uh, don't be acting like ain't nobody all they singing LL Cool J songs all in your DMs. <laughs> I'm in love. Girl, girl, you know I miss you. You know it you're is, the only it one. It is Valentine's Day. But let me tell you something. I haven't got any happy Valentine message. No. Well, brothers, you got you got her Instagram that's coming through. So make sure. <laughs> we, we, we got the, I didn't mean people. it like that. I didn't mean it like that. So make sure you, you show us some love and just at least say happy Valentine's Day in a respectful way. So we're going to make your Valentine's Day blessed. We really are. 
Guys. We, we call it Dia del Amor y Amistad because Valentine is American, so we call it Dia del Amor y la Amistad, which means Day of mm -hmm. Love and Friendship. It's our Valentine's, but that's how we call it. Day of Love and that, Friendship. And, and I like that because you're absolutely correct. Here in Colombia, when, when you guys celebrate Valentine's Day, it's not just about the love, but it's also about celebrating your friends that you have as well. That's so true. I'm glad that you said that. Let's get to the Super Chats, guys. We'll get back to the Super Chats. Shout out to all you guys in here. I appreciate you. I really do. Let me make sure. Let me scroll down. I got my one brother. Let me see. Make sure I got uh, Dre. I got Dre. Shout out to you. Hey, Dre, make sure you email me, brother. Let me scroll down. Thank you very much, Paola, for your, your patience. No Tell me about your English journey. My English your, journey, journey? Your, your English journey. And I'll tell you why I said that. There's a reason why I said that. I was watching one of your YouTube videos. Yes, you only got three or four up there, girl. So it ain't like you got a bunch of them. And it was you were on the beach in Santa Marta. Santa Marta. And you kind of like introduced your channel. And I could see the difference then to the advancement of now. Don't be acting all brand new. You've advanced yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, in that be so I learned English with British people, my friend Megan from England. And then we, of course, with music and practicing with people, then I started working in the tourism industry with Europeans. But back in the days, my English was actually more British. If you see an interview with, I have with a big YouTuber, actually, I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want you all to see that interview. It's all... I was looking so different too. My English was that uh, if we, if you come to Santa Marta, you gotta go to these places. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. So so British for no reason. You can, you your your uh. Let me ask you this: Do you think that your that your English has gotten better because of all the places that you've also traveled and the people that you've met? or the practice that you've had with the people that you've met? I think I think the practice made the master. Like practicing, being able, like sometimes, you know, asking me, but sometimes I don't speak even Spanish in a day because it's like, if my friends, my, my mama, my local friends, Colombian friends don't speak to me that day, it's gone. Like I don't speak Spanish because then I have a clients in English, I could talk in Airbnb, all the clients here, my at work is all English. So yeah, well, only with my assistant that I would speak Spanish to, but the rest is so I think practicing, but also you, you only can talk about certain topics when you're in, in one industry, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what makes me really improve is reading in English. I, re I read a lot about metaphysics and some things. So my vocabulary and, and things like that is more for reading and audio books or, or listening to podcasts of people than actually also practicing. So I can learn new words and, you know, adapt them to conversations. Okay, cool, cool. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And like I said, I've seen how you, how you, how you evolved from before you, it, it's kind of funny how much you remind me of Andrea in a sense of how you physically evolved structure uh how you have evolved as a woman into your womanhood as well as your english has evolved i see andre's english has evolved quite a bit compared to how you know she was speaking english before we met ovio but to see how she's evolved from all the just being around people practicing to where now she said i'll be at i could be at work or i could be in a situation she said, if it goes bad, I'm cursing in English instead of Spanish. And, and, and I'll be surrounded by all Spanish speakers. She said, but I'll just break into English. If I get mad, I'm just talking English, English, English. Yeah. All right, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying, yeah, that was my journey. It's definitely being interesting. And, and I feel like English, I was meant to learn English because I was super great at school. Like I have a scholarship for university in Colombia for my grades. 
But English was one of the subjects that was the lowest score when I was in high school. No. Some, yes, yes. My math on point, literature, li, li, literature, bio, bio, biology, all the subjects on point. English barely passed it. I was so confused. And out of the nowhere, I was just speaking English. I didn't even follow the transition. So it's crazy to me that I can be this fluent and I can speak English, honest. I still don't believe it. Sometimes I'm actually thinking in English and I'm like, wait, wait, what was going on? Paula, you're Colombian, come on now. <laughs> and you know what, it's, it's funny because there are times when you speak English, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, when, when you speak English, I'll hear British or I'll hear just regular American English, but then I'll hear an undertone of Caribbean, almost like a Caribbean accent. So I don't know who you've been around from the islands, but there are times I hear like an undertone of Caribbean as well. Yes, I think because English is not my first language, when I'm around people, I just kind of like automatically, my mind is copying the way they talk. So of course I organized with my friend from Africa, Emmanuel and his girlfriend, a Afrobeat event in, in Medellin in Afrobeat and dance so Jamaican. So we have a lot of uh, Caribbean friends, Jamaican and Africans that we organize events with. So when I'm around them, I get a little bit of everything like Nigerian accent and then, you know, Jamaican. I can say I'm a good girl. I'm a mm -hmm. good girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, so okay. That's how, you know, that's how, yeah. Okay, good, because I hear it too. Shout out to my man, Where's Men's Lux for the five dollar uh super chat. He said Friday night drink in hand. Make sure you guys got your drinks in hand. You know it's Friday night. This is what we do on Friday night. We have a good drink. Once again, my drink for tonight for you guys that weren't here, it is peppermint snaps. Tastes just like peppermints, but it is definitely alcohol that will catch up with you straight from the states. Shout out to you, brother, that brought it to me from the states. I'm gonna make sure I leave Andrea some because she's never had. A lot of the drinks that you guys bring down, Andre is tasting them for the first time. So I appreciate you guys when you bring things down, uh, not only for me, but for Andre to experience for the first time, like the Crown Royal, all those other drinks. Shout out to my man C's in the building. Viola, uh, how was Brazil? He was asking, how was Brazil? Oh, Brazil. It's a really nice place. I I I I'm I'm grateful for the experience. It was raining a lot, so I didn't got to do a lot of things I wanted to do and experience Brazil. I mean Rio in its element of, of a sunny day. Mm -hmm. But it was still good. I enjoy. I see uh, I have a local friend, Jessica, and I went a few days with my friend Penelope, who is from Canada. He stayed a few days with me. Then she went to Sao Paulo. And then I just uh -huh. met friends like Oh, your friend C. Um, there is a guy here on the comment C. I think something he managed yeah. in Ice Life in live in media mm -hmm. or something. And he plugged me there with one of his friends who is a DJ, and he recommended me a few places. I went to Casa Black in, in Rio. It's like a, a place. It was amazing. It was my best night. I'm telling you, it was my best night in Rio. Shout out. That's good. So I have a good time. Uh, oh yeah, see, actually, the, the one in this comment was the one who recommended me those places. So thank you so much because thanks to that, I did have also an amazing time. So thank you. That's good. He said, "What's up with the curls uh, date?" He had a question. What with the what's up with the curls date? I don't know what's, what's, what's up. I don't understand. I don't, yeah, what's up with the curls? I guess since your hair is curly and then often you we wear it straight, I, I don't know. But uh, and he said date. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that is as well. So, give us a, a, a C. Do me a favor. Drop, drop a, a comment and let me know. Give, a little, give us a little bit more clarity in, in regards to that question, and we'll get get that to you. Shout out to you though, brother. Black Nubian. Them Canadian brothers, mom, mom. Them Canadian brothers. They're at it again. Straight out of Canada, my boy Black Nubian with the five dollar super chat. What are some of the? Oh, here we go. This is a question for you, uh, Paola. He says, what are some of the major red flags to watch out for in Colombian women? Give us three. Give us three red flags that you like. She ain't into you, bruh. Or she using you, bruh. Or 
bro, just give up, just quit. One of them is the same you'll be having when you come to Colombia. When a woman can only offer you beauty, beauty, but when, oh, like, just the same way when a man can only offer money. A red flags. We, um, I will get like regards why, well, like, I, I need two situations, so, and I can tell you, yeah, that's a red flag. But, um, I guess when you just start in the relationship and there is a lot of already too much like problems, like like she's bringing up too much problem in your life. Like, oh, my mama is sick, oh, this, this and that. Because it's not about she bringing problem and having problem because I think men always, males are like solvers. When he's interested in you, he help you and everything. And even me, like, okay, I'm financially stable and I'm good, but back in the days, if I was dating somebody or talking to somebody, I would want this person to help me because I wasn't in the same financial position I am now, right? But I guess when it's just a constant of what I can get from you type of vibe, I think that's a red flag. I, I, I was I would say the third red flag is let me let me put out put me back down to where we're together. I would say the third red flag is assumptions. One of the things that me that Andre and I had to get past were assumptions that I had about Colombianas and assumptions or things that I assumed that that she assumed that American men because most of the american men come down here I, guys let's 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 realize about this 60 percent of american men that come down here they come down here only uh for uh for vacation so most of you guys that come down you just coming down have vacation having fun nothing wrong with that it's about a good 30 to 40 percent that after a while you like i want to live in colombia i like it there but then you come down here and you already have assumptions about Colombia compared to your vacation you. I want to say this, you guys always hear me say, the vacation you will, will not know anything compared to the relocation you. When you relocate here, you know where all the, the, the best restaurants with the best prices are. You know where the fruit market is. You know where to get all your meat cut uh, uh, just right. You know to get your fish when you live here, but when you're just visiting on vacation, you only know the restaurants, the clubs, the, you know, just quick things. Cause you only been here five days or maybe five weeks. So remember the vacation you experience is different from the relocation you when you want to live here. And so now you see there's a difference between just getting an Airbnb and getting a furnished apartment because you're going to live here same thing that i that i did i came down here but i also had a, a lot of assumptions that the vacation andre had so now i'm dating andrea and uh stuff that i assumed about my wife and colombia a lot of it was wrong and a lot of stuff that andrea assumed about vacation american men when she learned and started dating a man that lived here all the stuff that she assumed about us foreign men, kind of like not all, but much of what they assume, she wiped away because I live here. So she got to see an American that literally lives here compared to an American that vacations here. So definitely guys do realize there's a difference between the two and how you carry yourself. So the third one that I would say is, the third red flag is the mistake that we both make on the Colombiana and the American guy is we have things that we assume that we know, but once you live here and you're dating her, you meeting her family and the family's into you, things that they assume about American men, it changes. Things that you assume about um, uh, Colombianas, it'll change. Paola? No, it's true. Everything you say is true. Um, also, guys, we also see red flags in your pointers. So ask yourself that question too. When, when, why are my red flags? Why are consider red flags in a gringo when I'm traveling or doing things in case you you actually interested in dating and and doing things? Don't oh, put don't. the work in the woman because you wanna you wanna blame sometimes. Like oh yeah, no. Just like women need to work in themselves, you all need to work in yourself too. 
let's be honest guys I work with tourism and I, and I see a decent amount of foreigners, amazing ones and bad ones and, you know, whatever you want to call it. So mm -hmm. definitely working yourself through it because one thing I can tell you is money can only solve money problems. It's not going to fix you. It's not going to make you a better man. It's not going to, it's just going to make you a good quality because your financial situation is so watch out for you and like actually do like an internal study like who what am i doing why i'm actually you know why am i actually getting the same type of women even in other countries why am i getting in this type of situation because some of y'all come here and it still end up in a bad relationship with certain type of women in colombia but it's because also you need to realize some some of you have patterns some of you have a very unique mentality when it comes to dating dating so yeah that's a good point that's a good point once again uh, your money will only solve money problems but as far as our characters are concerned remember what we mentioned last week or actually earlier this week that if you want a traditional woman in any country be prepared when they ask you to be a traditional man and so you have to make sure that your character your behavior is in the position to be a traditional man. I'm not talking to vacationers. I'm gonna say that again. All you brothers that come here on vacation five times a year, 10 times a year to South America. I'm not talking to you. You're a vacationer. You're, ne you're not gonna live here right now. I'm not saying you're gonna never live here, but right now you don't live here. You just come on vacation, have your fun, meet the ladies, get some drinks, dr get some whatever, and you are gone. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the guys that plan on living here and meeting and, and falling in love with or falling in relationships with a or a couple of Colombianas or women in Brazil or women in Ecuador or Paraguay, Uruguay, in, in, in Guyana or in uh, Argentina, Chile. If you guys are thinking about really Venezuela women, at the end of the day, realize if you live here and you expect her to be a traditional woman you are expected to be a true traditional man you want her to be able to cook and take care of you and make sure the kids are fine yet have a career blah blah blah, blah. okay cool you expect it traditionally to be a good man you're not expected to be a dude that's out here acting wild you're not expected you, you expect to have some sense like i said when i got married one of the things that and, 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 and our girl d was there tours by d she was my translator one of the things that colombian is not a no fault country in the united states a man or a woman can wake up in the morning and say i don't love you anymore i don't want to be with you anymore like jeezy woke up one morning after two years of married to his wife we don't know the reason but this weekend told his wife, I don't want to be married. You can't do that in Colombia. You can't just wake up and tell somebody that you don't love them. When we were getting married, they gave us a whole list. Andre, she could she can leave you if you do this, if you do that, if you keep doing this, if you don't do that, if you don't do this, if you do this. It was a whole list that they gave us. You know, if I if I hit Andrea, if I don't provide for the family, if I become an alcoholic. If I become addicted to drugs, it was a whole list of stuff that I couldn't just leave Andrea for. And she couldn't just leave me just because she woke up and didn't feel like y'all better work it out. So at the end of the day, it's completely different from the state. So when you come to Colombia, you got to be ready that because the law, not the woman only, but the law is saying traditionally y'all work it out. It's, it's going to be tough. Y'all work it out. That's why Colombia has a 9% divorce rate because even though a woman wants to leave her man and a man wants to leave a woman, if you have not hit one of those reasons, Colombia is saying, y'all need to work that shit out. Y'all need to grow up. In other words, I don't care if y'all 60 and 70 years old, y'all need to work that out. And so at the end of the day, do realize guys, if you want a, a truly traditional Colombiana and you're going to move here, be ready that she's going to look at you as a 
traditional man that's a provider, protector, and problem solver. If you can't help her solve problems of life, if you can't in yourself and the family, if you can't protect the family, if you can't provide for the family, not just money, but also direction, spiritualization, focus, the future of the family, if you can't do those things, and you expect her to do all the other things, I'm telling you, you're putting yourself in a bad situation of asking her to be traditional, and yet you're not traditional. What do you have to say about what I just mentioned, uh, Paula? I think, I think it's true. I, I believe um, men ultimately are, you know, you choose because I cannot propose to a man. So you have certain mm -hmm. power on that. But again, let's let's be. We are in a world right now where we have so much facility to become whoever we want to become, and True. to be that, and to be that person. So let's be more rational and let and they have let's have a little bit of more of common sense. What you asking for, you should be able to provide it to. You. If you want comfort, you should be able to provide comfort. If you want say. A lot of men, I was like, oh, I just want a woman who give me peace. And I'm like, okay, but are you, to, to be in peace, you need to provide these women, you know, a, a safe place. Are you providing mm -hmm. a safe place? And I'm talking, I'm not talking about safe place where to stay or sleep on that mansion. I'm talking about, are you emotionally safe for this person? Are you mentally and emotionally safe for this person? Because a lot of men was like, I just want a woman that give me peace, but you're doing everything to disturb this women peace because you're not being the man you're supposed to be. So let's have more common sense. You, you're requiring a lot from these women too. And I think you should work on yourself. Just like women, when women require, I want my men to, to be masculine and, and to have this and give me that and be patient and understand me when I'm in my mood because I'm on my period. Wait, what, how are you understanding this man? What are you doing for this man to make his life easier? Because I think reciprocation is what keeps something solid. Because if I'm the only one getting, 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 eventually it's going to fall. If I'm the only one um, giving, eventually it's going to fall too. So we, is a partner, is a, is a team, it's a teamwork. We both work towards something, we both do something to make it happen, and we both provide in different ways. Women and men provide in a relationship. We just provide in different ways, while men provide safety and, and, and you know, security and all these things. Women provide more stability, you know, um, her feminine side, which is nurturing or management, you know, managing what resources we have and things for the future to make it better. So let's be more conscious about it. Let's be more conscious about it. I'm, I'm glad that you that you kind of ended with the management because Andre and I always say I'm the leader, but she's the manager. I might be I, I may be the one to take the business of what we do in a direction, but Andre takes care of all the other things to make sure that this runs correctly. And, and, and I like what you said about sharing peace or giving peace to each other. I'm going to tell you something. I heard my girl uh, Tours by D say this. And she's going to say this in a video that we're going to watch in a few seconds. She said, and it's profound. She said, I want a man that gives me the same peace I have when I'm alone. She said the same peace in which I give myself when I find a peaceful place. I need a man that could give me that type of peace. The type of peace that I create for myself. I need a man that could bring me to that point of peace as well. And that was a, a excellent statement, excellent statement that if I'm by myself and I do little things that give me peace, whatever it is, can he provide me that type of peace? So guys, my, my point in saying this is, and I got a question for, for Paola after this, our point in saying this is, Colombianas have an expectation of you too. Not just because you get off the plane and you got money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you got off the plane, check. You got money, check. You're a foreigner, check. What else is it that you can offer? Not I'm not do the bring to the table thing, but what else can you offer her 
to make her know that you're different from the last foreign dude that got off the plane. I'm gonna say that again. Some of you guys have to realize that you have to be willing to compete for certain women in Colombia because you have to realize that your competition is the next 50 guys that are getting off the same airplane as you. You're getting off the plane and you're looking for a nice Colombiana or a nice Brazilian woman or whatever country you're going to, do realize you're not the only foreigner getting off that plane. So what is it about you that stands out that makes a woman in Colombia or whatever, Venezuela or whatever country say, oh, I gotta have him. Oh, I need him. I want him, I desire him compared to the other 50 brothers that got off the plane. That's all I'm saying right there. It's true. Let, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me, it, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go, go. No, 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 no. I want to hear your thoughts. That's in your mind right now. No, actually, I remember the, at the, in your last video, there was this person who came in. If she was all that good, she would be probably married right now, like Andrea is. She was talking about your wife. I saw this coming and it was like, huh. What you gotta understand is that I'm in an industry where there is a lot of men, right? And it's not as easy. It becomes just as difficult as to, to see who is the good person when there is just so much of, of a bullshit going on. And, and yes, I can be, oh yeah, why does not have a girlfriend? She's beautiful and, it, and she sees this and this and that, like anything a man looking for. It's not easy. Like me, um, I'm looking for certain things in a man too. Like the stage of, oh, I'm going to go out with a guy because he can bring me an expensive restaurant. I, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm going to go out with this guy because he seems no. Like I want values in a man. And as as much as you think it's, it is it's just easier for me to say oh this guy i got so many options this guy let me marry him it's not as 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 easy as it seems a lot of men and andrew you should know this a lot of men they they are who you want them to be for mm -hmm. the first stage of the relationship mm -hmm. or to get you and then the true colors comes out so to to prevent that getting with a, a man that is not worth my time I need to also, you know, be very picky. And I'm not afraid to say picky because I do want a family. I want a very solid family with children and everything. So I don't thinking about, oh, I'm going to get this man and divorce him. No. So the day I'm, I'm actually find that person or, or if that person, you know, I'm building with this person. So it's over. But it's not like people, oh, she's single because she, no, guys. It's not as easy as you think to find men that, has value that want to build something actually because every man says they want that but in in reality what's going on is just like they be disrespecting you they be doing a lot of things and it's not as easy it is not remember when guys remember in the last video we watched on wednesday that that uh bmt did and the young lady that was venezuelan and, and the young lady that was interviewing her, she said, would you date a foreigner? She said, yes. She said, I have. And she said, she said, tell me about it. She said, I dated an American. And remember the young lady, she said, he broke her heart. And so she asked her, she said, what happened? He, he came down here and he was playing games. Remember what I, what I mentioned before? God, I'm going to tell y'all something for real. I'm, I'm going to put myself on self cam. If you guys see me put myself on self cam, it's as if it's just you and I talking in the barbershop. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Remember last episode, what did we talk about? I kept telling you dudes, you do not have to come to Colombia, Brazil, or most of South America and tell women lies. And you nine times out of 10, a woman say, you know what? Because you were honest, I'm gonna hang out with you. But a lot of dudes come, not saying you guys, not saying you guys, but a lot of dudes come down here and sell these dreams to women in Colombia, portray and pretend who they are to women in South America. And once the and once your who you actually are comes out, the, now the Colombiana 
the Brazilian, the Guyana, see the Guyanian woman, sees who you really are. I'm trying to do the reason why I have Paola on here tonight. I'm trying to get y'all the game so y'all can sit back and go by the vacation you because the vacation you has been telling you what well, Colombian women are this because that's the vacation you don't live here. So you don't know shit about Colombian women like that, like that. Well, the, the vacation you only knows Colombian women, Brazilian women, women in South America, Caribbean women from the eyes or the lens of a vacationer. Once you live here, I promise you, and we can put money on it. What you see in Colombia about the women will completely change. And if it doesn't, it's because you didn't change. So at the end of the day, there are a lot of women. And I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm thinking back. I'm listening to, to pa Paulo speak. It, it will amaze you guys in all sincerity. She literally sounds like Andrea. She sounds just everything that she says. The games, looking for somebody serious is not that easy. While she was talking, I'm like, damn, she's well, me and Andrea. There are times conversations that I wish that me and my wife could record when she says things that, that you're saying, when we're just sitting here, she's sitting on the couch right here. I'm sitting here in the chair or she's sitting in the chair. I'm on the couch and we're just having a conversation and she'll talk just like you have. It's not as easy as you think. You guys will assume that a beautiful woman, it's easy for you. In the States, yeah it's easy for a woman to get in and out of lamborghinis it's easy for a woman to get the baller but it's never easy no matter where you are in the world for a woman to find a good man now i'm not hating on us brothers i'm not hating on us let, and let me let me say add to something i'm gonna clarify it's not easy for the type of men i'm looking for because i want of course a relationship and, and marriage and children and all that but if I'm just looking for a guy to spoil me and, and give me money and fly me out and take me to places, I can just open my DMs right now on Instagram and find several options. And and I guess because of that, guys are saying, oh yeah, why she's not married? Why no? Because it's not. It's for the fun time, not for not for the journey, not for not for actually building something, because. Even if you don't believe it, a lot of men nowadays dedicate themselves to build a lot of money. And that's great. Like, shout out to you because you're working hard for your money and you're working hard to, to have the things you maybe didn't have growing up and you want to provide for that women you love. But working yourself too, because now living in the United States of America with the same problems, you just, you're just in a different environment, but it's just to deal with your same problems, with your same issues, with your same traumas in another scenario. And you're going to do them the same mistakes. It's not, it's not just like, oh, let me make money and I have a pretty girl. What are you looking for? Because if you're looking for a pretty girl in Colombia, you will find over 20 millions. I'm telling you. Well, what are you Absolutely looking for? Correct. 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 Go ahead, Gora Pyle. And I was just in a meeting with this uh, Anthony and his his business partner, Jason. These two guys mm -hmm. that live here in Colombia, successful guy, has business going on. And I was like, oh, guy, how's your daily life here and whatever? Because I told him, I think Medellin is a great place more for men than for women to be dating because there's more options when it comes to women. Like you see all these silly women. Um, and Anthony, Antonio was like, no, listen, um, it's not as you think, Paula. If you just want a pretty face, okay, there is a lot of options. But it was, I want a woman who is elegant, who I can introduce it to. He's a businessman. And then he was like, I can introduce him to my friends, to my family. When I, we travel back in the States, I want a woman that know how to dress, that I don't have to tell her, oh, you, you need to dress this way because and she don't think I'm controlling her. Like the type of woman I'm looking is difficult to find in, in big cities like Medellin and, and stuff like that. So it's not, even when there is a lot of options, it is a lot of options based on what you're looking for. So true. So, so true. I was surprised because I, of course I'm not a man. I, I don't think like a man. So for me, it's like there is a lot of beautiful women here. There is a huge market for each of you. Whatever you're looking for, you're going to find until I have 
I have this this man telling me no, it's not like you think because I'm particularly looking for this type of women and it's not a bunch of them because they all this this and that or they they don't have manners, they don't they don't know how to even eat on a table or sometimes or, or present themselves in a good way in a business way. I wanna be well presented by my women. I was like, wow, that's so interesting because to me it's like, yeah, any foreigner can just have any women because there's a bunch of beautiful women. And as a man, how can you identify who is good and who is great for you when there is just so many options? You can get lost too, you know? True. That's a good point. I never thought about that with, uh, I, I kind of thought about it with Medellin, but I always thought about it, Medellin, from the woman's perspective of there's so many foreigners here. I don't know who to choose, but I never thought about it from the perspective of the guy saying, dude, there's so many pretty faces. I don't know who to choose. And so every, you know, either way, there's still a, you know, a journey that you have to go through and the better, better that you are as a person, meaning us guys coming from the States, it makes it easier for us to kind of like weed out the, the women that are on, only pretty faces and then get to know the good women. Cause I kid you not, man, there, uh, guys, there's so much beauty in Colombia and in South America that you can literally, that you should literally, and I talk about this a lot, that you should literally say, okay, there's beauty. Not me. Now let me find what else is going on in this woman's life or these women's life to get to know them. That's what I did with Andrea. I kid you not, okay, she's doing this, she's doing that, she's accomplished this, she's accomplished that, or oh, she wants to go here, she wants to do that. It's those type of things. I give you a perfect example why, why Paola was talking. I know that Paola is, is, is a, a traveler. Some of you dudes, let's be real. If I hooked you up Paola right now, you can make two trips a year, but you ain't got it like that to be traveling like that around. You can make the two trips to a year to Colombia, but you can't, you literally don't have the, the, the vacation time. You might have the money. Once again, you might have the money, but you don't have the vacation time to travel to some of the places that she's normally traveling to. You got to take that in consideration. Why did I say that? I had to take that in consideration when I was choosing my wife. When I was choosing my wife, I had to not only make sure I chose a traveler, but somebody whose career will allow them to still make their money, because Andrew still makes some money, but yet and still be able to travel with me if I say, let's go to Cuba, let's go to the Caribbeans, let's go to Europe. It's the little, so when you guys sit back and say, well, I just want me Colombiana, you might be comfortable with the Colombiana that can only stay in the in the country and maybe do a trip once or twice a year compared to other women that could travel to other locations. It's those little things, guys, that we have to take consideration. And my, our point is not just beauty, because beauty is here. So what else makes you guys connect? That's what we're talking about. Let me get to the to these. Uh, we're so behind with the super chats. Let me let me get. Okay, we did. Uh, Black Nubia, he said, oh, he did some of the major red flags. Shout out to you, my man. Blade Runner is in the building. He said, Coach Dre and gentlemen, drop it in for fire for a minute. One more work day, and then he can enjoy his weekend. Once again, guys, we will let you guys know for all you guys that are dating Colombian women. If you're online, you have not been here to Colombia. But you're a Colombian Cupid and, or, or, or Tinder or whatever it is, and you're chopping up with Colombian woman, make sure this weekend you let her know happy Valentine's Day. Because if you don't, I'm going to tell you something. First of all, it's going to get you some brownie points because they're going to assume that you don't know that it's Valentine's weekend. Your boy hooking you up. Secondly, she's going to be like, he, he, he told me happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. And also, like like Paolo was letting us know, 
your female friends here in Colombia, just your people that's good people that I got in my phone that's just some good female people. I'm going to send them a happy Valentine's Day as well because these are my friends. So it's not just about the love, it's also about your friends. Shout out to you, man. Also, shout out to my man Ethan in the building. Paola is great. She is great. She is great. Uh, uh, she has helped me a lot. And I, she mentioned that about you as well. He said, and answered all my questions. He said, I would recommend that you guys should use her company and ignore and uh and, and her knowledge to help you in colombia shout out to you paola and shout out to you ethan with the twenty thousand dollar pesos shout out to you i appreciate that brother my man dapper's in the building he say dudes like uh jerking love to ruin the yeah yeah man it's always somebody he said, Obsidian said that haters are are unsex, unsuccessful for a reason. True. Miss Paola is a lovely professional woman. Salute to her. Obsidian, I, shout, shout out to Obsidian Ali. If you guys have not subscribed to Obsidian Ali, this brother does a live stream podcast every morning. That's how I found out about Theo. And that's how you guys found out about Theo. And, they, and, and Obsidian is the one that put together the, the conclave he was one of the brothers obsidian angry man podcast subscribe to his channel and uh o'shea duke jackson were the first three brothers to put together the manosphere movement in the 2016s 2015s when nobody was watching these guys a uh, channel they were the ones that put together this movement for men so make sure you guys subscribe to obsidian ali YouTube channel and he supports the passport bro movement 1000%. He's actually going to come down here for the for the Petronio Festival next year. I sent him a video and he's going to celebrate with us. Uh it was so many brothers and sisters down here. Uh, uh Paul, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of mad at you. I'm I'm kind of mad and disappointed. I know. I know, but you know, I have the Brazil trip like few days later after the oh. Petronio so you know it's money so <laughs> i ain't mad at you i got you and this was the biggest one this was like, it had to be four hundred thousand people on wednesday wednesday concert is usually like two thousand people a thousand people it had to be seven eight thousand people on wednesday night me and andrea looked at each other like because it was a bunch of guys that was with us uh you know from the states and so we're looking like why is it like seven, eight? Don't they got to go to work in the morning? Not realizing now people are coming from Brazil. Uh, uh, people coming from Argentina. People coming from Africa. One young lady came down here. She had a whole Brazilian uh, 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 samba outfit on to showcase what it's like to be Afro, Afro-Brazilian and celebrate in Brazil. It was amazing how, and then, you know, uh, uh on sunday when grand uh, uh free concert with uh, uh group of nietzsche and cali free it had to be 60 70 000 people there but it was crazy crazy i'd never seen it that pack so next year oh uh, yeah we need you to get your schedule in order that's what i'm telling you now next august we need you down here yes ma'am Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go next year. Arthur Will is in the building. He say, uh, shout out to you, Arthur Will. Shout out, I think I miss Greg as well. I'm about to come back to you, Greg. Uh Greg says, I mean Arthur Will says, uh, I hear a little bit of uh Palotos. Patois. Oh Patois. Thank you very much. When I start uh thank you from the I thank you. That's, that's what I'm talking about from the islands, the, 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 the Haitian sound, the Caribbean sound in your, in your voice. Uh, when she drops the T sound, words that, that, that start with T, okay. I still, uh, I still get nouns outside of people uh, confused when used, when used both in a masculine and fit, I, I do too. I do too. 
I know you get sleep. Like I told you, whenever you're ready to go, I know the wine that kicked in. No, no, no. It's, it's the wine. It's the wine. The instant. I know. I already I'm know. You ready to get? You know. You ready to put in the ponytail? Go and get you some sleep. I I ain't mad at you. I already know. I no, see I Andrew do it all the time. I have to pack. I have an early fly in the morning, but I'm I'm good. I I let you know when I'm leaving. Okay, deal, deal, deal. But yeah, I I still get stuck with that too, Will. When it comes to speaking and studying Spanish, there, are, for example, is it for is it is it is it Felice Valentino or Valentina Dia? It's no, we don't have such a thing because remember, it's Feliz Dia del Amor y la Amistad. See, you, you, you see, now I'm writing right now with a pen. See, I'm completely different. Because I'm we don't say Happy so Valentine's Day, we say Feliz Dia del Amor y la Amistad. The happy, happy day of love and la, friendship. La, la, mio, I mean, la, love amor. and friendship. El okay, amor, okay. El amor mm. y la amistad. Love and friendship. Okay, there we go. El amor y la amistad. Yeah. El amor y la amistad. Okay, I got you. I got you. That's what's up. Thank you very much. I was wondering how to pronounce it correctly. Art of Will, once again, well, no, 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 let me go back up to my brother. Greg's in the building with the $5 super chat. Greg says, should I be fluent in Spanish before coming to Colombia? Are there three, he, he said, are there age gaps? That's another question. Uh, don't let men, children piss you off. Uh, he's talking to me on that part. But he's asking, he said, uh, I'll let you answer the first question. I'll answer the second question. Your first, the first question is: Should I have to be fluent in, in Espanol before I come to Colombia? Girl, yeah, no, girl. Uh, guys, in this life, you should have done anything. The only thing is that if you should and you do, it changes the result of your experience. Of course, if you know a little bit of Spanish. It's gonna change your experience for sure by interacting with locals. If you don't, you're still gonna have an amazing time. It's just not gonna be the same. So should you or should not? It depends what you're looking for. Do you just wanna be in the main tourist areas where all the gringos hangs around and do whatever everybody does else and stick to those areas? Fine, you don't have to speak absolutely anything in Spanish. But if you actually wanna interact with locals, get to know some somebody and stuff like that, Spanish will definitely help you. Don't have to be absolutely fluent, but when people see that you have, you're making the effort to to say certain things, people are highly appreciate the effort because you gotta know that Colombia is not a place where everybody speaks English, and because of opportunities and we just don't have, you know, you gotta either study in a private school or have a rich family or just actually put yourself in the situation where you speak English. So when you just do a little bit people be like oh wow they be so friendly and nice to you colombian are so nice that like they will you will say like super gringo accent a grown pronunciation you can say oh wow come on stars amigo and people be like oh my god you speak spanish they literally will be like that that's true that's so true i was at a sports bar me and another brother was at a sports bar and with, with the little Spanish that I know, I found out that I was, we were sitting by two older guys. Found out that one older guy lived in New York at one point in time. He was a taxi driver. Found out another older guy, he learned Spanish because he toured with the, with the band around the world. I mean, he knew a little bit of English because he toured with the band around the world. All the other Spanish, it's, it's amazing how when you're here, you think that I'm gonna mess up. I, I won't say it right, but Colombians, kind of like they, they look at you like not like a child but they understand they can understand just like they can understand what a child is trying to say they understand what you are trying to say and the fact that you put forth the effort so now we're talking to everybody we're talking to that table that table this table while while uh this was doing a game when colombia was playing playing against chile uh two days ago like three days ago and so it's just amazing how nobody is judging you and i remember the guy who i was with the brother i was with he assumed when he came to colombia with his little spanish he was going to get judged and i'd already told him during the consultation you're not going to get judged 
but to see people around him not judging him made him feel a lot more comfortable with the little Spanish that he knew, I knew, and we had a great time with everybody. So she's absolutely correct in regards to don't feel uncomfortable with the little Spanish that you know, because you're gonna grow from there, get to know people, get to know areas, and it's just gonna open up so many doors, whether you go to DR, a Dominican Republic, whether you go to the Caribbeans, whether you go to, for example, Haiti, uh, Hades or, or Cuba, these Spanish speaking locations, you'll have an excellent time, even with the limited Spanish that you're growing with. And that's the part, as long as you continue to grow, correct? Absolutely yeah let's see okay did we do art of wills next one you say breaking news uh rhoda's invitation to join brazil russia china is the new um members of brick nation has now been stop it stop it road if i'm not mistaken rhoda is the girl that got hit with the brick in her face and everybody found out that she lied and she created a, a, a GoFundMe. And it's, I don't know if you've seen this before, Paola. A couple of weeks, a couple, actually last week, black girl from parts of Africa. I want to just blame yeah, the that. Muslim, the, the, this, yeah, the, the East African women that saw her face like swollen and she did nothing yeah. to deserve. What happened to her? Come to find out that she lied about the whole thing. She had injected something in her to her face to make her face swell up on purpose. And she just ran out into the middle of the neighborhood and with her cell phone, a guy just hit me with a, the police had did investigation. They had did an investigation on the, uh, with the cameras all in the neighborhood. Nobody saw anybody. She created a GoFundMe and she made over $42,000 from women and many men in the States who actually believe she got hit with a brick and nobody standing around her helped her. Come to find out she lied for the money. Come to find out. So that's why uh, uh, Arthur Will is saying, Rhoda's or Rhonda, her, the young lady's name, her invitation to join BRIC, which is actually Brazil, Russia, India, in China and South America in regards to unless you follow this and probably follow the BRICS nation you wouldn't get that joke but at the end of the day it's sad that she sat up there and she did what a lot of white women do to black men in the United States crime, crime committed and blame it on a black man some of you guys remember that white woman that deleted her kids her two, her two sons she had the car she put the car in motion when the car started driving toward the pond it went into the lake what did she do when she went to the police this is like 10 years ago she called the police and said a black man stole my car now i think she said two black men stole my car and all i remember was i was by lake so-and-so they went into the lake found the car pulled it out got the kids the whole country of the united states like oh my god black men still in cars babies gone oh my god come to find out this woman had lied and did this to her own babies these kids were no older than like three or four years of like one was two and i forget the age of the other one remember like five or six years old she did this to her own kids but to make it convenient they blamed it on a black man this woman with the brick last week did nothing different than what black men have been dealing with in the United States for years. Somebody else do the crime and then blame it on us because it's that easy to blame it on us. So I'm glad that this truth came out, but it's sad that this woman made $42,000. But the but what I'm hearing uh, an investigation is going right now to get her locked up for lying about that to get that money. So shout out to Will for that. Definitely. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's sad. Will also said, he said, they didn't want to pay the luxury car prices for something, talking about women, uh, back home, I guess. He said, they didn't want you to pay the luxury car prices for something that's not only worth a pre-owned 
minivan at market value. Shout out. Min minivan at market value, but it's also uh, <laughs> shaped like a minivan. Shaped like, in other words, he's saying that there are a lot of women out there, especially back home, they are shaped like a, a minivan but they want you to pay them or treat them like they're mercedes Benz. that's Girl, so crazy you know, guys <laughs> just, but, but they ain't lying because in the united states 70 percent of all women are really big we ain't talking about mom and them that put on weight our aunties that put on weight we're not talking about them older ladies we're not talking about them we talk about women that say i'm just as sexy as pio and you like you like you don't look like paola I'm just as sexy as her. I'm just as sexy as her. Oh my gosh, you funny. I'm just. As sexy. You, should, you should love me like you love Andrea. What, girl? You look like you should play football, and you want to tell me that you look as good as my wife? No, boo. No, boo. Sorry, you don't. You need to go to a gym. Need to get you a diet, need to exercise, get you some water, get you agua, exercise, but you do not look like my wife. But here in Colombia, I know, correct me if I'm wrong, a many, many women realize whether they are big, whether they are small, that they have competition. That if you want a man, if you want that guy and he likes a healthy woman, you got to do what it takes to be with that type of guy that wants a healthy woman. If you want to be with that guy that like women that are more larger, then do with a guy, do what it takes to be with a guy that's larger. I noticed that about Colombia women. They don't, for the most part, you compared to the States, you don't, you don't lie to yourselves. Like if he wants this type of woman or these type of guys want this type of woman, I understand it. If guys want the bigger women, they want the curves, the big ladies. And the big ladies understand that. They don't try to compete with the smaller ladies like, I'm just as sexy as she is. No, everybody has different tastes. Everybody has, some guys come down here, find them a, a beautiful face, curvy woman, and they're good. I kid you guys not. When I first met Andrea, Andrea is not a big woman at all. Andrea is gorgeous. But when I look at how Andrea was when I first met her, compared to how she is now, that's because Andrea been to the gym. Andrea's done a lot of things. She's making sure that she's on point. Our diets are different from how we for, for how we first met. So now guys look at Andrea like, oh my God, look at her body. Look at the dust. Look at her face. Look at this and that. But guys don't realize. When I first met Andrea, I saw the beauty of all of who she will become compared to, I need my woman perfect today. And a lot of guys make the mistake of, I need my woman's beauty. Once again, we talked about this earlier, Paola, uh, Paola, that guys make the mistake of chasing beauty so much that they forget to chase the beauty on the inside of the woman too. That's true. I agree yeah and definitely also those guys you guys want the perfect woman just like andrew say maybe you find an amazing woman that she checks all the boxes except for maybe her body type that you would like her to be different invest just like you'll be taking women in a regular day basis to days and spend money in a day and expensive restaurants or trips or whatever if you make a nice woman that you are willing to create a family or do whatever the purpose you have in life with these women invest on her invest on her you know being pretty you can be born pretty but if that woman isn't enough pretty for you she could be i'm telling mm -hmm. you <laughs> true that's so true that's so true i see so many I've, I've, i saw this one guy in the gym uh two days ago and his woman's face extremely beautiful but she was a, a, a curvaceous girl very she was thick very thick but she was and he's like muscular and it was more or less like i see what you're doing brother he see all the other beauty in her and he's like 
I could take her to, to the gym and we could change our diets to get to where she would want to be and what I would want to see. But all the other things, she checks off all my other boxes. So all you other dudes in the gym with your slim, sexy girlfriends, I'll take my girl that's, she's big, she's beautiful, she's curvy, she checks all my other boxes, and all I gotta do is take her to the gym with me, and I'll show her how to do this, and show, I kid you not. It was a brother with, with a sister, and he, they were in the gym, and I see them all the time in our gym, and I'm like, I see what you're doing, brother. You building your relationship, so when she is physically sexy like you may want her to be she already checked off all the other boxes of being a good woman a future mother a future wife all the other things that you were wanting her anyway and a lot of guys don't don't think about that part let me get ready to, to let me get ready to uh uh finish these super chats off shout out to you guys that have been patient tonight uh you said el guapo is on his life he said that he had to cut his uh his white friend off from playing games with brazilian women he had uh to bail him out of out with his connections let me know what you mean in regards to the last part in regards i understood the first part shout out to el guapo if you guys have not subscribed to el guapo he married a, a colombian woman they are very happy they had their first child last earlier this year early this year or late last year so they're a happy couple they even leave it live in the states shout out to them if you have not subscribed to beautiful lies that's his youtube channel beautiful lies make sure you guys subscribe i know my girl winding down i can see them eyes winding down already yeah if you don't see me i see you see it getting sleepy paola i got you little mama <laughs> I got you. I see you. long day you got a flight coming up actually here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go through these last few super chats and yeah. then and then i'm going to let you go for the evening we got a video that i'm going to do with the guys anyway but then i'm going to let you go for the evening because i know you got business to take oh, care of so you're getting into guy stuff right that's why you're trying to get rid of me oh, and you can watch it you're right we in the barber shop we're going to get to the guys that you ain't ready for this so at the end of the day you're going to take your little happy tail of sleep and then what's going to end up happening is this we gonna talk like we're in the barbershop so you can watch us on the live stream which i know you're gonna do why you packing your stuff why you taking your shot and getting to sleep and relaxing little mama you are going to relax because you're going to enjoy your flight tomorrow your day tomorrow your valentine's weekend you're going to be texting friends and family all that good stuff that's what you're going to be doing oh yeah yeah so we'll get through these super chats that's exactly what we're going to be doing okay all right young the young life in the building shout out to you man welcome to you man listen i have not seen you before if i if i miss please forgive me brother uh the young the young lives happy valentine's day uh paola this is oh marcus young i'm taking notes shout out to you marcus in the building for all you guys that want to reach out to paola after this live stream whether it be through TikToks. Cause I, I love your TikTok. Marcus, he's my he's my client for Airbnb and oh, there we go. persons, yeah. All right, shout out to my man, Real Estate Law. Great content, Andre. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate y'all being here with us tonight. We have 120 people. I mean, I'm sorry, 130 people here tonight that I like. 130 of you guys, I like you all. Make sure you like us by clicking that like button tonight. We like you guys. Shout out to my man in the building with the 49 damn near $50 super chat. I ain't mad at you, Mr. Williams himself. I like the bodybuilder uh, avatar that you got. He said, Georgina and Valentino uh, sends you kisses. Shout out to Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Williams. Ah, <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah. That's what's up. That is what's up. See, that's what I'm talking about. People showing love to people. And Charles Keys, senior, remember, there's a difference. With the five dollars super chat, he said, beside the rich Latinos that you never see, I see them all the time. I'm gonna let you guys know that when you carry yourself in a certain way in certain countries, you run across the rich all. Dude, me and Andrea were in DR, minding our business. We walking past dude's house. We're doing video coverage on nice mansions in DR that aren't expensive. 
All of a sudden, we see somebody yell out the window. What y'all doing out there? I said, what are you doing here? And why are you speaking English to us? And he came downstairs. Come to find out he was from, he was a multimillionaire from Brooklyn, New York, who married a Dominican woman. She was on her way home. She was graduating law school that weekend. Their son was an ambassador in the United States for the Dominican Republic. So we're talking about a very successful family. He gave us a tour of their house, the swimming pool, in and out. She came home. We spent two hours in these people's home enjoying ourselves. I still got his number in our phones. He's like, when y'all come back, me, your, my, my wife, and your, your wife, we're going out to dinner. We're walking down the street. When you carry your, remember, I, like I always say, guys, according to the laws of the universe, like will always attract like. Even if you're just walking down the street and you, if you have a habit of acting like you belong, you belong and you attract those type of people. So he said, besides the rich Latin, do I go to the golf courses? You guys don't know. I go to play golf with the rich. I play tennis down here with the rich. I bowl down here with the rich. I do public speaking with the rich. I got friends that are college professors, instructors, uh, people that are persons, uh, pol politicians, people that are television and radio personalities. That I'm talking, your boy from all over Colombia. Why? Because before I came to Colombia, I was already hanging with the rich in Florida. So it's nothing for me to gravitate to. And notice this, I don't have to be rich to attract the rich. Paola? What? I, I uh, thought you were about to say something in regards to that. Well, when he said, besides the rich that you never see, the banks have the best and hottest. No, this is true. What I, I mean, the banks have. He, he's saying that when you go to the bank, some of the most beautiful women that you will see work in the bank in Colombia. Mm, interesting. Me um, personally, I, I say some of everywhere, but I have to agree with the banks too. Okay, your turn. Uh, no, I think there is a lot of people are not ready. You all haven't seen the real Colombian rich. Me personally, I've seen it. And even when I don't come from a rich family or anything, I think I have put myself in a position. And I'm not talking about rich foreign, I'm talking about rich local people in Santa Marta, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. I am to like, and so in Santa Marta is different than Medellin because in Santa Marta, rich and wellness work with work by last name. When somebody in Santa Marta say, Oh, this is this is this person right. last name, this person last name, you know immediately that we're talking about wealthy people that owns like cities and companies and big industries in Colombia. So I've been around these people and, and I've been the one thing about y'all is like the benefit of being foreigner or not only work for for being middle class or 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 like you know or middle class and, and down rich people don't give don't really care about foreigners like they don't care about you they don't care about mm -hmm. with you if you don't have something to provide for the community or adding value like let's say for, for say andrew i don't know you work with marketing now if you meet wealthy colombian people oh okay Okay, who are you? Ah, oh, no, this person. Ah, oh, no, I do. I have a marketing agency. Now you have something valuable that maybe they can True. use for you. But they don't be caring about oh, because I'm a foreigner, you need to listen to me. They don't care because they probably have more money than you do. True. I personally, one of my bestie, she, she's very wealthy. Like her mama owns like a lot of properties in Santa Marta, judge, penthouse, mansions, and she's she's a, the most humble person you can ever see. She's married now. She's twenty seven she's married she just got her second child a, a month or two months ago and she doesn't care about like you know none of these things so it's it's, a, it's the way you present yourself and also one thing about i'm gonna say i'm gonna add to this is like 
when you are surrounded by educated people who speak English, you can't put up on this face that you are that person in the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're a loser. They will be able to tell you are a loser. If you are a person of business and a great mindset, they will be able to see that you can't know hide that through your nationality and through your currency. You are who you are and they will be able to recognize it. That is an excellent point. I actually wrote that down. And I'm going to I'm going to uh, speak on that again. She said that here in Colombia, people that are of substance, people that have something, people that are about themselves, people that are millionaires, some in some cases they're doing it like that. They can tell who is doing it like that in the states, and who is just a regular U.S. citizen, who is about let's develop some things, let's network what i can offer you and you can offer me compared to somebody that's just trying to get in so you can get to some ladies i kid you not guys i'm no different from you guys but one of the things that i developed when i was in the states is certain characteristic traits that i was able to walk into certain doors that the average brother was not able and i'm not saying this in a braggadocious way i'm saying that I prepared before I knew about getting a passport and doing I was doing certain things I didn't realize that would help me once I start going to other countries. So now I'm meeting and networking with people. They made Andre and I ambassadors, uh, uh tourist ambassadors for Cali, Colombia. This was during pandemic. I'm on I'm on the news, barely knowing English, but I'm on the news speaking on behalf. Of, of, of individuals that are coming down to Cali, Colombia, because we're officially ambassadors for the, for the uh, Junior Pan Am Games. It's little networking things. When, if you want to open up a business that will allow you to ship coffee to the United States, or if you're trying to be an investor in the stocks here in Colombia, it's those little things that open up doors when it comes to networking. Bruh, I'm telling uh, Paola is so correct. And I'm gonna tell you why I can say this, not because of me, because of the people that Andrea moves with. Dude, y'all see your girl Andrea and y'all think that Andrea is like a nice little Colombiana. She's, bruh, the connections that Andrea has as a corporate tax accountant, it will amaze you the, 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 the groups that Andrea moves through and it's not because her husband is American. That's who, those are the type of people that she moved with and worked with before. Major television personalities, major music groups that she grew up with some of the members, major individuals that have to do with business. I'm talking about people that own three, four, five franchises or whatever that business is. Andrea, Andrea used to ride around with me and say, I'm the accountant for that. I, I do tax for that. That, that business over there, I, the, their owners, the, the wife that I'm. So when y'all sit back, y'all see Andre, y'all sit back, y'all think she just this little innocent Colombiana. She just not. I say, dude, she got con because she carries herself in a certain way. So it is with you guys. You guys that carry yourself in a certain way in Colombia, you can be like the brother that just opened up the first black owned hotel in Cartagena even though he's from the states he's opened up that hotel in, in not only just in the new district but in old town Cartagena and it's hard to open up a hotel in old town Cartagena you got to have connections to do that because that's the historical location that's what we're talking about when it comes to networking depending on how you carry yourself so yes, the brother is right. For many individuals, there are certain women that you will never see. You will <laughs> never see these women. Oh, you'll see the under the clock tower. You'll see Parkeyeris women. You'll see women in DR Sasua. Yes, you will see certain women when you go to Southeast Asia and you go to Pattaya. But when it comes to these women that, that's doing it like that, y'all ain't gonna see them. They're Colombianas that you guys never meet. And 
100% correct. Shout out to you, Charles, for that statement. Not hating on anybody, but what, what, I, what, what Paola is saying, and what I'm saying, prepare yourself for the life that you deserve to have it to, and also to meet the people that will help you get to that life that you deserve to have because you're helping them out as well. Definitely. All right, little mama, here's what we're going to do. You got to go. You got to give your goodbyes. I don't know what you got to do. But Ciao. You go. no, yeah. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You say, uh, yeah, yeah, we did all the super chats. Okay. All right. So here's what you need to do. Have a good evening. Text me tomorrow. Let me know that you had a good flight. And get you some sleep. We Thank appreciate you, you. Thank you very much for having me. It was a oh, pleasure yeah. to talk with everybody. Follow me on my media. Please support my business if you come in here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here for the questions. I'm here for the service. I'm here for, to help you guys. Don't take personal anything that I say. If it didn't resonate with you, I'm just speaking on my truth and my perspective and perception based in my life experiences and other people's close to me life experiences. So never take things personally. I'm just, just being general, you know. At the end of the day, I yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. And yeah, that's it. I just wanted to say thank you, Andre, for having me again. It's been it's it's been nice to be here again. Last time I was in your channel was I was in a different situation, a different scenario. I was still working for somebody and it's been mm -hmm. a beautiful journey and it's actually been very nice to be back with a new reality with a new reality. All right, all right. That is great. I'm I'm excited for you. Uh we 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 are so proud of you. Me and Andrea, we're so proud of you. You just do not know uh how happy we are when we sit back and see some of the places that you've gone, some of the things that you've accomplished, and not only the places and accomplishments, but how you've evolved as a woman compared just just compared to the, when you were here last year, how you've evolved as a person. And like I like I often say, you remind me of my wife so much when it comes to the evolution of your womanhood. So whoever gets you, uh, yeah, he he, he, getting, he coming up. He definitely get it. He's he doing good. He's doing good. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. And you continue to bless yourself because you're going to be ready to bless whoever it is that enters into your life. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. Enjoy your barber, barber shop section. That's right. We about to have some real grown men talk now. Okay, how do I get out of here? I got you. I got you. I'll, I'll exit you out. Okay, thank you. Ciao. All right, mama. Let me see if I did it correctly. Oh, well, let's see. Here we go. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Did I do it that right? Did I, do I still didn't do it correctly. Oh, there we go. All right. Now you're stuck with your boy. Now you're stuck with your boy. I am proud of the moderators. I'm proud of the chat. I'm proud of all you brothers. I want you to know that. Because we just had maybe like one, maybe two guys that acted a goddamn fool. But for the most part, all you guys, this is, I'm going to tell y'all something. I am on a lot of, I'm on late light live streams that you guys never know about. I'm on some of the major YouTube live stream channels that you guys know about. And the one thing that I can't say about this live stream channel, I'm always proud of you dudes, man. I ain't gonna even lie. Y'all always are upstanding gentlemen. And then when I meet y'all face to face, you guys always confirm what I thought about y'all anyway. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Oh, we ain't done because we got a, that video to watch. But I just want to let you guys know, man, I ain't got nothing but love for you guys, man. Y'all some grown ass men for real, for real. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. A lot of YouTubers, they ain't got that. A lot, but here, you guys act like y'all some grown ass men, and y'all are. He said, We got some stuff to talk about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got grown men. That's why I kicked her off. You got to go. She's sleepy and we don't need sleep. We got grown men conversation to have. 
Let's watch this video, guys. Yeah, I've had this video on hold for a minute for us. This is BMT Black Men's Travel Av uh, Errands video. This is the part two to what we looked at the other day. Let me turn this music down a little bit. I might even change the music. There we go. Let me change the music. All right, let's get ready to look at this video. This is the part two. Hello guys, she's Venezuelan like me and I'm gonna make you a few questions. Ladies. Bueno, mira, tú saldrías con un americano nada más por tener la visa? ¿Saldrías con un americano solo por la visa? No. ¿No? <laughs> okay, okay. Pues no, no. No. I'm going to bring it back to the beginning once, once again, guys. The question that she asked her was, would you deal with an American if you could get a green card? Hello, so guys. Watch. She's Venezuelan like me, and I'm going to make you a few questions. <laughs> bueno, mira, ¿tú saldrías con un americano nada más por tener la visa? ¿Saldrías con un americano solo por la visa? No. ¿No? <laughs> okay, okay. Pues no, no. No, puedo salir con un americano, conocer, ya de ver cómo fluyen las cosas, pero no más como para el interés de la visa, no. No, o sea que saldrías con él por, solo por ir a Estados Unidos o por conocerlo. No, por conocer. Yo solo puedo por salir, con... conocer, compartir y ya ver cómo fluyen las cosas, pero solo como por la visa, no. Ajá, ok, perfecto. Dime, <risa> dime tú, ¿qué, ¿qué quieres de un hombre? ¿Qué quiero de un hombre? ¿Qué quiero? Sí, pues respeto. Respeto. respeto y apoyo mm. si sí, lo amerita la situación pero okay. y tú qué aportarías a una relación eh, pues me considero que soy una persona que tiene muchas cosas para aportar soy inteligente soy respetuosa soy trabajadora soy honesta mm. apoyo a las personas <risa> bueno gracias con gusto chao, chao. chao. Ay, no, no. ok let's continue with the interview what is your name maría hablas inglés un poquito. Un poquito. ¿La entrevista en español? Sí. Bueno, ¿qué te gusta de un hombre? Eh, su sonrisa y que sea alto. Eh, ¿Qué aportarías a una relación? ¿Qué aportaría? ¿Qué aportaría a una relación? Sí. Eh, pues mucho amor, eh, me entrego mucho a la persona, eh, le ayudaría económicamente también, pues sería todo como mitad y mitad. ¿Y qué te gusta a ti? ¿Qué quieres de un hombre? ¿Qué, qué es lo que quieres de un hombre? Eh, pues que sea fiel, ya que tenga lealtad y que sea respetuoso. Sí. ¿Tú saldrías con un americano? Sí. sí. ¿Pero saldrías con un americano por la visa solamente? No. no. Pues la verdad los eh, gringos, gringos, el sí de América no me gustan. Eh, me parecen lindos son los de República o los boricuas. Ah, ok, no americanos. No, americanos no. Ah, bueno, gracias. Shout out to Medellin. Oh, well, I love me some Pac Man, man. This reminds me of the. Oh, uh, what you call it? The laundry mat. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the corners. Yes. Would you date with an American? Would Shout I date an D. American? Uh, that's all I've ever dated my whole life. I mean, I grew up in the U.S. All I've ever dated are black men, whether they're American or Colombian. And what, what do you think about Americans? What do I think about Americans? Um, Uh-oh. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they're a little obnoxious, and maybe they could tune in a little bit more into the culture of wherever they're at. It'll help a lot more. But um, I know a lot of nice Americans too, really nice Americans, really cool Americans as well. Uh, and tell me, what do you want from a man? What do I want from a man? I just want him to bring me the same peace I feel when I'm by myself. If he's not bringing me peace, get out of my way. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, to end, uh, what do you bring in a relationship? What do I bring in a relationship? Uh, I am the table. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, I think I bring my own type of intelligence, 
my own culture, uh, my own femininity. I think I bring uh, inspiration. I try to inspire my men to do more things, get more money, and and I'm I'm on the I'm on the same page as them, or I try to be at least. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we're going to start right there for a split second, guys, and kind of retract on what the ladies had to say. First young lady said she was looking for Reese. She said that she bring to the table, or was at least expecting, respect and support. She's like, listen, I support your goals and respect what you're trying to do, my foreign man. I expect you to support what I do and also respect what I do. We keep seeing this in the last two videos, loyalty, support, peace, loyalty, support, peace. This is what the women say that they're going to bring. But guys, this is what the women expect from us. The one young lady said in the video, if I wanted to go for the green car, I could have been dead that shit. Andrea told me a few times and not in, not in in an angry way but we would have a conversation and she said this on the live stream if she wanted the green card she could have been there that shit paola just said the same thing if she wanted to just have a man in the name of to fly her out or a green card she could have been this dude if you only knew how many colombian women that could have been did that bullshit so when I hear Americans talk about some, they only want you for a green card. If Americans back home in the States only knew, only understood that a, a lot of Colombianas that many of us are interested in, they could have been there, that shit. Ain't nothing holding them back from being able to, to get a green card. Because they could have easily played one of us for that. But they didn't. That's the point. Paola didn't. The women in the videos didn't. Andrea didn't. And a lot of other women in Colombia don't. So feel comfortable with the fact. That's why we have this video. That's why we had the young lady on here. That's why you guys have Andrea in the WhatsApp groups. Also on the live stream to where you can ask the questions and hear it in English. Would you guys go for the green car? And what do these ladies say? Each one of them. Fuck no, we ain't going for no green card. Why would I do that bullshit? That's some stuff that was sold to us in the United States. Remember, the people that's trying to cross the board. I just watched a video on, remember I told you guys I watch a, a Colombian news. A lot of times I watch it coming off of Instagram. There are over 350,000 people trying to cross right now while we're speaking. And I'm looking at the video footage of it, trying to cross from Colombia to Panama, from Panama to Central America, from Central America all the way up to Mexico, which is part of Central America. 350,000 people feel like while the Biden administration is around, for the next year that they can cross into the borders of the United States. 350,000 people. Every one of them broke than a motherfucker. I guarantee you, of those 350,000 pe thousand people, there are very few, if any, doctors, attorneys, politicians, school teachers, police officers, firefighters, perilous personality, television personalities, people that interview people, sports figures. The only people that's trying to break their ass to get to the United States are the broke of the broke of the broke. But regular women with a good job, good career, in a future in their home country they ain't trying to rush to get into our shit. that's what my point is 
everybody that we assume trying to get in it ain't no nuclear physicists trying to walk through panama to come through it ain't the next person that's go that got cryptocurrency trying to come through panama to get to central america it's never somebody that got some shit. It's always broke people, male and female, with their kids trying to get to the United States. American citizens don't never want to think about what quality of person is trying to come into our country. We just crying about anybody coming in, but we never talk about, okay, what quality? So we assume, well, you know, everybody wants to come to America. I promise you, America, 400 million people six percent of the world the planet is going up to nine billion people america we are only six percent of the fucking planet when it comes to the the population the other eight plus billion people are not trying to come into america I just watched a headline today, blew me away, which I knew, but I blew me away. American citizens, our number one form of taxation, they were saying that the, the headline was Europeans with limited money live better than Americans with limited, with this regular paycheck money. Just regular everyday Europeans going to work compared to a regular everyday American going to work, Europeans live far, far better than we do. Even though we are the richest country in world history, even though we have the strongest military in world history. How was that, Andre? Pray tell. Tell us, my friend. Then I'm going to tell you how they broke it down. And I already knew this, but I like how they did it. They said in Europe, their taxes go toward, they say they get taxed like we get taxed. It may be a little bit more, but taxes are taxes. But a, a quarter, I mean, a fifth of our taxes go directly to military to policing to local police national police military police a fifth of every dollar that we pay in taxes guarantee is going directly to might the strength of america nothing wrong with that but in europe a percentage in most countries go of our of their tax dollars go to military might most of it goes to free medical, free education in junior high school. So nobody's buying uniforms in Europe. It's paid for. School books paid for. Free college in many countries in Europe. We already looked at the video a couple months ago. There are countries and cities in Europe that their projects got swimming pools, tennis courses. We're talking about the projects like James and Florida area, Evans, South side Chicago projects. But there are parts in Europe right now today that the projects would be multi-million dollar homes in Manhattan, in LA in Detroit, in Chicago, in Miami. And their tax dollars go towards hiring the best architects in certain parts of Europe to develop their projects. And they have a competition for the architects who can design the best projects for the people. What's my point? What, what, what am I talking about? I'm talking about that at the end of the day, there is so much opportunity for all of us outside of our home that we love, that we care about, known as the United States. 
that yes, you can be successful in the United States, treat it like a corporation and make your money player. But when it's time to go to other locations, don't be surprised that they're not trying to kill you on the taxes like they try to kill you on the taxes back home in the United States because they gotta keep that military going. At the end of the day, the United States is nothing but the Roman Empire incarnate. If you wanna study and find out what the hell will happen with the United States, study the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire. And I mean, you could do that study on YouTube. You ain't even gotta read shit. I get another thing. I'm about to pull it out real quick. Give me a second. Give me a second. Oh, here we go. No, that's not it. To bring my point home, there's a book that I just ordered. The Sum of Us by Heather McGee. How racism hurts everyone in the United States. She crossed the country. She started in Harvard and she just started traveling across the country. Racism, I'm gonna start from the top to the bottom. Racism in the United States is expensive than a motherfucker for white people. Let's work our way down. It's expensive for people from India, from China, or, or, or Asia. Racism is expensive for Native Americans, for Black people, for Latinas or Latinos. It is so fuck, dude. If you get any book to understand how fucking expensive it is for racism, Get that book. She literally breaks it down. White people, they, they taught white people in school. I didn't even know this shit. They taught us inequality. It's not equal. So what the fuck did we fight for? We fought against inequality. They taught white people. I forgot the, the reason why she called the sum, the sum. Let me look it up what she, what she said. It's amazing what she said that white people were taught in school. Shout out to white people. And it wasn't against, it wasn't because of, it was the plutocrats, the ones that run the country. They taught white people this. It's called the Sum Zero Financial Model. The Sum Zero Financial Model. And you can Google that. The Sum Zero Financial Model, which means that white people were taught that in order for other races to succeed, white people will have to lose something if we, for us to succeed, for the, the Native American to succeed, for the people from other cultures to come to the United States to succeed. While we were taught it's not equal, they were taught if in order for it to become equal, whites were taught they would have to lose that's why you see white people bitch for rights, bitch for jobs, bitch for money, bitch, 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 because they actually were taught for hundreds of years that if you help out black people, if you help out Latin people, you're losing. If you sell this house to a black person in our community, it's going to make the housing go down. That wasn't necessarily true. It only went down because other white people that would have bought a house in a neighborhood with black people already living there believed that they were losing out. They programmed their asses and they programmed our asses. So when y'all sit back trying to be all this shit, realize that this shit is going on. But y'all don't want to admit that. That's why 70%, 72% of y'all are going to keep your happy ass right where you at. You will never meet a Paola. You'll never meet Paola. You'll never meet D. You never meet a, a woman like D. You never meet an Andrea. You, you ain't no fucking way you're gonna meet your Andrea. Not saying that there's not any good women in the United States, 
Like I always say, you can find a great woman in the United States. You can find great love in the United States, but you cannot at this point find great laws that's going to support you in the United States. You can find a perfect woman and you could cheat on her like Steve Harvey did to all his ex-wives and leave. And every time he got some extra money, making more money, what did he do? Leave a wife, made more money, left a wife and kids. My bad. Steve started right here, making a few dollars, left a wife, cheated on the wife. Notice Steve Harvey married each one of his mistresses. I'll say that again. Steve Harvey married each one of his sad bitches. Instead of being a true player, fucking that bitch and letting her go, letting her suck your dick and letting her go like a real player would, what this simp do? He had kids with the first wife, not only just had a sad wife as a sad wife, what does this simp motherfucker do? He married the sad chick, have kids by the sad chick. Then move on to Marjorie ass. Not only have shorties by Marjorie, adopt all her little bastard ass kids. Dude, the laws are set up not only for a woman to leave you, but for you to sit back from out of nowhere and your ass get a few dollars and you can leave a woman too. So while me, when I when I sit back and I hear me and bitching about the woman left the man, I'm like, shit, according to how Steve Harvey moved, you can leave a woman in the New York minute too. So all that bitching that we doing, we need to slow that down in the United States because this dude's doing the same shit that women doing in the United States. You wake up one morning, you done got your asshole licked real good by your sad chick, and now you want to leave your wife for the sad bitch. Y'all ain't got no motherfucking game if you're doing that shit. For the sad bitch? You got the white boy locked up in, in Bogota right now. He's leaving right now. Who deleted the Bogota female G sexy DJ last early this year. He's supposed to be in Texas with his wife and two or three kids that he had they church folks church folks he didn't took his happy ass to bogota she didn't licked his asshole real good and all of a sudden he come back he's sending her money he about to lead a wife for the sad chick who so happened to be in bogota but he's so insecure because she giving him fire head like he ain't never had before because he with the church girl and the church girl back in Texas, she she giving decent head, but she ain't giving fire Colombian head. She ain't putting that on the tip of his and licking it off like the Colombian chick doing. So what end up happening? This fool bring his old crazy white privilege ass back down here to Colombia because that only white privilege shit only work in the States. Back down here to Colombia. He ended up deleting her, and now you about to do L for life in a Colombian jail. You ain't doing L for life in a stateside jail. Oh, no. Oh, no. You doing L for life in a raggedy-ass, filthy, infested, trash, disease-infested Colombian jail for the rest of your days over some pussy. And a lot of you dudes, a lot of dudes that we know, come on now. The only thing between that white boy and a lot of dudes that we know, they just didn't delete the female. But I know a lot of dudes that sent the fuck out for some Colombian pussy. Because you so scared that she want a green card from a gringo. It's not worth it. It ain't worth it.
you can tell me right now, Dre, I got Colombian woman. You don't know what the fuck you talking about. I'm not talking about the Colombian woman. I'm talking about you, bro. If you got a bad Colombian woman that's going to treat you good, and she gorgeous, and she ready to treat you right, here's what I need for you to do. Two things. Now, you can tell me, fuck you, Dre. I'm going to do what I want to do. Got you, bro. I'm with you. Ain't no fight here. Either do like I do, sit your happy ass down somewhere and love that woman and treat her and be happy that you are one of the few dudes that finally found a woman on this planet that's on your team 100% like I did. Or tell her the truth that, you know, I'm still, you know, still exploring. I'm still trying to get to know people out here. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. Do that. Be honest. She ain't gonna stop sucking your dick in here in Colombia. Colombian women stop sucking your dick because you lied. I'm gonna say it again. The reason why she stopped sucking your dick is right right now. Remember that Colombian woman or that Brazilian woman or that Thai woman, whether you met her in the, or the woman that you met in the States or your ex-wife in the States. The reason why a lot of ex-wives in the States stop sucking your dick because you've been lying the whole mother fucking time and she like i'm not about to suck this disease ass dick and this is the funny part you got a woman that likes sucking dick in the states and she stopped sucking your dick because she knew that another nasty bitch that she don't know has been sucking your dick so why should she put your her lips on your nasty shit and then you come with the same behavior pattern to these other countries like they ain't gonna catch on that you ain't shit i'm gonna say this again a lot of times that we as men, we assume that women ain't gonna catch on. That we ain't shit. You assume that Colombian women ain't gonna catch on that you ain't shit. You hope that a Venezuelan woman ain't gonna catch on that you ain't shit. One of the reasons why I changed and went on monk mode, stop fucking American chicks and got my mind and my spirit right while I was in the States, went to therapy while I was in the States, started focusing on spiritual, focusing on spiritualization while I'm in the States, became cool with Colombians while I'm in the States. Cause I knew I wasn't shit. Y'all know I got a thousand getting that pussy stories. Dude, I got stories I ain't told y'all. I got plenty of getting pussy stories. I'm, I'm the first one to say I wasn't shit. Nigga, I'm running through them. And if I was gonna find somebody serious in Colombia, I had to get some help to show me why am I running through bitches, wasting time, money, and energy, the three things that men are judged by, time, money, and energy. Why am I running through females in the States? Like, and I'm grown. I ain't no goddamn 15 year old that never had no pussy. Come on, let's be real. I ain't no 15 year old kid that ain't never had no pussy. I'm not a 20 year old kid in college. I'm not a 29 year old that ain't made it to 30 yet. So why am I at 45 still running through bitches as if I ain't got no damn sis, as if I never fucked. And I know I'm on bitch 1,287. There is no way you on bitch 2,000, I'm on 1,287 and you still running after these nappy head bitches, bonnets or not, as if you ain't never fucked before, Dre. So what is going on in your mind that got you acting like a little ass kid when it come to bitches? When it come to money, I'm grown. When it come to paying bills, I'm an adult. When it comes to networking and shaking hands and making connections, I mean, as adult as they come. When it come to them bitches, I was a little ass 15 year old boy, 19 year old boy, 23 year old boy acting like I ain't got no I like you could you have thought I was a goddamn virgin just getting out of jail you'd have thought uh, when it do you to act like you would have thought at 45 46 47 that my ass ain't never licked no pussy the back of a female's knee the back of a female's thigh you ain't never you would have thought I never bit nobody on the ass before that was pretty you thought every female that I ever had was a fat ugly chick the way that I was moving in my motherfucking marriage prior to and even in the marriage I'm acting a goddamn fool with the pussy 
I mean, I'm just like, dude, the only thing that was keeping me from disease and somebody getting pregnant is condoms. At least I had enough sense to put some condoms, but I'm, I'm, dude, I'm just, I'm slanging. Everybody getting nut in the eye. You get, I'm busting in your eye, bitch. I'm busting in your eye. You two twin sisters, I wish the fuck you get one. I'm busting in both y'all eye. Y'all twins, y'all getting it in the eye, both y'all. Mama's getting in the eye. Sexy grandmama's getting busted in her eye. Motherfucking aunties with they fat ass, I'm busting in their eye and on their asshole. All, all that shit. Dude, I don't care what race you are. I was out there. I don't care if your ass was a mowing. My, I wish a mother, dude, when I was single, I wish a Mayan without a home that got burnt down in Mayan area that I wish I ass would come to the state. I'd be fucking and sucking the shit out of a Mayan chick right motherfucking now. Be like, The Rock is your cousin. Nigga, what? With no discretion about who I was. And if I was going to find somebody serious in Colombia or somebody's at least two or three serious in Colombia, bruh, I had to slow that wagon wheel down before I came to Colombia on a serious relocation basis. Vacation, Andre, was perfect for that. Fuck all the bitches you want. Suck all the bitches you want. Let all the bitches you want suck you and go back to the States. The vacation, Andre, I was built perfect for vacation, Andre. But once I started saying, I want to move to Colombia, relocation, Andre, had to become different from vacation, Andre. Because vacation, Andre, was perfect. But vacation, Andre, would have fucked it up for relocation, Andre, when it came to the women. Would I make connections? Yep. Because I was doing it in the States. Would I would have networked with people? Yes. Because I was doing that in the States. Would I would have hobnobbed with the big boys? Yes, because I was doing that in the States. Would I fucked up relationships and lied to women and hurt people? Yes, because I was doing that in the States. What's my point in saying all this? My point in saying all this is the reason why I brought the young lady on, the reason why we have Andre up here, and speaking English to where all of us can ask all the questions to Colombian women. What about this? What about that? How about this? How about that? There were other questions that I had for Paola that I didn't even ask because you guys asked so many amazing, great questions. I was like, let me let me shut my shit down. Let me let me shut my shit. I ain't my questions didn't mean a damn thing compared to the good questions that you guys were asking. So at the end of the day, I'm telling you, dudes, I mean it. Why you are there treating America like it's a corporation, what do I mean? Making your money, player, taking care of your kids, taking care of mom, taking care of family members. Make sure you take care of this, too. Because if you like me, when I was in the States, running through, dude, wasn't nobody running through bitches like I was. Nigga, I'm, 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 I'm at the goddamn job in the parking lot just pulled up but the chick that sucked my dick so good two days ago all she had to say was i want to suck your dick one more time before she leave for work i'm leaving the mother dude true stories i'm leaving the parking lot of my job calling my boss i'm late i got a flat motherfucking tire i don't know how, what time i'm gonna get there all right andre call us and let us know where you're gonna make it i'm gonna be in today but i don't know what time my happy ass gonna be there today thank you very much i'm two cities motherfucking over get my dick sucked by this bitch she gonna be at work on time this is the part she wasn't being late for work for me, but just to get my dick sucked by this bitch and her friend, I'ma be late. I'm gonna be late walking into my job when I'm in the fucking parking lot. I ain't have to answer my phone. Just walk my happy ass into my job. And I know I'm not the first one to do some stupid shit over some pussy. That's what my point is. That's why I tell my stories. A lot of dudes that go tell the stories, do y'all be like, damn, I remember that time, yeah. Drain line, I, I, I fucked my female boss in the bathroom. I remember that, 
drain drain line. He ain't lying. I done did some stupid shit over. I remember one time I was supposed to do a. I was in college and I was supposed to do a term paper, but hey, you you know how nasty they are in college, Dre. We all been there, bro. We all been there. So when you guys assume that every Colombiana or every woman in another country wants to leave their country, they don't. They really fucking don't. Especially if she got something going on. I sat back and I watched that video. We just watched. And I noticed the one sister in her scrubs, the one that had the glasses on with the long, beautiful, wavy hair, and she had on scrubs. I say, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what I was thinking? Most dudes would walk past her ass not knowing how sexy she probably looked outside of them scrubs. The one with the that had the scrubs on, see, that'd have been me. Y'all want party bitches. Gotcha. Your vacation mode. On vacation mode, you want party bitches, you want scammers, and you want pay for play. I got you. I ain't mad at you. Do your thing, bro. But the one that had the scrubs on with the curly hair going up, wavy hair going down. And the glasses. Oh, that's me, bro. Oh, that's me. All, all day long. No hesitancy. No he f female police officers. Because I know how sexy they are outside their uniform. That's me right there. Female pharmacists in Colombia. With their pharmacy uniform. Oh, you better believe that's me right there. Female bus drivers. Oh, that's 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 Dre right there. The ladies that work and sell the tickets so you get the tickets to get on the bus. That's me. The lady that's that work in the subway system while she getting you a ticket. See, I'm slipping my phone number in there. That's me. That's me. Not not, not that bitch that, that that that's getting on the bus that ain't doing nothing with her shit. But the one that's getting on the bus and she's about to go on a career, oh yeah, that's 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 Dre all day, all day long. I don't look for Colombian women to be rich. I look for Colombian women to be able to be stable and have a nice career and they're good. I'm looking for me to be rich. I'm gonna say that again. I don't look for rich Colombian women, even though I've been in spots and locations where the rich of the rich have been. I don't give a fuck about what, a, like we are in the States. We are American men. We don't give a fuck about how much money a woman making. We happy for you. Like, man, I met a scientist. Uh, I'm, I fucked the mayor, the female mayor. Oh, I fucked the female senator. All right, dog. That's all we can do is happy, be happy for a career and happy for her dollars. But now we like, okay, outside of her career, her dollars, and she's sexy, what can she do for me? My job is to make sure Andre is rich than a motherfucker. Not sitting up there as a lane hoping Andre is rich than a motherfucker. I wish the fuck I would waste my time sitting up there selling this good dick in the name of like 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 in the name of Drake. I shouldn't have to fuck for free. You see what I'm saying? No. No. I put my economic responsibility on me on me believe you me so at the end of the day i, I kid you guys not I kid you guys not shout out to my brother with the super chat rodney in the bit shout out to rod in the building salute keep cooking let me see if i hit charles he said but like charles was the one to start this off besides the rich latinos you never see that's true if you don't walk in those, those circles the banks have the best and that do they do they do uh, me and andre go to the bank all the time take care of business and the ladies that work in the bank the ladies that work in claro the the where you get your sim card they be fine in the motherfucker be like dudes don't be catch oh, all these fine sisters and fine colombians that work in these nice spots man that are available to you shout to you brother he said, what's the topic? The topic tonight was about, you know, what pilot, pilot, the information that asked Paola the questions, you guys asked Paola the questions in regards to good Colombian women. 
my point in tonight in, in other episodes is this i want to encourage men that are good dudes you're not making a mistake the path that you're on as a good dude don't let nobody distract you from it in the states they've always tried to distract us good men from doing good things whether it be us bookworms whether it be us dudes that like to play chess us artists they try to distract us if you're a guitarist or a painter whether you are a dude that that focus on sports or with your person that focuses on on business in the united states let's be real they always try to use pussy or nigga you ain't out here fucking these bitches with us to distract us they try to make us seem like we were doing something wrong dude that wanted to go off into engineering all you it brothers all you truck driver brothers all you train drivers brothers all you dudes that work at the docks where the ships come in they always try to in the united states they will always try to make you feel bad for being a good motherfucking man that's about your business i'll say that again if you on some bullshit, they when i was on bullshit as a drug dealer they never had shit to say about me not in the united states oh they complain a little bit on the news but as long as i was doing some illegal activities I'm pistol whipping motherfuckers. I'm in shootouts. Ain't nobody said a damn word to me about how I behave and the quality of women that were in my life. Ain't nobody say shit. As soon as I said, I want to go to college. I want to do something with my life. I want to take it in a new direction. All of a sudden, I can't get the best pussy no more. All of a sudden, when dudes want to become engineers, teachers, dudes want to say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do my whole 20 years plus in the military and not just two or three years in the military. They always going to say something about us. I'm going to let you know. So now you're coming to other countries to where American women treated you like shit because you want to be somebody because you want to be a businessman and start your business from scratch. You want to be a truck driver and you had to go to school and study and do your homework and then learn how to back the truck up, and bring the truck out. American women look at you like, well, I catch you when you're done. When you're making 67, 80,000, $100,000 a year as a truck driver, hit me up. American women will wait till the end of the race for your ass. When you're a school, school teacher, once you become the principal, I got that pussy waiting for you. Once you become a businessman and your shit hit 200K a year, uh, this, I'll suck the shit out your dick. They always try to make us feel like being men of growth, it wasn't good enough. I'm going to tell y'all something. There are women here in Colombia that love men of growth. Remember that song with Jay-Z when the young woman said, she said, ambition makes me so horny. That's this motherfucker. That's what Paola was saying. You ain't got to be the richest motherfucker. Do you got ambition? Oh, I got that. Bring it to Colombia. I got you. Andre didn't marry me because I was rich. Andre married me because I had the ambition, the ingenuity, that drive, that ability. I could have easily sat back and retired. I could have easily did that shit. I was I didn't come over here broke. But because she saw, oh, that's one of the Americans that about they bit one of the Americans that I like that's about their business. At the end of the day, I'm telling you, like Paolo was saying, like Andre always saying, all you dudes with money, you will never get a good woman. And I mean that from the bottom of my oh, you'll get a woman promise you you will get plenty of women okay Andre asked me to wrap it up I got an appointment in the morning but at the end of the day I'm telling you guys for, for those of us that are taking our time enjoying South America enjoying Brazil enjoying certain areas you know one of the things that 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 kind of like 
caused me to have so much respect for Aaron of Black Men's Travel. Aaron is nonchalant. I meet a good woman, cool. I don't, I take my time and I still focus on my business. I still focus on the app for the Passport Bros. I still focus on the Facebook page for, for, for the Passport Bros. He doesn't let pussy distract him. Bruh, I'm telling you, there are good women down here waiting for you good brothers. That's why I've been going on this rant for the last 30 minutes. Just to encourage you dudes that when you sit back, you watch all those YouTube videos that make you feel like, but I'm not like that. I'm not the dude to go to the club every other weekend. I'm not the dude that party, party, party. I'm not the dude that's, that, that make it rain money. I'm not the, bruh, you doing it right. My job is to show you that dudes like you dudes, you gonna end up like me with a good woman and laughing, watching DC Rob and watching, not watching DC Rob, but watching videos of ignorant motherfuckers on DC Rob and other content creators that keep trying to warn y'all, so-and-so got drugged, but it wasn't you good dudes. So-and-so got robbed by a female, but it wasn't you good dudes. Paper play prices are so expensive, but it wasn't for good dudes. For thirsty dudes, pay for play expensive than the motherfucker, ain't it? Compared to how it used to be, yes it is. For you party boys, pay for play, that's just some expensive shit compared to how it used to be when it was only 60,000 pesos to get some good, good fire pussy. All you dudes that like to come to Colombia and, oh, oh, my, oh my bad, I wasn't supposed to say that. I wasn't supposed to say that. Fuck it. All you dudes that come to Colombia and I know you. You will never meet a good woman until you change that shit. All you dudes that come to Colombia and your shit laced, you ain't smoking no regular weed. Who you think you talk? Y'all must really think I'm Tom Tucker, that dumb motherfucker. If you think that I think that everybody that come to Colombia getting off them plane and y'all smoking some regular ass weed and ain't shit laced in your weed. Who do you think you talking to? Do, don't forget, I'm Eastside Detroit. Don't forget, I'm Chicago. I'm Cleveland, EC, East Cleveland. I'm Atlanta. I'm the motherfucking Bay. Dude, I'm hood. Don't, don't get it ever fucked up. I know you dudes be coming down here, your shit be laced. Some of y'all do smoke regular weed. Now, I, don't, I ain't never smoked no weed. But for all you do that think, if you think I'm stupid mother, if you think I'm a dumb ass to think that you'd have come down here in Columbia and you'd have rolled up some shit and it's only regular ass weed in that shit and ain't nothing laced up in that shit, you got me fucked up. You out your rabbit ass mind. I know some of you motherfuckers strung, you come to Columbia because you ain't even strung out on pussy no more. I'll say that again. Some of you dudes, yeah, I come to Columbia and you ain't even strung out on pussy no more. It's other shit you strung out on that you can only find in Colombia. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying that there ain't no dope things from America in Colombia. Tell me that I'm lying. Ain't no dope things from Canada in Colombia. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me you know brand new dope things came down from Mexico that's straight from Europe. Tell me I'm lying that some motherfuckers that you know and I know a number of bunch of motherfucking dope things and they try to pretend like they still coming down here for bitches. It's dudes that come down here and pretend like they still coming down here for the ladies. They coming down here for the ladies because the ladies is the hookup. They the hookup. So you can get your shit laced. Motherfucking dope fiends, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck, y'all talk to the wrong dude, man. Don't, I'm not, in the words of Steve Harvey, the only thing I ever liked that Steve Harvey ever said was this don't let these motherfucking suits and ties fool you. The greatest quote that I ever heard him say, never let my suits and ties fool you. I'm straight street. 
I bullshit y'all not. So, and I see y'all come down here. I've seen brothers get strung the fuck out on the dope, not even the pussy. I can halfway understand the pussy. Y'all get strung out on the dope, and then you get scope of me. She to put something in the dope. Then you get robbed, cause she to put something in the dope. Then you waking up nine hours later, cause she didn't put something in the dope. And you thought you was smoking regular weed, didn't you? You thought, you thought because she let you smoke regular weed for two years, for three years, that she would never lace you, didn't you? Your dumb ass really thought that, didn't you? You you thought because I know her, she been giving me weed, selling me weed for three years. She didn't need you year one. Colombians set you up for the long game. If they need to rob you today, they got you. If they need to wait until November, why? Christmas time, they gonna get you the end. You been fucking and sucking her and she been sucking you for four months from now until November. And all of a sudden, bam, she robbed you. And you scratching your head like, well, why did she rob? I thought we were, I thought she was cool. No, she wasn't cool. She was just keeping you on the fishing line cause she didn't need you. At that time period, right now, she needed to scam and rob you in November, right before Christmas time come. Some of you dudes, I'm telling y'all, some of the pussy that you've been fucking for three, four years, that's been party girls and been pay for play for three, four years. And you thinking that she would never do. Let this November come with inflation and times tight in Colombia like they are in the States. Watch how many bitches Watch how many dudes get robbed and drugged in Colombia this November, going into Christmas. Because Colombia celebrates Christmas the whole month. They already do. Colombia official start of Christmas is September 1st. I'm going to say this again. And my man Ian B can attest to that. Colombia's official start of Christmas, where the Christmas music come on, and then the Christmas stores, you can buy the ornaments and all that shit. Right now, September is the start of Christmas. Not like in the States, like late October. Right now is Christmas season. Right now, a female that never robbed you, you never thought about her robbing you, you took her out to dinner, y'all fucked and sucked each other, y'all cool. She introduced you to the other bitches that you fuck, and you think that she will never do that. Let November hit. Let November hit. If you want to ever put up your fucking guards in Colombia, let November first hit. I suggest that every man put up your unless that's your boo boo, put up your motherfucking guards, because the female that you thought wouldn't rob you for four years, she will rob you this year if time is tight. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, all you Medellin fans. Go ahead. Test me. Tell, prove by January 1st. I want y'all dudes on January 1st, tell me, Andre, you was lying. She ain't robbed me. And then another dude gonna come along and say, okay, Dre, you was right. That bitch I've been fucking for four years robbed me. I never expect her to be the one. I thought my other sad chick was gonna be the one in Medellin. But my Cartagena chick that I've been fucking for four years, that bitch drugged me. That's how it is in Colombia. If you move in the wrong way. If you move in the wrong way. And ain't no other YouTuber gonna tell you that. They gonna make it seem like, go out, park. It's crazy. come on down. It's crazy. Go ahead. Bring your happy ass on down. And you gonna have more stories than I got. You know, I always got stories. Go ahead. Don't believe me like y'all don't believe Taylor made dreams. Go ahead. Taylor made dreams don't know shit. Even though he been living in Colombia forever, he moved to Thailand. He don't know shit about, about DR. Even though he been living in DR forever. Fuck what Taylor made dreams talking about. All right, cool. Fuck what he talking about. Fuck what Andre talking about. My woman love me. If, if it's your woman, that's one thing. But if it's just a party bitch in your phone and you met her on party bitch mode, if it's a pay for play in your phone and you met her on pay for play mode, if it's a scammer chick, meaning that she's just a sack chaser that only wanted money from you, and she is on that, you met her on that 
wanted money from you, going to the best restaurants in Medellin, Cartagena, Cali, Mode. Oh, nigga, you ain't nothing but a fish on the hook. You ain't shit but a fish on the hook. I get, uh, I'm going to end with this story. And I'm, I'm going to hit you guys' comments. There was a young man that was going out fishing. Couldn't catch shit. He in the pond, in the lake. And he like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Older dude with wisdom came along and said, young man, you ain't doing nothing wrong. It's just the wrong time to throw your hook out there. He looked at the young dude like, I mean, look at the old man like, oh, dude, what are you talking about? He said, every pond, every lake in the world that has a time when the, where the water rolls in and the time when the water rolls out. When you see the, the tide rolling in faster and faster as it gets darker, closer to darker, that's when you put your put your hook out there. He's like, what are you talking about, old dude? He said, put your hook out there now. He said, it's starting to get like 3, 4 o'clock in the, in the afternoon, 4.30. Put your hook out there now. Young dudes start pulling out fish by the tens. He said, oh, dude, how'd you know that fish move because the algae is stirred up in the water because of the tide and fish want to eat the algae? How'd you know that? Old dude told the young guy, experience. When I say this is this not shit that I heard, this is stuff that I know when it comes to fishing in Colombia with these ladies, y'all could tell me all day long, like the young dude, you don't the fuck you talking about. I'm telling y'all when the tag comes in and the tag comes, this whole channel is dedicated to me and Andrea letting our brothers know no matter what color race that you are, when the tide is rolling in and the tide rolls out and it starts to pick up and the algae gets stirred up, that brings the fish out to eat the algae. If you listen, you'll be successful. Like all the other brothers that have come to Cali, for the most part, have been successful. But for all you other dudes that been in Cartagena and can't nobody tell you shit about fishing in Colombia, you build one hove, build another hove. Go ahead. In the words of Jay Z to Damon Dash, you built one hove, you you build a Jay Z, build another hove. Damon Dash ain't built another hove since the first hove, have it? I'll say that again. Damon Dash has not built another Jay-Z. He bragged and talked that shit like he knew everything. Jay-Z was like, in the song Champions with, Chris, with, with Chrisette Michelle, just in case you wonder what song I'm talking about, the word Champions, the song Champions by Jay-Z. One of the verses is, you built one hove, since you did, you, you told the media, you told everybody that you know every motherfucking thing, you built me, build another hole. Since y'all know everything about Medellin and Colombia and South America, and Andre don't know what the fuck he talking, he a married dude, he don't network, he, don't, he ain't out here in these streets, he ain't in these paper place streets, he don't know shit. You built one hole. Build another hole. If I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, prove it. Build another hole. Or sit back and be on learner mode while you on monk mode. You, if you notice how Paolo was talking, Paolo was talking like, listen, I'm looking for something that's solidified serious. A, she looking for a foreign man. We know that, right? B, she's looking for a stable man that she can depend on, trust in, so forth and so forth. 
she looking for somebody that she can support and bring peace and he can support her and bring peace i would tell Let's be real. Most of the time, y'all meet a Paola and Andrea. Y'all think that they so nice when y'all first get with them. And I, I'm with you. I want to say you guys. Guys, when they first meet, and I want to just put Paola and Andrea out there. The other women that, that I know do, I know some sexy, gorgeous, that want a, a good man, women in Colombia. I personally know. All they ask is, if you want me, cool, I'm in. But what normally happens, a dude comes from Europe or a dude comes from, from uh, Central America or from North America, meaning Canada and the United States. They, they sit back and they meet a Andrea. They meet my female friends. They meet a Paola. And what happens is you be so sincere in your heart. I will be faithful. I want this. I'm good. Thank you, God. In a bad ass Venezuelan or bad ass Brazilian or bad ass Colombian will walk up to you in the grocery store and damn you, damn near hand you the pussy as a test. And you fail the test. Got you. No problem. You fuck this bitch, suck this bitch one time. Cool. But the mistake that y'all make behind the Paola's backs, behind Andrea's back, y'all fucking and sucking everybody in the goddamn grocery stores here in South America. And it gets back to them. So now they are embarrassed. So now they are hurt. So now they're disappointed because they said, let me give this American a boy, bruh. If I could tell y'all, if we in this live stream with any true story, there's so many brothers that come down here and will tell a gorgeous, good Colombian woman, I'm on your team and be sincere about it. I'm gonna say this again, be so sincere. Right hand on the Bible, left hand up, sincere in the motherfucker. As soon as you see a bad bitch walk by, all of a sudden that shit go down. You lose your motherfucking Boy Scout badge and shit. Let me take this goddamn heart off of here. Let me, this, this, this got to go. This heart right here, that's got to go. We got, let me see if I can put it right here. That heart right there, that's got to go. That golden heart, I need to take that shit off. You, you sit back to yourself like, what the fuck? I was really sincerely in love with Andrea, Paola, D, Afro Wahida, Maya, all these Kizzy. Kizzy been with her man, Kizzy from, from, from Cali, the beautiful Afro Colombian sister, been with her man from Trinidad, going on, I, I think, three years, traveling around the world. I remember when she first got with I said, oh, You got a new man. I see what you're doing, Kizzy. See what you I see you. Man, I got some little sisters I, I'm, I'm happy for. Three years. You know why? Because one of y'all motherfuckers fucked up chasing pussy. It's going to be a dude that, that get a, get Paola. She going to spoil the shit out of him. Because the other dudes fucked up. Me with Andrea? How you think I got Andrea? All I need to do is sit back, watch my watch, and wait for one of y'all to fuck up. And there's so many good Colombian women that don't fuck with American men, don't fuck with European men, don't fuck with Canadian dudes, don't fuck with dudes from North America or Central America, because all they got to do is watch. How long you been here? I've been living here for six months. Okay, all right. Six months, all right. I love you, girl. You love me. You you love me. Six months. All right. You sure you love me? Colombia women will ask you now if you're gonna cheat. Just let me know. Be honest. No, no, I ain't gonna cheat. I love you. You the one. We're gonna be together forever. When the twins activate like the super friends. No, no. Y'all like Voltron and shit. Y'all like the motherfucking Thundercats 
and the motherfucking uh, uh, Power Rangers. Y'all won, right? All that shit you talking, right? And she looking at her watch like, all right, you talking good shit? All right. All right. Countdown. You cheated with just three bitches that she know. It hit my ass, get off the plane. And I ain't built like you because I'm on a greater plane. I'm living life on a higher level than just bitches. So I can't be moved by bitches like you get moved by bitches. And other brothers that got women don't get moved by bitches because you got moved as a black man by bitches. And you lose out. And so now when Paola gets married, it's going to be a bunch of motherfuckers in her DM. Not y'all. Mm -mm. Motherfuckers from the past crying like little bitches. You know I loved you, girl. You you know you was the one for me. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be. Get the fuck out of here. And they go, and she going to be like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm happily married. I appreciate, I appreciate everything that you say. Thank you for talking about how beautiful I she reminds me of Andrea so much. I sat back and I watched her how she was built when we first got to, when we first did an interview with her prior to. And I said, dude, if you go on her Instagram, we already posted it. You look at Paola's Instagram, how she's built. Not the live stream don't do her no service. Go on her Instagram and see how she's built now and go way back like a year ago how her body was back then. It was nice, cute, Colombiana. Now she like sexy than a mother. You like, God damn, girl, what the, what the, what the, what the, what? You were serious about your fitness. Your girl in that room. She, she was, Paola's built just like Andrea. Not big, curvy. She was built Cali Curves. Now motherfuckers look at Andre photos. They're like, God damn. That's even Colombian dudes. They be like, dog, that's your wife. And you know how you gotta play it like, yeah, man. It's little sham sham. Little sham. You know, that's you know, small thing to a giant, little sham sham, you know. Yeah, that's my wife, dog. That's a little Colombian dudes be like, dog. But they did they weren't around pre-gym. Andrea. Andrea, as far as her personality, has always been Andrea. Some of you dudes, y'all gonna fuck up with some regular built or looking but beautiful Colombianas that you don't realize in about four years she gonna be the baddest motherfucker. Man, Andrea's walking through Cuba, motherfuckers drooling. DR, the reason why I was not impressed with DR, because I'm looking at my wife like, these DR bitches can't keep up with my wife. DR bitches asking about uh, spending more time worshiping Colombia, I mean, worshiping Andrea, asking her questions. What about this? What about that? Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Where'd you get that dress from? Oh my God, look at you. The women, the dudes, dudes knew better to walk up. Cause they look at Andrea with this big ass black dude, right? But I could see it in their eyes, like God damn. And then one dude told me, he said, "Man, in DR, they said we worship, we love Colombian women. Why? They saw that on Miss Universe. They saw that on this and that. So they saw Sofia Vergara. So they love Colombian women. So when the when one the few Colombian women come over there, they like the dudes." I was expecting it from the dudes, but the women, dog, y'all should have been there. Man, they worshiping Andrea ass. And I'm sitting back like, so I can't, I'm like this for real. I can't, I can't get none of that worship. I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm black man. Can I get some black man worship? No, I can't get no black man worship because all you motherfuckers have been to DR so much that they used to seeing my black ass and with the Haitian brothers and with the Dominican brothers that's got complexions. So they don't, they look at me like you just another brother. Shit. Andrea there, but the dude, but this, here's my point. Prior to those years, prior to 
when Andre and I first got together and started dating. Dudes that dudes went on dudes they realized to think about the future. If she check all your dude, I'm I'm saying this in all sincerity. If you have a Colombiana and you see potential in the physical and she check all your natural boxes off, motherfucker, don't you let that woman go. Because I am a byproduct of just get that gym membership. Y'all go to the gym and get mother dude. Now you got the woman with the personality that you want and the looks that you want. Same thing with Paola. Cute as she want to be, not even two years ago. Gorgeous as she wants to be today. So when you guys go to her Instagram, go all the way back and see like Dre Rice. She was cute, nice little body, cute. Now you're like, God damn. Is that my girl, Paola? I ain't mad at you, little sister. I ain't mad. I, I see your work. I see your work, little sis. I see your work. But brothers don't never listen. Shout out to my man, Quiet Storm in the building. Quiet Storm says, other than Andre, put your glasses on. Great stream, Dre. This donation is for, is from, uh, machismo dudes after this live stream i don't know if you guys get ready to come on uh quiet storm late at night when i'm editing there are some youtubers some black youtubers that that are on late at night i'm talking about one o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the morning and these dudes are giving some great information machismo tv is one of them guys I'm telling you, I'm not saying that he's on that late at night as far as to six o'clock in the morning, but I'm telling you, if you're looking for a late night, two o'clock in the morning, 3.15 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning live stream, and they're talking about the same subject matter that we talk about, his channel. Those brothers are doing some great, great, great things over there. Him and Salty Balls. I do it all both of them on the same channel those dudes are doing some amazing things if stefano was around make sure you drop the brothers channel because them dudes i'm telling y'all man these some these some black male youtubers that be on late at night when you ain't got shit to do if you on your third shift shout out to all you third shift dudes and when we cut off you like fuck, who am i gonna listen to that's who you listen to if i was third shift this is who i would be listening to on third shift Bullshit you not. I listen to these dudes all the time. I'm up here late at night editing videos or writing something or putting something together and I'm watching these brothers. Shout out to you for the $50 donation. At the end of the day, man, we gotta support each other. And if you're a third shift dude, you need third shift channels, there you go. I done hooked you up, bro. I done, all you third shifters, I already hooked you up. Don't be mad at me. If your ass sitting up there falling asleep on the job and all you had to do is go to Machismo te Television and listen to the same type of subject matters even more, even more than what we present here. Shout out to you, brother. Quiet Storm and Salty Balls. Them dudes be doing it, man, over there. Believe me. All right, let me hit some. You say, DR Women is my type. Not so sure. I can say this. Me and Andrea met some really, really good DR women. And we never went to Sasua. We kind of knew what Sasua was going to be about, so we never went. And we were in DR over a month. So just in case you think we were there for a weekend getaway, no. We were there for a month. We went the whole island, bro. We were every, We had our ass every, everywhere. Every, we meeting couples down there, interviewing couples. We every goddamn where you can imagine. Did y'all go to so and so? We went there. Every fucking where but DR. I mean, but but uh, Sasua. Everywhere but Sasua. And so he right. I'm telling you, there's some good women in DR. 
as long as you keep your eyes away from the sword and and and, and like pa uh, paola said don't let beauty dictate your decision have a beautiful woman physically but don't let her physical beauty make you forget about all the other boxes that she need to check too that's where a lot of dudes fuck up when it comes to dr in other countries shout out to contractor in the building also i just saw your uh your uh con your statement oh he's talking quiet storm my bad uh got him now yep <laughs> yeah me <laughs> yeah santiago yeah we love santiago oh uh, yeah we, we really we had a good time in santiago we really did we, we were all in small towns we were in uh, uh santa domingo we, we went to santa domingo twice the only thing about santa domingo that threw me and andrea off is that because of the south it is extra hot y'all think it's hot in sasua take your ass to santa domingo take your ass to chinatown oh i'm gonna say this again for all you guys that been to cologne that been to dr so many times and don't even notice a fucking Chinatown in DR. There's a Chinatown in DR. Yes, look it up. Me and Andrea went to Chinatown, literal Chinatown, where it's nothing but Chinese stores, Chinese restaurants, Chinese food, Chinese store. That's it. That's it in the whole area. There's a Chinatown in DR. But all you professional DR motherfuckers that's only been to Sasua for your twelfth time, you wouldn't know that. How is it that you got Andrea and Andrea that's been a DR in a month and some of you dudes have never rode the subway of Santa Domingo? We rode the subway. There's a subway in, in DR? Yes, ignorant motherfucker. There's a, sub, there's a subway, a literal subway that's clean, beautiful, like Medellin in DR. But your ass ain't never rode it because you don't know it exists. So when, we, me, me, when me and Andre sit back and listen to you DR dudes, other than Taylor Made Dreams and a few other dudes that's DR, they don't give a fuck what you talk about. You know shit about DR. Y'all do think y'all know DR because you've been to Sasua unteen times. It ain't been shit. You probably took one trip here. One, I've been, I've been to, to Playa. And you think that you'd been to one other city and you'd have been to DR. You don't know shit about DR. That's a damn shame. You got a couple a married couple that could tell you more about motherfucking dr than all you motherfucking lames that have been there for 10 15 times ain't never been to chinatown they got a fucking chat i'm talking about chinatown like new york chinatown like in in, in outside of la in, in in california chinatown like in chicago a real chinatown where there's nothing but asian shit and asian people there but you wouldn't know that that many Asians in DR because you don't go nowhere but fucking Sasua. You motherfuckers lame. That's why I be talking this shit, man. And when I be seeing y'all in person, I be talking that shit. That's why I be like, you been to Sasua? Yeah, I need a consultation, Dre. You don't need one for me. Keep your motherfucking money. I get some time of these dudes to try to try to convince y'all that they know all the DR because the only place they've been to is fucking Sasua 12, 15 times. You don't know DR? Motherfuckers didn't even know it was a fucking Ikea in DR. Simple shit. But they think they, they could tell you about me. You can't tell me shit about DR. Get the fuck out of here. Go through DR. They don't even know they got electric cars in DR. And electric cars are charging stations. The whole time we there, we got electric car Ubers. But you listen to these ignorant pussy chasing motherfuckers. They can't tell you shit about DR, but Sasua. They don't even know Sasua is only known for one thing by Colombians. I mean, by, 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 uh, by Dominicans. You ready? You ready for all you ignorant ass DR motherfuckers? DR is only known for one thing, walking to the grocery store. Not DR, I'm sorry, Sasua. Walk into the grocery stores. Dominicans only know Sasua for one thing. Pussies and bitches. No, you ignorant motherfucker. That's what you know, Sasua. Sasua is the cheese capital 
of DR. The, go into the grocery store. Pick up some, all you niggas that's in DR right now, go to the grocery store, pick up some cheese. Just like when we talk about Wisconsin and Green Bay and all that shit, the cheese capital, the cheese heads at the football game, that's Sasua. But you ignorant motherfuckers will never know that Sasua is one of the places that cheese is developed, a special type of cheese is developed and dispersed throughout DR. And it's famous for that, not for bitches. Y'all some fucking lame. I swear, man. Y'all fucking lames, dog. That be on that bullshit. You don't, you think you the only thing that make when I say when dudes are lames is not because you're on vacation and you party and you deal with the party girl. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you a fucking lame when you go on YouTube and you try to tell dudes that that Susua is only bitches or DR is only the whole island that's big as a fucking state is only bitches. And you ain't never been on the subway in Sasua, in in, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Seth Domingo. You never driven an electric car, and I'm talking about it's so many goddamn electric cars in DR. I'm like, God, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know. You never been to Chinatown. You never been to some of the beaches on the other side, the southern side of the of the island but you motherfuckers will go on youtube and you swear that you the mayor of dr and i'm telling you you motherfucking not we was there a month and i was not in, i'm looking for all the things that dudes was telling me about dr and we just discovering new shit 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 the first college in the caribbeans was established in DR, the first college me and Andre visited in DR. But y'all know shit. That's why y'all hear me talk the way that I do. Cause I'm tired of hearing motherfuckers only talk about bitches and it's more things that have to do with Cuba. More shit that gotta do with Trinidad. More shit that gotta do with Jamaica than that surface bullshit about bitches and pussy. Cool, got you. You on vacation. You suck some pussy in Jamaica. Hats off. At the end of the day, there's more to this goddamn thing called life than just what the fuck you talking about with bitches. That's what makes me passionate. And so a full circle, bringing it back to Colombia, when dudes be talking about all Colombian women like this. Are you crazy? Man, the bitches that most dudes deal with in Colombia only make up two to six percent of the Colombian women. You like pay for play, they fall in that two six to six percent. You like party women, as like like Paula said, yeah, the party women will do it with you. Yes, they'll give you that pussy the first night. Yes, they're in that two to six percent. Women that like to scam you to where you get robbed and drugged or now you're a Western Union poppy? Yes, they're in that 6% of Colombian. Now we're talking about the other 94% of Colombian women that wear scrubs or they work at the gas stations or they work in their own businesses or they're in the nursing field or they work nonprofit. Dude, I always tell y'all all the time, some of the sexiest school principals I ever saw in my fucking life are Colombian school principals. Oh my motherfucking goodness. These school principals so goddamn fine. This ain't what I heard. I've been to several schools. It's stuff like this that you do always want to assume that that little measly ass 6% of Colombian women that do deal with, you think you know every fucking thing. You don't know a goddamn thing about Colombian women. Because you'd have been in Medellin and Cartagena. Get the fuck out of here. I mean that from the bottom. Of my, I'm like, are you fucking serious? What, what'd you go to, dog? Medellin. Okay. Where else you been to? Cartagena. Okay. Santa San Andreas. Okay. I, I go right, guy. All right. I went to Cali one time. All right, cool. Well, you didn't even name at least ninety percent of the country. You just named three major cities. What about the rest of the fucking country? Some of y'all didn't even know what snow-capped mountains and. I'm like, what the? 
Y'all don't know all these guys. Me and Andrea in one trip saw 22 waterfalls. Got the chance to enjoy. Literally, dude, your boy from the east side of Detroit. Literally inside of a I'm not talking about in the cave part of a waterfall. I'm in a waterfall. Water coming down on your dog. East side Detroit. Your boy in a fucking waterfall. And I'm listening to you niggas that will, that will have me in Medellin and Cartagena, and that's it. Man, if I listen to half you motherfuckers, I wouldn't know shit about Colombia. I wouldn't know shit. Half of you, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You don't you've been to Medellin 15 times and you can't tell no, you can't get nobody no directions through Medellin. Some of y'all do been to Medellin 15 times. But if I ask you, how do you get to how do you get to the consulate down here? You can't get to the consulate. That dog, man, dude, I, I got some pain right here, bruh, my knee. You know, we went to play basketball. Bruh, you know where the nearest hospital is? You can't, you've been in Medellin 15 times. And your bitch ass can't even tell me where the nearest hospital is if I smash my knee. You've been in Medellin 15 times. And if I don't tell you, if I don't ask you where the grocery store in Laurelis or or in uh, El Plablado is, if I ask you where the best places, the best fruit market to get me some fruit from, in Medellin, you can't tell me shit. And you've been in Medellin 50. Get the fuck out of my face. What's your rabbit ass mind? That's the stuff that I'm talking about. That's why I be trying to tell y'all dudes, stop listening to everybody just because they've been to some place so many times. These dudes go to the same place all the time. Notice, there are a lot of brothers, before I wrap this up, there's a lot of brothers that been to all through South, South America and can't tell you shit about South America when the sun is up. I said it. There are brothers that's been to South America, can't tell you a goddamn thing about South America when the sun is up. When the sun goes down, they can tell you every spot to go to in Brazil, in Rio, in Sao Paulo, they can tell you every spot to go to in DR, in parts of Asia. When the sun go down, they are goddamn encyclopedias. Let the sun come up. They can't tell you shit about where to go, what to do, how to accomplish, how to relocate, how to buy a piece of property, how to rent a piece of property in any country. They can't tell you shit. They can't tell you if you there, if you if you can get an extension on your passport, they can't tell you shit. Anything they gotta do with the daytime they log, they can't tell you about no fucking museums. They can't tell you the history of that country. They can't tell you if it's a Chinatown or a subway in DR. They can't tell you shit. Let that sun come up. These motherfuckers that's been to Colombia unteam time, all the lost motherfuckers. You know how you like the show uh how to be a millionaire and you can phone a friend half the motherfuckers that come to colombia i can't phone they ass to learn some shit once the sun come up i was the fuck i would reach out to half these dudes when the sun come up they don't know shit about colombia at night they can tell you everything where you can find every bitch every drug every drink it is let that motherfucking sun come up these niggas lost his head get the fuck out my face i mean that from the bottom of my heart I see it all the time. Can't tell you shit. Calling me. Nigga, ain't you been here 15, 20 times? Yeah. Why the fuck you calling Andre Love Crossing Borders? Because y'all know for daytime shit. But you've been here more than I have. Right, bruh? So how the fuck you been here more than I have? Longer than I have? You've been here since 07. I started going here since 2017. You supposed to know more than I know, right? How the fuck you don't know more than I know? You been here since 07, because you only know nighttime shit since 07. You only know Pattaya for some nighttime shit. Some of you dudes, man, y'all the best. I see dudes in WhatsApp groups. They post only nighttime photos. You need to ask yourself, whenever you're in a WhatsApp group with dudes and they only post nighttime shit, Or are you that dude that only posts nighttime shit? And now it's just kicking in because somebody that put you on, 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 you know, 
kind of expose that to where you like, oh shit, Andre talking to me. I've only posted photos of nighttime shit. Well, I'm a vacationer. I should only post nighttime shit. A 15 time in Columbia vacationer? Nigga, you should know more than just nighttime shit. If you've been to Columbia more than 15 times, you've been here since 07, 03, and every photo you post in a WhatsApp group since we've been doing WhatsApp is nighttime shit? Nigga, get the fuck out of here. You up your rabbit ass mind. Y'all keep listening to them ignorant motherfuckers. They built one hove, build another hove. If they know every motherfucking thing, like Damon Dash, in the words of Jay-Z, if you know every motherfucking thing about building a Jay-Z from scratch, go ahead, build another Jay-Z. Go ahead. You build one hove, build another hove. You ain't about to do shit. And then as soon as y'all get locked up or you in the hospital, you calling me and Andre in the middle of the night to come check on your ass. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. You call it Ace Live. You call it Flyboy Way if he in town to come check on your ass with your 15, 20 times to Medellin ass. The fuck out of here. Y'all don't never, I promise you dudes, don't never get impressed when a dude brags about how many times he been to Medellin, how many times he been to Cartagena, a female, how many times, I don't, even me. Well, I've been here Columbia since, that don't mean shit. If Andre, you ain't done shit with it, you ain't been nowhere and you've been to Columbia for six years and you ain't been nowhere. That don't mean shit, Dre and all we know you've been stuck in Cali the whole time and you ain't never been to the coffee region and you ain't never been to Medellin and I mean going around Medellin, not just Parque Yaris, Andre. So so when you sit back to Dre and you talk about you've been to Columbia and been to Columbia for five years, nigga, and what do you bring to the table, Dre, other than just talk about how many years you've been to Columbia? If that's all I bring to the table, then check me on that shit. I'm not just talking about check another motherfucker. I'm talking about check me if I'm on that bullshit. And you know I ain't never been to nowhere else but Columbia, but, but Cali. If I ain't been nowhere else since I've been here. Dude, we've been to seven countries since I've been here the last four years. Seven. See, our job is not to put on 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 YouTube everything that me and Andre does. We're a very private couple. I tell stories, but there's a lot of stuff that y'all don't know about me and Andrea. When we come back from Europe, you know what I told Andre I want to do? I want to be one of the brothers that go to the snow-capped mountains. I see white boys do it all the time. They've got tours that go up there all the time. I'm from the Midwest. I'm used to snow. I want to go and do footage on the snow-capped mountains. Now, we've been to the top of the mountains, 14,000 feet above sea level. We've been to the top of the mountains. We've already shown that footage. We've been to three volcanoes here in Colombia. Me and Andre, we've been to three volcanoes, 22 waterfalls. I want to go to the top of the snow-capped mountains because I want them brothers just like, fuck just going to the club. There's more to Colombia than just going to the club. I want to show you guys where all the bowling alleys are. I want to show you guys where all the golf courses are. I need to... Really, Vic? Hey, Vic, let me know if you... Hey, Andre going to kill me. I'm about to end this live stream, right? I'm going to give you a call when we get done. You know Andre going to kill me, but I'm going to give you a call because I was supposed to call you earlier. He said, just, just, drop in, just, just dropping in uh, for the cause. Appreciate you uh, all that you do. Uh, spitting uh, unadulterated truth. No BS. But I'm going to give you a call. Give me give you five minutes. I'm, I ain't going to wait that long. We're about to end this live stream right now, gentlemen. Gentlemen, we're about to end it. We've been talking all night long. Shout out to you, Black Nubian. Shout out to all you brothers that have been supporting the channel. Thank you, guys. Most of all. Most of all for all you guys all of you that were such gentlemen tonight great questions you you caused our guests to think one of the one of the the uh the next uh uh 
interviews that I got set up is with a good good guy that lives in Medellin. He has a good girlfriend, white guy, really cool dude. I'm trying to set that up. We're trying to just schedule the date. Also, a Afro Colombian that lives in the states that you guys saw me on on uh, Uncle Phil's channel. I'm trying to get um, our girl uh, 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 Tootie on on our live stream. She already told me, she said, Andre, we could do it early next month. So I'm trying to get her on here. And then there's a sister that lives in Santa Marta from the States that helps brothers and others move here. So I'm trying to get it, get everything set up with her, get an interview with her. So I'm trying to get a lot more women on here for us. It's enough to hear my big ass mouth. Y'all done heard enough of my shit. Y'all love Andrea because that's y'all sister. But I want to get other women on here that can showcase other locations as well. So that's what I've been working on behind the scenes because I want to get a lot more women on here for you guys as well. Shout out to Kings of Dreams. Dre, you talk uh, you talk a lot, but we don't uh, tell you ish. <laughs> you still ain't telling uh, y'all y'all ish. My big brother is... Uh, is that dude shout out to kings of dreams make sure you guys subscribe to kings of dreams i love when kings of dreams do the recaps and he's one of my favorite favorite interview channels of especially when he interviewing the ladies oh man i'm tooling in kings of dreams always showing love to the ladies but i'm about to i'm about to head up out of here guys we have been here for four hours 37 minutes i'm about to holler at my boy victory and i'm about to get some rest so before andrea comes back in here it says what you doing because i got a i got an appointment in the morning i'm gonna spend a few minutes talking to my man victory shout out to you guys shout out to my man todd in the building nb santa martha uh, is a good spot to go to for your first time that's true that's a lot of dudes a lot of dudes a lot of dudes are so used to going to cartagena do realize the Piola complexion women and the chocolate Santa Martha. If you like that Piola Brazilian, that caramel with the red undertone, Santa Martha. Chocolate, but beautiful women. Santa Marta. Very few tourists, and the cost of living is crazy low because there's not a, too many tourists going there. Remember what I said. Right here, you got Cartagena. Same freeway, same freeway off the Atlantic Ocean. Cartagena, Bed and Kia, two hours away, away, two hour bus ride later, Santa Marta. But dudes don't never make it down here. So now you got all these gorgeous sisters right here. And they're building, dude. They're building some nice condos in that area. But why are you so busy in Cartagena? Because you're thinking with your immediate vacation mind. All See, you guys think about the women. I was the dude that was thinking like, where she come from? she gorgeous who her people is i'm from santa marta i might not get you but i'm about to take my ass right to santa marta where i can get a bunch of you that's how i always thought and like i said as soon as you come out the airport the atlantic ocean is literally like one two dude you can count to 50 and the atlantic ocean is at your tip of your toes it's the craziest dude. It's crazy how close the Atlantic Ocean is and the sun's coming down and the waves are washing. Soon as you get off, soon as you walk out the airport, you're like, oh, I'm about to have a good time. I'm about to have a good dude. We ate good, good people. You know who go there? I'm gonna tell y'all something. Our white brothers, white boys, oh dude, me and Andre had such a good time drinking and chopping it up in santa martha we went in 2020 before the pandemic when we went to the benikia festival but we flew into santa martha we had the greatest time 
and it was white boys that was there. Brothers wouldn't even think about it. Y'all asses too busy running to Cartagena and running to uh to uh, Medellin, and white boys all got their ass up there just fucking a dog shit out them fine women that look like Paola. Bullshit you not. Bullshit you not. So y'all keep on sleeping. Keep running your happy ass down there where ain't nothing but tourists from all over the place. Ain't nothing but brothers in in uh in uh, uh Cartagena. Keep running your happy ass down there. Santa Marta. I, I put I put it like this. And I mean just on the development side, the infrastructure side. You know the, the new part of Cartagena, the new city that looks like South Beach. That's going to be Car Car uh, Santa Marta in five years. I promise you that. Those type of buildings, those white buildings that look just like South Beach, Florida, that looks just like Cartagena, that new side, that's going to, in five years, I promise you, maybe seven at the most, that's that's uh, Santa Marta. So while the rest of you happy motherfuckers, you thirsty motherfuckers, shoot your ass to Cartagena, you build one hove, build another hove, keep on taking your happy ass to Cartagena. And you will never get a chance to really meet, because the one thing about, about, about Santa Marta is this, it's, it's still down to earth enough to where the women aren't, what I always say, tourist tarnished to where dudes haven't come down there and told them how beautiful they are. Like I say about Cali, Cali got gorgeous women and they don't have enough tourists come down here sucking their assholes to where they could still be down to earth. Medellin, they look at y'all like, I done heard 200 motherfucking Americans tell me I'm a bad bitch, so I already know I'm a bad bitch. Cartagena, same thing. Cartagena women like shit. American came down here and sucked my toes, so I know I'm a bad bitch. And gave me $300, so I know I'm a bad bitch. Cartagena like that. Just imagine the gorgeous women of Cartagena that are humble. That is Santa Marta. Kid y'all not, man. Bullshit you not. He said Santa Marta is one of them. Yes, it is. Absolutely correct. He said, if y'all want to want some Venezuelans, man, hey, 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 e -M -B. hey, that's that other big city they don't know nothing about. Don't do that, bro. We'll be in Bucamaranga in a couple. Don't do that, bro. Don't, don't, no, don't. You notice I don't even talk about this big city. This is probably, this is the, the richest big city in all of Colombia other than Bogota. It's not the most famous, it's not the largest, but when it comes to that money, yeah, yeah. They, they don't need to know what's down there. They, they don't need to know what's down there, bro. Don't be don't, this one right here. I don't want to see this city name no more. If I was single, bruh, bruh. If I was single, yeah, yeah. You never see YouTube black YouTubers even talk about this city. Never. Don't worry about that. The, we're gonna, we're gonna pretend like we ain't see what we saw. This is one of them situations you just you just pretend you hide. Yeah, you don't need them for them to see this, bro. Don't don't mention this city no more. I don't even talk about it. There's two cities that I protect when I don't talk about Cali and Bucamaranga. You don't know shit. You ain't heard me say shit. You don't need to know shit. Keep taking your you build one hole, build another hole. Yeah, yeah, he ain't, he ain't lying. He said, my military buddy married a woman from Santa Marta. Uh, she just got her visa. Shout out there. And it takes a while uh, to come here to the States uh, in two months. Shout out to her. I'm glad. Unfortunately, uh, she's running his money, though. For real, for real. If you got a, a woman that looks like Paola and you let her run your money, that's your fault. But at the end of the day, She's still with him. She ain't left him. Victory says, but I heard Santa Marta is a nice place. To, it really is, bro. It is really, it's hot, but dude, it is just like, just like Cartagena, but it's nice. The Matrix is an agent, agent smithing the work. That's true. That's a good point, Todd. That's a real good point. Anthony says, shout to Ant. 
I'm just, I'm just acknowledging you tonight for the first time. Shout out to you, brother. He say, this is one of the problems with uh, Colombians currently that you don't know where all of the Colombian women are. Uh, are they being uh, buried by the Venezuelan women? That's just, man, that's a good point, brother. So many good Venezuelan women coming down here that do that is burying a lot of the good Colombian women. This is true, my friend. I mean, you do got some scurvy Colombian women. I mean, and Venezuelan women, but there's some good Venezuelan women coming over too. I, I can't lie. I can't lie. So, shout out to my man EMB again. And they said there's more that I'm not saying. I know it is, brother. I already know it is. He said, I'll stop giving up. Yeah, bruh. If you ever heard me, have you ever heard me say Book Moranga? Never. I barely pronounce it correctly. Brothers ain't ready for this. Every city, every major city, I don't talk about because I know dudes ain't even ready for that on that level. Dude, that that is a if if you and not talked about this city. The money that goes through that, the the level of women. This is one of the major. We're not talking about a town. We're talking about in the top five to six major cities in Colombia. This is a city, city, city. But we don't talk about it because y'all y'all ain't ready for that one. Y'all not ready for that one. That's what money is. He say for sure. He say I just uh go for uh the sending order by size yep i'm with you i got you brother the side you talking about size of the city i'm with you on that one brother man i you say you say you say uh andre runs andre's money and yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah see you guys don't realize it i'll bring him the bacon andre fries it up in the pan she has a savings and investments account we literally have prepared ourselves if it works if it doesn't work we don't sit back and be like well if it doesn't work i'm gonna hide this and that we no 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 we sit down and we converse what if the universe says andre you pass on now what is andre supposed to do andre is supposed to already be set up not just insurance and our other properties and other investments, but Andre is supposed to be set up. What if it doesn't work out like it doesn't work out with you and Andrea? I'm supposed to be set up for a dude that just got divorced. See, these little things that you guys don't know about us. We are a business couple, as well as a couple that's in love, as well as a couple that that's companionship, as well as lovers, as well as friends. All that stuff is cool. We have no problem. See, some of you dudes, y'all get with Colombian women or women from other foreign countries, and you don't know how to have these true conversations. If it doesn't work out, let's get things set up for. If it doesn't work out, let's get. I, I don't walk away. I purposely got married in a country with fault divorce. You live in a country with no fault divorce. You can wake up in the morning like Jeezy and tell a female no, like we talked about earlier. I'm out. You can tell your woman, I'm out. Oh, Jeezy gonna pay out the pay. Jeezy gonna pay out the ass and child support, even though they had a prenup. Now they got a baby. Oh, she ain't never got to do shit. He gonna be on tour so many so long. You better believe he gonna pay out the ass in child support bet that watch what happened well, let's follow this we we can get our popcorn ready for this show i'm leaving you and the baby she, she just had that baby she the baby ain't only uh, only a year old oh this thing but judge jury television youtube tick everybody gonna see that baby and ain't gonna be none but people telling jeezy Bruh, you about to go broke paying child support. Be ready 
to pay the motherfucking piper. So just because he signed the prenup and she only get this certain amount, cool. But she about to run his ass dry in child support. And the judge gonna be on her side. You can't do that in Colombia. There is no, you just up, wake up in the morning and leave. That's what our point is. I can't just wake up in the morning and leave Andrea. Dude, I mentioned this a couple of times over the last couple of weeks. Andrea just blew my mind when she, when she told me this. Did you know if you up and leave your wife or if your wife up and leaves you, you can sue them for everything that they got and a lot of what they will get in the future. You can sue them. You literally. And I'm not talking about you need to hire this team of attorneys, this OJ team. You ain't got to do that shit. Dude, there's literally a form that you can print off. You fill it out. And you go downtown and you submit it. My wife left me type of form. You take that form and you go downtown. You file it. And all of a sudden, the courts start putting in motion that you can sue the dog shit of the Colombian woman that left you for no reason. She didn't hit that. You didn't do shit on that list. You didn't beat her. You wasn't addicted to drugs. No other woman. You didn't cheat. No other woman. You took care of the kids. You took care of her. All that shit. She decided just up and leave. Bruh, it's a simple one-page form. And you could take that mother right downtown and sue the dog shit out of a Colombian woman. Unless you're a Colombian woman that has no plans on ever doing shit with her life. And if you were a Colombian woman that don't plan on doing shit with her life, what's wrong with you? But a Colombian woman that plan dude, you can sue her. You can sue her like on Mary J. Blige type level. Like her ex-husband sue her. Everything, everything, everything. Every dream. You can sue dreams out their fucking mind. Columbia does not play that wake up in the morning and you leave a motherfucker because you feel like you tired. That shit that Jeezy doing would never pop off here. That's some American, but that's why y'all hear me say certain shit is American bullshit. That's a stateside shit. Because I'm telling y'all, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. That shit would never pop off off here. Man, dude, you know how much fucking money he would lose if he tried to divorce a Colombiana for no reason. Well, she says it. All right. Let's look like let's look down the list. Okay. Is she addicted to drugs? Alcohol? Okay. Did she hit you? No, no. You sure? Okay. Mama moving the house and they made an uncomfortable environment. Mama ain't moving. You sure? just want to make sure okay all right did she quit her job and decide that she won't do nothing in life oh so she she's still working she wants to do so okay she want to do something with her life we're just trying to make sure sir all right jeezy we just want to okay we, we we counted all the shit that that she was supposed to do and at the end of the day you get zero and she get minus the two to the square power okay divided by 12 hold up sir all right to the nth degree include your middle name tom tucker that mo dumb motherfucker okay dumb motherfucker tax that you get okay okay jeezy all right according to colombian law you gonna lose damn near all your shit all your shit it's easy to do what the fuck Jeezy doing in the States. That shit is easy. It's easy for women to do that shit to basketball players in the States. That's easy to do that. Come to Colombia and marry Colombiana and try to pull that bullshit off. Watch how much shit you lose because you all of a sudden woke up. She ain't done shit wrong to you. She done sucked your dick just right, gave you three kids. She's still sexy than the motherfucker. She never cussed you out, never made you feel less than a man. But because you saw a new bitch walk by, you want to get some more pussy. Go on and try to pull that shit, Columbia. 
man, you'll lose every dude. It's one page. It ain't even a bunch of it ain't even a goddamn a bunch of attorneys that gotta be involved. One page and you lose your shit. All your motherfucking American pit. Go on, run back to the states. Go on, run. You've been married long enough to where she know your American Social Security number, your full name, your last name, your mama name, all that shit. Go on, run. Go run back to the states now. You hear? Go on, run back to the states. You hear? All of a sudden, you getting shit in the mail. All of a sudden, your checks being garnished. All of a sudden, you're you ex-military brothers. Shout out to you. All of a sudden, your military checks being garnished from Colombia because of one fucking page. Colombians don't do that bullshit that we do in the states. You get tired. You wake up one morning and we after two years of marriage and a brand new baby, and because you sad and mad because of the brand new baby. Jeezy, I don't give a fuck how crazy your woman talked to you. She just had a baby, nigga. It's only been two years. What the fuck you doing? Well, I'm stressed out. She's driving me crazy. Motherfucker. And it's a bad bitch that want to fuck me. So because bad bitches with green eyes want to fuck me, I'm going to divorce my wife. Nigga. That goes to show you a motherfucker ain't never had a baby dad. Ain't never had a daddy. Nigga. You Jeezy, it's bitches with green eyes that will fuck the dog shit out of you. Why you married? He could have sat his happy ass down, ain't paying no child support, ain't dealing with no bullshit, ain't got no bad media press that's going to fuck with his album sales and, and goddamn females coming to his concert. He could have sat his ass down and deal with, dealt with that shit and still had a sad bitch. And all Jenny would have said, as long as your ass take care of business with me and our child, we good. What does his ass do? What an average ass American do? I think we need a divorce. You in America, we can have a dream the night before and wake up and want a divorce from our woman. And our woman could do that and take half our shit too. Don't come to Colombia trying to pull that shit off. Your ass gonna be broke. You can't tell no female in Colombia that oh, unreconcilable differences. Ask a Colombian woman, does that unreconcilable difference law even exist in this motherfucker? Because I'm gonna tell you as a married man, that shit don't even exist in Colombia. We're married because we just couldn't get along. We, we divorced because we just couldn't get along. America be like, I got you. I, I understand, dog. Y'all couldn't get along. Even though in the back of our mind, we be like, nigga, you just want some more pussy. Try to pull that shit in, in another country. There's a lot of countries that's not just like Colombia. I mean, that's not like America. There's a lot of countries that's more like Colombia than America, dude. You can't pull that bullshit off. So that's why... That's why Paola and Andrea and other women try to tell y'all, if you're going to fuck with Colombian women, fuck with, and you're going to be for real, not you vacationing motherfuckers, I got you. But if you're going to live here, you're going to fuck with Colombian women, do, and they only fuck with you at thinking about the end game of relationship or a marriage, go and fuck it up and see how broke your, your ass end up. Go and see how broke your bitch ass end up. And you're going to be mad. Ain't nobody tell me. Well, you didn't come to love crossing borders. Because I just told you. Your ass going to end up broke trying to do that unreconcilable differences bullshit in the, here in Colombia. She going to take her ass right down there, fill out that one-page form, and get your ass for it. She ain't going to even have an attorney. That's what's going to fuck you up. She got half your shit and more and more while you ran back to the United States without even having one motherfucking attorney. I'm trying to get y'all game, bro. I'm trying to get y'all a true game. You ain't heard that shit nowhere else 
on YouTube. Ain't no white YouTubers came to Colombia and told you that. Ain't none of these black YouTubers. Ain't none of these Asian YouTubers. Ain't none of these Latin YouTubers have ever told you that your ass can be sued if you leave a woman if and she didn't do shit on that list. Or if a woman try to leave you and you ain't done shit on that list. This is a fault country, not no fault. United States is no fault where you can yawn and wake up and leave a motherfucker. Colombia, get the fuck out of here. International player on some of uh, James Bond type shit. <laughs> right. Right. I don't see what Jesus was thinking. All he had to do was sit back and just talk to Jenny. Let's have an open relationship. He could have sat his ass down, had two or three kids with Jenny. I don't give a fuck how big her mouth is. You could have sat back and said, Jenny, listen, let's talk. Hey, your mama can't stay here. I know your mama ain't got no man and ain't got nobody to support her. That ain't my fault. But your mama can't stay here. Not saying the mom was staying in the house, but my point is, Jenny, I can't do that. B, all this yelling that you're doing, girl, if you open up your mouth that big, we need to talk. We don't need to be going through all this. But divorce after two years? Let me put it like this. Unless she was sucking another motherfucker dick or she was on some drugs. And I doubt that with her being a new mom. It, and I could see it was like an attitude thing. I ain't in their business. But as a man that's been divorced, I can easily tell you, and there's other divorced dudes, that karma of leaving your woman with a newborn, that shit gonna come back on Jeezy. It might not come back monetarily, that shit gonna come back and hit him in the ass. I've seen dudes leave a woman and the woman didn't get destroyed. It was, dude, I see so many dudes. I know motherfucking dudes to this day. I got partner partners. I mean, partner partners that was cheating on their wives and left their wives living in their car right now. Trying to get back on their feet after the pandemic because they left their wife when money was good. And them niggas living in their car right motherfucking now. Dude, it ain't something that I heard. I'm talking about, I talk to these niggas on the phone back in the States all the time. Bro, you all right? Bro, you good? Bro, you on your feet? I'm going to keep you in prayer, bro. This ain't no bullshit that I'm just get throwing out there. Universe does not fuck around, dude. Universe is a clock. It is what it, a clock. One of the things I love about a clock, a clock is it is what it is. If it's slower, it is what it is. If it's faster, it is what it is. But most of the time, if it's on time, it is what it is. You can fuss down a clock all day long about being at 355. Motherfucker, it's 355. No matter what watch or clock you go to. And you got dudes that don't realize that the way that the laws of the universe work, that karma will come back on your ass. And I know I got partners. Do I have one partner, man? This dude, man, he doing great. And I mean great right now. But he was cheating his ass. I'm talking about one of the pretty boy, green ass motherfuckers. Light skin. You can tell them shit type dudes. Got a good job type motherfuckers. He was cheating his ass off on his wife, slinging dick from state to state. I'm the man. They have been together since high school. No bullshit. You're not true story. Boy, I let y'all guys go. Boy, his wife with her sexy chocolate ass. And I'm not saying it like I was attracted to his wife because she's she like one of my sisters. But I'm saying that he was attractive and she was an attractive. They were an attractive couple. But when she left him, bruh, my boy told me, he said, you seen so-and-so? I'm like, no. I think I told you guys this story, too. He said, you see so-and-so? I was like, no. And as soon as he, soon as he said that, 
so and so just so happened to pull up in the drive. We sit on the porch. We in Indiana, sit on the porch. Bro, this brother walked, dude. They, she hadn't left him two weeks. It had to be 35 pounds, 40 pounds. This dude was so crackhead thin. He wasn't eating. He wasn't, dude, this dude, like I said, great career, great job. Mr. Pretty Boy with the green, dude, this dude lost so much, lost everything. They had two houses, like three or four a Mercedes, a BMW, all, all that shit. It wasn't even about the cars and all that shit. It was about the fact that it was impacting him so much. He lost who he was, man. It took this dude years to get back on his feet. He back on his feet, happily married. His businesses are doing great, great. But I'll never forget, once he, once his woman left him, the first one, bruh, and some of you dudes know what the fuck I'm talking about when you done had a divorce or a separation from a relationship that you've been with for a minute, and all of a sudden, your ass lose about a good 20, 25 pounds. Not because you ain't eating, but because you stressing the fuck out on shit that you... The, bro, I'm telling y'all, man. Why y'all think I sit the fuck down? Fuck being an international player on some James Bond shit. Straight up. Shout out to my man. This is the last one I'm going to read for the night, guy. I know you guys have brought some other ones. He said, but as I said, something is up with the United uh US Asian uh brought. I feel like I'm dipping the conversation because I haven't been there that long. So but when it comes to Jenny, I don't know. I know one thing. Let's be come, come on, Aunt, let's be real. If I fucked with you as an Asian chick long enough to know. I want to ask you to marry me let, let's let because i always go through the whole thing that's how my mind works i go through the whole scenario you met check y'all fucked check you you took it six months eight months two years before you fell in love with her and you said i want to marry her check got you i'm, I'm with you on that and then then two years after then, then let's say the average wedding takes about a good three to six months to put together so now you got a few more months in regards to that to where y'all could just back out right this ain't no vegas wedding and then y'all had a baby y'all y'all together y'all traveling y'all have y'all fun jesus got his reality shows everything working out great right the moment she the, her reality show closes the view is gone she got a brand new baby she thinking her man is on her team she already stressed out because her reality show is, was over with she stressed out because of the baby she stressed out because she focused on the baby but maybe not focusing on her man dude i'm gonna tell y'all something for real and i mean this from the bottom of my heart you will not see me leave Andrea in the first two years just because we ain't fucking like we used to in the first six years. Because she's taking care of this baby. I'll be right here. It ain't that pussy ain't that serious for me. I love pussy like you do. But I'm about to sit up here and leave my wife because she so focused on a baby that I got knees to me. And she's sleepy. I'm going to work this out. We're going to do something. We're going to work some magic here. It may be times where I got the baby and I got to be the one to fall asleep. But at the end of the day, we're going to work some magic to where I can give me some pussy. I'm not, I'm not about to bitch about some pussy. If for two years, three years, five years, I might get some pussy periodically compared to how you to get it. Nigga, I ain't about to leave my fucking wife when I know I can fuck the dog shit out of her after the two years, after the three years, after the five years. I'm good. I'm good. We've been fucking five, six years nonstop. And then all of a sudden a baby comes and I want to be a little bitch about it. 
and leave my woman for these other side, these regular ass, raggedy ass American chicks. It ain't, it ain't like Jeezy about to get his ass on a plane. Come on, let's be real. It's not like about Jeezy as if Jeezy about to take his ass on a plane and go to Germany and get him some Germany pussy. It ain't like he about to get his ass on a plane and take his ass to Asia where we go to get some Asian pussy, is it? He ain't about to get some African pussy, none of that shit. He gonna be, for the most part, most of these dudes that got money, where they gonna get their pussy at? in raggedy ass united states with them raggedy ass bitches so you leave your wife and your child for raggedy pussy bitches in the united states that these bitches be on youtube talk about how proud they choke on your on dicks <laughs> and you left your wife and your child the child for them bitches that you could have fucked on the side man get the fuck out of here man Jesus gonna have to sit me down and give me a fucking hell of a convincing story of why you left your woman unless she her little skinny ass whooping up on your black ass unless she got another dick on the side while she just had your baby but you ain't gonna tell me because she got a new attitude I gotta leave her I wish the fuck I would leave Andre because she just got an attitude of life. What? I gave the feds 10 years to, to straighten up. I can't give my wife a year to straighten up. Two years to straighten up. Nigga, you know the book why Andre on some bullshit. None of the books I could be released. I'm like Michael B. Jordan. A woman put me through trouble. This motherfucker wrote, directed, and released a whole movie after his woman broke his heart. Creed 3. That's me. I'll be a Creed 3 right motherfucker. I ain't about to bitch about no pussy. And Andre wrote Creed 4. The saga continues. So when it comes to Jeezy, it ain't like I'm mad at him because ain't none of my business. But I'm, I'm letting you know. And it could have been the grandmama fucking up. Because you know, she, she tiger mom on that shit. But I kid you not, man. At the end of the day, uh, I don't know why we went on Jeezy. In two years, two years is this. That's just too short. Cause your your short your, your your baby is not even nine months old, nigga. What? What the fuck could happen? Unless you do, all you can tell me is somebody was fucking your woman in her ass right after your woman had the baby. That's or, or right before. Do I don't I don't know what what you could tell me. But when it comes to us Americans, we don't need no excuse. We be a lot of marriages for no reason at all. I, th I really believe in my heart. And this is my last line before tonight. For all you guys that, are, that gave statements tonight and comments, I appreciate you. We're, we are at... Is that five? We have five hours and 13 minutes. Well, Andre going to be mad. <laughs> but... For all you guys, America, you could get away with certain shit. I got you. That's one of the benefits of being back home. But I promise you, if you really want to be with a Colombian woman, don't think you can pull that shit down here. This is a fault, your fault or her fault country and don't you ever forget that shit ever ever forget that shit and remember in Colombia if you live with a woman for two years that's common law marriage that's why you guys see it back and see well 84% of Colombian women are baby mamas I mean, I'm sorry 84% uh -uh. of baby mamas are single because common law marriages are not put on the books like marriage marriages. 
So the guys that have been with their Colombian girlfriend for 12, 15, 20 years, and they never technically got married. Ask these women, is that their husband? And they will tell you, even if they ain't got no ring, that's my husband. Well, Shauna, but I'm up out of here, man. It's Friday night drinking hand. You guys got some things you need to do in the morning. I got things that I need to do in the morning. And I got to call my boy Victory real quick. So I'm up out of here. Talk to you guys later. We've had a great evening. This was fun. Five hours. Talk to you guys later. Once again, this is Andre and Andreas. Love crossing borders. See you guys on Sunday. I appreciate all that you do. Nothing but much love. Shout out to all you guys that came in tonight. This was fun.